The Higgins family, the Williams family are here in force and stretching before us are a possible four sessions over the traditional 35 frames distance. Whatever happens, we are guaranteed to crown the most mature champion for 40 years and ready to roll back the years in the commentary box this afternoon. Al McManus, Dennis Taylor, what an occasion, fellas. It certainly is, Hazel. A very good afternoon, everyone. And what a reception these two great champions have had here. Traditional photographs taken. I'm not sure who has won the toss. We'll find out shortly. It's Mark Williams, and he's going to get this. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The first frame. Mark Williams to break. He's going to get this in three. Stop calling out now, please. Thank final you. Final underway. Brendan Moore just asking him not to shout out when the players at the table. And of course, the local boy, referee Brendan Moore, doing his second world final. He's been one of our top referees for quite a few years now. Proud day for him. There's the tournament pot success rate. John just ahead at 92%. And slightly ahead in the long pot Make department sure as well. Switched off, please. And look at the highest break, 140. And the highest of the tournament, a 146 from John Higgins. We could have a few tactical battles in this final as well, Alan. Yes, we could do that. The, the, these both these fellas are well practitioners of the sweet science of snooker. Both of them. This is bound to be a classic encounter. There's no doubt about it. And there's John Higgins family, his wife Denise there, Pierce, Oliver and Claudia, and seen them up in the Champions Lounge earlier, and they are so proud of their husband and dad. on the other balcony, that's the Williams. That's Joe there, and that's Ken, Steve Feeney on the left, and Lee Walker, uh, still playing on the tour, has been with Mark for a good few years now. And that's not a bad <laughs> start from the Welsh potting what? machine. Yeah, beautiful shot. First pot of the final. First half chance to Big Willow. Eight. Nine. <coughs> well, he looks pretty fresh here. He must be exhausted after that semi-final. I, mean, I come out of the commentary box, Alan, and I was... Legs were weak and I enjoyed every single ball potted in that semi final. <coughs> Lasted just over 11 hours and just couldn't pick 16. a winner right to the very end. Yeah, and, and this is <coughs> this is actually the um, the highest combined age of both finalists in the history of this great championship. 70. A combined age of 85, beating the record of 1978 when Ray Reardon beat Perry Manns in the Crucible. 
the combined age of 83, back then 40 years ago. Well, this is a terrific start from Mark. Just what you want in the opening frame in amongst the reds. 23. With the black available. Oh, 20. he hasn't quite pushed through there. And this is tough. Just needed a little bit more top spin. cut on the black and he's left himself a chance of a long red into the same pocket about on the blue well he'd be tempted to try and bring other reds into play actually just thinking that the long history these two have got playing one another they were actually in a practice room 15 20 minutes ago i was in there with them they were reminiscing about <laughs> the good old days well these are the good <laughs> these are the halcyon days i suppose but it was fun times in the practice room That's a little bit unlucky. I don't think this red cuts back. 37. Try to hit that red full ball. Just try and get down the table if you can't cut this in. It's a very thin one. <laughs> Mark Williams, 37. He's got away with it. just sort of apologised by putting the cue on the table as John came through to see what was left for him. Absolutely nothing. earlier in the tournament about these two great players John Higgins got to be world number one and world champion in six seasons and his opponent Mark Williams got to be world champion and world number one in seven seasons that's quite remarkable yeah and whoever wins and picks up the world championship trophy tomorrow evening will actually set a new record if John Higgins was to win it it would be the longest span between lifting this title. It would be 20 years, which would actually eclipse the great Joe Davis, who held this title from first to last was 19 years. Mark Williams, <laughs> if he was to win, it would be 18 years, and that would be the longest span of a crucible champion from first to last. John have himself out of that little situation a chance to perhaps put Mark under some pressure for the first time this afternoon and Mark will come around and have a look at a red there he's going to play safe off it might cut into the right corner pocket there's a gap between two reds, and that's what he's looking at. And he's fixing his belt. If you remember, he had to borrow a belt last night. His own had snapped. There's the gap I mentioned. Well, 
He's left a red near the corner pocket, but it's not straightforward. And the white, not absolutely sure if he can miss the reds. It's all about the pot, this. found the gap there. Excellent shot. I'm going to be so interested in these early stages to see how John Higgins settles in because he said that he found something in the practice room a couple of days ago. He shortened his delivery. Six. Just a simple thing. And I can tell you that I, I know that when John finds something in the practice room, he takes it with him, he carries it with him for an extended periods of time. He, and he plays well for long periods of time, that's the thing. Actually, I remember two or three years ago, he was out in China doing a little coaching clinic and he was teaching some school kids and there was a, a stance thing that he, would, he was showing one of the kids and he thought, maybe I should try that. And he did and he started, his game picked up Started winning titles again. Fourteen. When he feels comfortable, look out. Fifteen. Cannon there. He wanted to just glance off the three reds, bring them into play because he was guaranteed to be on a red to the right corner, but misjudged the cannon. Twenty feet. An intentional cannon on the red has put him out of position. He just potted it thick, didn't he? Far jaw. The white cue ball went wider. Well, he's looking at the uh, potting angle. This is a thin one. John Higgins, 23. <laughs> yeah, that was very difficult indeed from that angle. One. The only thing with taking the black on, if he missed it with Mark before he came to the table, was 14 in front. Mark doesn't, doesn't need that red that's on the right side cushion if and when he got that far. It was a poor f opening shot. You can almost Six. pick a spot in top side of the blue. Recovery required. Yeah, very good. Played it full blooded. And he's going to be rewarded for it. Fourteen. Fifteen. 
got a nice angle on the brown if he wants to try and develop that red there. Just between blue and brown near the cushion. And he's trying to drop on it. And his touch is amazing. <laughs> he keeps saying about how he just floats the ball into the pocket. And that one was nice. judged to perfection. We're in the first frame, and this is the third time I've asked. Can you please make sure that all phones are switched off? <laughs> Thank you. Alan mentioned that Mark won't need that difficult red that's on the right side cushion. But this is not a gimme. 25. This one. Just needs this red. He didn't Mark try Williams. and get onto the black, 25. he just tried to make sure of the pot. Not the best from John there. Could be a Mark Williams special to clinch this opening frame. Oh. And a nice kiss on the blonde also. That last shot that Mark knocked in, these two players, John is unbelievable at that type of shot as well. Five. <coughs> Mark Williams, five. John coming to the table, but... Mark's looking good in this opening frame. 44, the difference with 35 on. no sign of tiredness there from Mark Williams. Doesn't matter where the white finishes. John will stay in the seat this Eight. time. Eight. He's and already signaled frame. to the referee. Mark Williams. So the white potting machine, Mark Williams, gets off to a good start and he takes the opening frame in this final. So the man who had a very, very long night last night is off to a flyer at, tell you what, long nights. There were quite a few hundred who had a long night last night outside the Crucible Theatre because check out the queues this morning. Uh, and this was for the first tranche of tickets for next year's World Championship. They went on sale this morning. In fact, they've been lining up for over 24 hours. Many camped out overnight to make sure they got the seats they wanted. Uh, the remaining two thirds of the tickets on sale online and in person from 9 a.m. tomorrow. And that was right round the Crucible Theatre and all the way around the Lyceum as well. It just shows you the popularity.
entirety of this championship. Yeah, amazing. It's, um, as I say, we, we shouldn't take for granted what it means to people to come to this great venue, watch the World Championship. Incredible scenes there. I think extraordinarily there are one or two empty seats in here this afternoon. Perhaps they're still out in the queue. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's necessarily the case, but more than one or two. And it's like that's one of the reasons to try and stop touts from being involved in the game. But you know, once again, go back to the point: if if there are empty seats and they're not taken up by a certain time of a session, I think there should be some way, shape, or form of allowing the genuine fans to come along and watch. Well, whoever is not in here is missing a trick. Into frame two we go. Thank you to second frame. John Higgins to break. The ideal start for Mark Williams then. He'll also be encouraged just the way the tail end of that frame, the two long reds that he knocked in. Also, the first red of this final. That was a cracking pot. It looks like he's got his eye in early. The great names roll off the tongue, the great champions of the Crucible, Reardon, Davis, Henry, Higgins, O'Sullivan, Selby. If Mark Williams is to join that illustrious group, then you feel the ultimate king of cool, Mark Williams, must overcome perhaps the ultimate uber player in this, the ultimate contest. As I say, a very good start by Mark. Yeah, that's what everybody, when they turn professional, their ambition is to lift that trophy with that lovely lady on top of the lid. Well. Another great long pot, and it yields a snooker. Mark Williams won. Yeah, it's a beautiful trophy as well. It's, it, there's something about finals, isn't it? When the trophy's on the end of the table and both players are in, and just in your eye all the time. Gorgeous piece of silverware. That could tell a few stories then. <laughs> well, I remember losing to Terry Griffiths in the final in 79. And we went out with the sponsors and Terry hadn't got a car. And I'd got that lovely trophy in the boot of my car, even though I'd lost in the final. But I did eventually managed to get it. Yeah, it's come a long way since uh, 91 years ago when Joe Davis won it for the first time in a place called Camkins Hall in Birmingham, which no longer exists, actually. Well, that's the black. Foul, gonna miss Mark Williams, seven. Free ball. Put it back. <coughs> yeah, he's got to get quite close to the blue and the red on the way around the table. It's I think the shot he's Five trying. Points. I don't think the angle's Five there. Yep. Yeah, John didn't move because he knew Mark was going to have it put back. Closer to the black again. Well, he got close to the red, so you see, it's checking up, but this time he's left a red Five for Mark minutes. Williams. 
That was a tough snooker to escape from. Five. Needed to come back just a little bit further. He's just running away from the reds here. That was about the best he could do from that position. Eleven. This looks to be the only red that's available. The others are all covering each other. Mark Williams. Well, he left. He's got away with it. That red that he missed has run safe. Yeah, so far in this final, John has not been able to find a decisive safety shot as yet. He's not really had Mark under pressure, as I said before. He's still still striving to find one. This could be it, though. Good line. And he's got it this time. Good shot. get into the bunch of reds because the two that are either side of the black there if he tried to land on one of those he'd leave the other he's quite close to the brown there but he can still get off the side cushion but he'll have to be very precise with this And he'll settle for that. Touching ball. In fact, it's a touching ball, but I don't know if John can get back down behind the yellow and brown. Can I be touching that one? He might be well, touching, touching the pink, pink also. Touching but the red. It's one of those, if the red moves, it's a foul shot. Gonna to have to catch the pink as well with side. Well, pink didn't move in the end, but he got the white where he wanted. Again, a good cue ball from Mark and John. Can't get any purchase on this cue ball. Fancy him taking that red on. Can't avoid the cannon. I was also thinking these fellas been around for so long. I think both players actually throughout this final, there'll be times out there they'll be smelling the flowers, taking it all in. You know, when you're younger, you, you're only thinking about winning. It's as I said last evening. Eat, sleep, snooker, repeat. Not quite the case now. Both fellas will be having the time of their lives out there. John just trying to buy himself another shot.
what's the shot maker got lined up here that shot he pulled off yesterday where he knocked the red in over the middle pocket with one that was over the left side and finished on the black was one of the best shots right up there with the best shots I've seen at the crucible For the run of the middle Eight. three ball plant. Nine. Yeah, that black wasn't too shabby either, was it? Here's the red again. Minimum risk for maximum gain. That's the way of the willow. Tough shot this now. All about the pot. Shot. He really does look sharp this morning, doesn't he? Fine fighter. 40. Yeah, when you've got the butt end of the queue in the air on that type of shot, so easy to get a little bit of unwanted side. what time Mark Williams got to sleep last night. I know Hazel was on about being in a kebab shop at half past two. But uh, he really forced that one, which he Mark had Williams. to do to 15. split the reds. Now, has he got away with this? That is very tight as to whether he can pop that. Might just be able to see enough of it. One. But we see that happen quite a bit when you're coming off another red. So you had to power that in to open the reds, but John just lost the cue ball a little bit there. good inside knocking that pink in. Yeah, the difference the second half of his match against Kyron Wilson was a huge contrast to the way he kind of started. He was trying to find his game out there. These guys are that good that when they're on song, those little recovery shots which are massive at this level, when they're knocking those in, they really do look like scoring heavy every chance they get. Eight. Good response this by John. I think as well with this final that, that there's not going to be any surprises. You know they know both one well, another, know each other so well. Their games, history, shared a lot of time on the road, abroad, and all around the world. No surprises. That was never going to be easy Fourth. because of finishing almost straight on the pink. It would be the green and black that he'd be looking for to drop in behind.
John Higgins. 40. These two great players, I find it difficult to pick out who's the best tactical player. They're both brilliant at the safety part of the game. They really are. Now there's a red over the left corner, or near the left corner. If he comes down the left side of the table as we look at it, he's got to get in behind those three colours. The yellow, brown and blue are quite a target to get behind. Well, he hasn't covered that red, but you can't take these for granted. Yeah, John actually won't be massively disappointed to leave this because he knows it's a toughie. And Mark is liable to can in a red or pink on the way back up. Long game's been good so far. a little surprised he played it like that okay he obviously fancied it that's why he played it but difficult at that pace I suppose if it goes in likely to be a good chance John went back to his chair not massively disappointed so can he take advantage of the forced error no no <laughs> It's one of those shots, you're cutting it back into a blind pocket. You can't see the pocket in your eye line. You're just guessing it. And he didn't hit it thin enough. One. That's another lovely shot with the drag where you hit the white on the bottom and you hit it with quite a bit of pace. And it pulls the white up. It's a tough shot to execute. So when you strike down on the just below centre. Seven. Eight. And just in behind the green, nothing pots there. Mar Williams, eight. And John will try and find a route to the red behind the pink near the cushion. I think he can do it off one cushion, so he should be okay. Mind is having to swerve it a little bit to make the angle. Unlucky to hit it like that. That's there. Yeah, you can tell he just fancied it. Most people can be afraid of winning. Great champions are afraid of Seven. losing. Absolutely no hesitation, even going back Eight. to that long red that Mark attempted, trying to win the frame. It looks in good touch here. Oh dear me. He missed a black like that, actually. Marlins. Yesterday, didn't he? Eight. And the same, the bottom jaw. I don't know whether you're not seeing it properly. 
Do you see movement but behind his queue, possibly? Not sure. Well, a chance for John to get on the black here. One. Well, that's now going to have to be the pink. Forty three behind. How many times have we seen John in this situation? You think he can't clear up again, surely? Big shot this. Oh, he's in the pocket. Foul. Just one. Mo Williams six. Got a little bit. Too much action on that. It's just he had lots of side on it. If he misses the middle pocket, he'll spin towards the two reds and went straight in the middle. So yeah, he, he just actually potted it in the thick part of the pocket, which meant the cue ball went more down the table. The enough. And that was the red that Mark knocked in in frame one to seal it. And the same again. Mark John. One. And the frame. Concedes. So the good start continues for Mark Williams. And he leads the four time champion, John Higgins, two frames to nil. Well, I fancy that many people who knew and indeed stayed up till midnight to watch that incredible finale with Barry Hawkins in the second semi-final and Mark Williams might not have picked this start to the final, Stephen. I know. Um, he's, he's, he's looked by far... He's, he's settled much quicker. Um, he, he looks more comfortable at the table. He's, he's, he's stroking in. Long potting's good. Um, he's OK, a little lapse of concentration, that pink off his spot. Um, yeah, all, all the smiles at the entrances and, you know, happy to be here. Looking at John Higgins leaving the arena, he's fuming with his start. Well, e exactly, because surely he would have wanted to capitalise on any fatigue felt this morning uh, by Mark Williams out there. After all, he was sitting with the feet up watching the finale of that semi-final last night. Yes, uh, I think it's just it's just the start of every match, the start of every session. Uh, you never know how it's going to go. Uh, you don't know how you're going to settle down. Um, and you know, perhaps both players are a little <laughs> bit apprehensive. <laughs> what's the answer? Uh, what's the, what are these? I mean, <laughs> key bad minstrel. I mean, it's just ridiculous, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, like, it just. Uh, he is a slightly different the character. His belt snapped. No wonder. <laughs> <laughs> That's Brian Wright, actually, and Brian was in that queue. He was first in the queue to get his tickets for next year as well, so he's probably lacking in sleep as well, <laughs> I imagine. Um, but generally speaking, it's a surprising start. Two 0 for Mark Williams, and he looks absolutely about as laid back as you could possibly be. He's gone into the wine gums now. Other yeah. gums are available. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no occasion. I, I, I said there on Mark Williams would be just as comfortable playing this out in the car park as playing in the crucible. <laughs> he just all. all places he, j he just fits in and just does what he does attitude wise even though it was a really nervy ending to that semi-final mark williams has got so much sort of you know sort of respect for the game as well as being sort of that laid back that he can just <laughs> he can just turn it on <laughs> OK. All right. Well, Mark Williams has had a sugar hit. He's absolutely demolished a whole bag of, uh, of sweets of some description and we're all ready for frame three <laughs> <laughs> was quite amazing. Thank you to third frame. Mar Williams to break. <laughs> I've got the crowd going there, watching Mark eating sweets. Yeah, I said his queuing was sweet, but <laughs> steady on. <laughs> oh, he's kept a few for later as well there. And yeah, I do remember in 1979 playing Steve Davis and he had a plate of sandwiches brought out. Never seen that one before either. Here's this red again. Stephen mentioned a decent long game this morning. Oh, 
Oh, great shot. Great shot again. Boss didn't get a hold of it. Yeah. One one. Didn't quite get the purchase on the cue ball. But great positive intent to that shot. Mark Williams, one. John Higgins is going to have to play some of his finest safety play to get a chance because at the moment Mark Williams is not leaving a sniff for him. There's always a pattern out there. It seemed that you think back to John against Kyron. It was Kyron the one who was trying to figure out the puzzle. How to break down the Higgins defences. It, it actually looks sort of the other way this match. John desperately trying to get in the first little body blow in these safety battles. Just can't find a good one. Something else to note. Cushions have been re recovered overnight. So you tend to play softer, especially early on, so you can hit these shots harder. Escape route, cut off, down the right side of the table possible pot on but where would the cue ball go if he potted it he'd probably be snookered <coughs> yeah, it's a bit of a problem because if he played the one that's near the pocket and left the white in the jaws there's a couple of reds available into the right corner that's why he's Having to think long and hard about this. And in the end, he might just have to try and pot his way out of trouble. He's looking at just trying to rest on the red. It's on the side cushion, but nothing doing there. In fact, he's playing a long bridge, tells me he's taking this on. There you see the fingertips and the edge. Oh, what a shot. <laughs> Unlucky. Well, as I mentioned, that was always going to be the problem. How was he going to get out of those reds? There was just no way. And there was always a chance that he could have snookered himself. But what a pot, though. Green ball, was that sorry? Thank you. Green ball. Nominated the green. So we'll have to get lots of left-hand side on this. Which he has done. Mark Williams won. It's two or three times already this afternoon Mark Williams has knocked in a must-get red. All right, he's not... unfortunate to not get on a colour off it, but it just keeps John at bay. For, 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 you know, the longer he keeps John up at that end of the table, the better. Again, John producing a good safety shot. <laughs> Thing is, against Mark Williams, one or two ain't enough. You've got to play it six, eight, even ten good safety shots to think you can force a mistake. You do know they'll always pick the correct option. <laughs> A 
That's a wonderful shot. It really was. He actually didn't play the pot. It was half ball. And he, it's not that he sees that he's going to miss the cannon, the two reds on the left. He feels that he's going to miss them. It's a feeling that a player has out there. I've seen these things so many times. It just it looks right to them, and it looked looked a proper shot. John's having a go. just thinking about screwing back off this red and sending it on to another one to keep it up this end of the table and screw the white back. If he attempts that, he's got to be careful he doesn't bring a red back up the table also. He's actually sending this red down, in and out of ball, and back down. That's what he's played. He's caught the jaw. <coughs> yeah, it may have looked quite reckless, actually. It was quite a, quite a good percentage shot. John shaping up now. Can he get through to the red? It looks like he can, yeah. So that good safety shot is just... Forced half a chance. One. And he's played that very nicely. And the pink is re-spotted, it will still be available into a couple of pockets. And he's got the perfect angle on this red to leave the pink Set. for the opposite corner. So it's developing into a very good chance this. Eight. It's like a practice routine the way they're sitting here, the reds. And even for the greats like John Higgins, you never settle in a match until you get your first frame on the board. Fourteen. Fifteen. All these shots, watch the cue ball, never travels more than 18 inches, two feet. Series of little stuns and screws. This is the art of break building, you're watching right here. 21. <laughs> 22. <coughs> But that wasn't the best. <coughs> Leaving himself hampered here. And that's what can happen. John Higgins, 22. When you're striking down on that, he got a little bit of unwanted side there because he had to play with a little bit of pace. He's not happy at the moment, John Higgins, that's for sure. One. Yeah, it's all right. It wouldn't exactly be pinching the frame if Mark Williams was to a big contribution here, but mentally it would be. Seven. Started only, what, 20 behind, but 
He would have been sitting in his chair a few seconds Eight. ago thinking, well, 2-1. He can't believe he's back at the table this quickly. Yeah, it was just John's positional shot where he left himself hampered that caused the problem. He'll have to try and forget about that as quickly as possible. Forty. Fifty. Twenty-one. Yeah, this was the shot here. Just a little lapse in concentration to leave the white there. Thanks. 22. And because he need just, uh, just a little bit of pace to get position. Unwanted side caused him to miss it. Tried to develop the red, but the double kiss has left him perfect. Twenty eight. Well, going very nicely for the Welshman at the moment. Twenty nine. was talking about the laid back attitude of Mark 35. Williams. It, that this is where you get the payoff, these kind of situations. Long day, long well, <laughs> long couple of weeks. But 36. Long and grueling semi final. And we all thought take a lot out of him, but he just brushes it off mentally. He just thinks, well, okay, done and dusted, put it in the back burner, get out and play, have some fun. Great temperament he has and a great outlook. 42. And a double to keep things going. No. Mark Williams, 42. <laughs> I expected him to get that double. 22 in front. Well, he needs a bit of angle on the blue here to get up to the red behind the black spot. Has he got it? Just six. <laughs> oh, I played that well. Seven. Not only the pot, but look at the angle he's got. He can bring that red off the cushion right here and now. Thirty. Yeah, 
probably just stretching a tad. John Higgins, 30. Now, Mark Williams now needs the green. Nine, nine points in front. Has he got the confidence to try and shift it off this red? Well, that's the shot he'll be playing, Alan, I'm sure. And almost, almost pulled it off. You can see 17 ahead. Eight. He puts the yellow and green. John Higgins could still tie. So he's going to need the brown as well. Ten. It's a natural to come out for the brown, but delicate little shot required. Thirteen. I said it was the king of cool. That was very cool indeed. Seventeen. It looked as if John Higgins was going to get his first frame on the board until he just left himself hampered when he was in amongst them. Twenty-two. Wow, well, what a start. Mark Williams, he's not going to bother about the 28 in the frame. He's played Mark Williams. He's won three. Who was expecting this? He was. He leads John Higgins by three frames to nil. So we heard Alan McManus in the first frame talking about the tradition of this game. You know, Joe Davis winning in 1927. And if you look at the footage of those old players, you'll see something totally technically different. We've got a still a Mark Williams playing a shot here. And just have a look at his front arm, in his case his right arm, and how bent it is. So we'll see him there. Anyway, if you look at the old black and whites, the old players used to play with a very much a straight left arm in my case, like this. The disadvantage of this is, is when you're playing, I've put the tip up against the cue ball, just to give you an idea of how far or how little you get through the ball. When you hit, you come through and you hit your chest, which is as far as you can come through with your backswing, you can only get through the ball so far, maybe a couple of inches if you're lucky. But in the modern game, if you bend your front arm and you get up to the cue ball, watch the difference now. So there's the bend, it's all ready. Same cue in, same place, come back, right the way through the ball. It's nearly three times the distance and you'll be right through the ball. It's particularly useful when you get the cue ball near the cushion. Get there, just put a little bit of bend in the arm and you can fire the cue ball straight the way through and have lots of power. And if that doesn't work for you, just have a kebab at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> it seems to be doing the trick for Mark Williams and that and actually just shutting your eyes when you put the pink at the end there. Yeah. It's extraordinary stuff from Mark, isn't it? I, I, look, I looked out, I was watching through the window there and I thought he's shut his eyes and he yeah. absolutely just struck the pink in. Watch this. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> Whatever works for you, use it. Um, uh, I think probably he's quite uh, interested. In the, he thinks he's lining up on the shot differently. Mm. And uh, you know, if the argument would be if you're lined up on the shot correctly, you just can deliver the cue. And that's perhaps what he's proving to himself by doing that, shutting your eyes. Mark Williams, I believe, is a player that likes to look at the cue ball when he strikes the shot as opposed to the object ball. Therefore, um, he can probably sort of argue that there's no need to look at that object ball. There's no need to look at anything other than delivering the cue. It's an interesting problem snooker players have. There's two balls. Which one do you look at at different times? You boys were actually saying as we were watching that frame, Mark Williams is just a really difficult guy to let get in front. You do not want to be chasing this man. Why not? But because he, he can play all sorts of frames. He, he doesn't mind how the game goes. There's no, there's no weaknesses in his game. Four. So he'd be a horrible player to break. go three, four, five frames and start to chase. Well, that is what John Higgins, the man who is chasing a fifth world title, is having to do right now. 3-0 down. Yes, and 
Good stuff there, the boys. Hazel, John is definitely on the chase this morning. Not settled as yet. Surprising, three frames in. Mark. Absolutely horizontal out there, so laid back. The occasion almost meaningless in his mind. I hadn't realised he closed his eyes on the pink. You see it happen sometimes on a straightforward black, but he was miles away from the pink. How can you close your eyes and knock a pink like that in? Have a look at this. Now, if you're right behind a black, you would maybe try that, but the pink's miles away. Look where the pink is. Well, that's astonishing. There's another absolute gem of a long pot. And Gabuki's Alan had made John Higgins a, a fairly Eight. strong favourite. I think it was four to seven. That's where you you'd have to put seven pounds down to win four. Nine. But at the moment. This Welsh player is defying those odds. Someone else are actually just thinking about Mark Williams' technique. He, he stays down in the shot longer than he ever did back in the day. If you probably looked at a video from him. I'm saying video showing my age, but... <laughs> he stays down in the shot for... Yeah, that's gone wrong now. Yeah, disappointed with that being wrong side of the blue, but... It was going back to the long pot. 40. That, that's cracking long pot a minute or so ago. When, he, when he's feathering at the cue ball, it's kind of, it's actually re very deliberate compared to the way he used to be. It was a couple of just light feathers really quick and off he went. You see here. He stays down for quite a bit of time. Oh, good shot. Mark Williams, 14. <laughs> Yellow's coming to the rescue. As you can see, mid session interval coming up after this frame. Slow swerve and the side takes the white to the red. John feels that he might be able to pot a red in the left middle pocket. Must be tight. Easy, this one. Good queuing, very good queuing. Had to 
to make something happen and that certainly has given them a very good chance here. Set. Eight. Hundred percent concentration required. He doesn't want to do what he did in 50. the previous frame when he left himself hampered. Sixty. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. He just needs this for his own belief, John Higgins. Not so, sounds a bit silly, but not even so much winning 31. the frame, but the way he wins this. Can win it in one visit. I'll just reaffirm to him in his 32. own mind that he's feeling confident and hitting the ball well because he definitely is. There's no doubt about it. But it's all right. Thinking the game, you know, talking the talk. You've got to walk the walk. This is better. Thirty-nine. He certainly walked the walk against Kyron. Wilson because he made two centuries and a 90 plus break in three of the last four frames. Fifty five. Could have been better. Still pot this red, but it's a bit of a cutback. No problem getting on a colour. It's all about the pot here. Oh, we got a kick. What a time to get a heavy contact. John How Higgins. unlucky is that? 55. He's got the frame at his mercy, and he gets a heavy contact. And all of a sudden, Mark Williams in with a chance. <coughs> Three nil behind, going along nicely, about to win your first frame, and that happens, you get a Eight. kick. Nine. There's one awkward red, and he's got an angle here. He may not play it to move it this time. He'll leave it there. <coughs> well, John. 60. Very unfortunate there. Meanwhile, Mark has come up a little bit short. Similar type shot to the one that John got the kick on. So 
Edmonton. Twenty two. Twenty three. All about that last red. First behind the black. This is not a gimme here, but he's going along nicely here. Thirty-one. What a body blow this would be, Alan. Yeah, he's trying to develop the red, is he? You know, dropping it in, so again, he's backing himself. They are about great champions. They. They just seem to know the right path on these clearances. 38. Biggest shot of the final so far. 38. <laughs> Mark Williams, 38. So that kick hasn't cost on the frame, not yet as we show you that difficult one along the cushion, but it's ran safe. And what a difference that can make at times when you do miss. When you're playing well, you always seem to get away with it. When you're not, if you miss, you stick the pot up. there from John. It's been a tough mini session here for him. And now he's got a chance to get his first frame on the board. Yeah, massive difference. Isn't it? John can close to 3-1. You, you, know, you start going 4-0, 5-0 behind you. You're probably not, if you're ever going to catch your opponent, you're probably not going to catch him till probably sometime tomorrow afternoon. That's at best. Wow. It's important he gets himself into the match here. Under normal circumstances, this is just well, a formality. And he's lost the cue ball just a touch. Work to do. Not best player in the world with the rest is John. Three. Don't get me wrong, he's not, he's not poor with it. He's just not as good as one or two fellow top 16 players. Big, big shot now. place with the cue ball at the moment it was as if he hadn't made his mind up whether to yeah. roll it in or stun it in Alan yeah I, actually yeah I, I agreed then but actually if we could see John queuing at the rest he, he's tips on feather and it's probably about three or four inches back from the cue ball so when you go to deliver you're kind of trying to search for the cue ball oh, that was a big shot here's another I think he's playing for the brown in the yellow pocket Nope. It's not his favourite implement, there's no Johnny question Ains. about it. Five. And this will be a body blow because it was the kick that cost him this frame. Okay, bad positional shot on the green. But it wasn't his fault that he got the heavy contact. Three.
Seven. And that wasn't the best position of shot that Mark's ever played. Out of side there, Alan. Yeah, played it with check. What a brave shot as well as anything. In goes the pink. John Higgins has got a kick. That's his chance. chance. They can sit all the unfortunate. But Mark Williams won't mind it one bit. He goes to the first mid-session interval and he leads the final four frames to nil. OK, let's see how long the sugar rush lasts. Or indeed... How John Higgins responds, 4-0 down. Thank you, frame five. Mark Williams to break. Off we go then. Mark Williams, frame five <coughs> in the World Championship final. And leading four frames to nil. Tracking a little couple of chats, that wasn't it? With the boys and Rob Walker. Last evening. Mark at 90%. This is where you want to be or just over. John at 83%. And that's not a bad start. <laughs> Needs to keep One. rolling, though. Doesn't seem to be quite as fast, this cloth. Yeah, thank you. Foul. John Higgins won. Yeah, John told the referee that he didn't four. quite make it. Free ball. And he's left a free ball, trying to be so delicate there. Let's have a look at it. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, there was a famous one in the final last year. And there were Mark Selby trying to nestle in behind the black down this end. It was, it was brilliant referee and then by Jan. Greenball. Brendan Moore, another top class referee in charge of this year's final, his second. There he is, Brendan, casting his BDI over proceedings. Local lad. <coughs> Amazing to think, actually, just thinking about Mark Williams and some of the, the great things he's managed to achieve in his long career. He, he was actually the world senior champion <laughs> just over three years ago. Yeah, how did he ever get to play in that? He was only 39 at the time as well, Alan. He had to be over 40. Sneaked his way into it and won it. <coughs> John being positive here. In and out of bulk, top side of blue. Uh, good shot. Yeah, excellent. Sometimes the mid-session interval can change things around. It's a bit of a chance, but the black's tied up, the pink's tied up. It's not a good chance. The reds are nicely placed. Yeah, it's a bit of a risk if he was to take the one to the right of the black and try and develop it. It could go wrong. He's looked at the possibility, doesn't like it. 
So straight back off the cushion for the blue again. You've got the perfect picture of the screw bank. Oh, didn't put Seven. it in the center of the pocket, that's for sure. Seemed to jump a little bit, that. He's got a red too from the, the black there to the left. There's no use, there's no position off that. Thirty. Now he might just take the chance here of going f straight into the pink. That could really open things up. Brought a couple of reds into play, but he was hoping to play that cannon in such a way that the pink would have been 80. brought into play. So still a lot to do here to keep getting back for the blue. Ninety. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yes, played that lovely. That's actually the best shot John's struck so far in this final. Confidence. Going for two reds, obviously, here. He just can't quite get the pink in the open play just yet. 24. But he, he didn't play that too well there. White should have been further up the table. A change of plan now back for the blue off this one into the left corner. It's not the one he played for, but 25. he's safely back the correct side of the blue. Once again, he's lost Eight. the cue ball just a little bit. This is thinner than he wanted. Yeah, he's, he's definitely finding the bed of the, the table. Just a, just a touch in the slow side is John. 31. Two or three, the last few shots, he just keeps landing short. Decent position again, though. Now he's got a chance if he finishes on this red to the right of the black. Well, he's looking at the other one, but he was playing on this one so that he could pot it and just cannon the red away from the black. But he's not far enough up the table for that. Yep. If he can get to 64, he'll get his first frame on the board, you would think. Stephen said in studio, it, it, it's a funny dynamic that's going on right now. Until John gets his first frame, he ain't gonna, ain't gonna feel settled. And it's, it's f with champions like John, as he said, if it, was, if it was a decider and he had to make that clearance in the last frame, you'd fancy him all, all day long. Well, he's had to work so hard for this break. He's been up and down 41. the table. He's been all over the place. 42. <laughs> Oh, 
45 ahead, so not that many pots away from his first frame in this year's final. Forty-nine. It's a kind of strange one, the way the match has gone so far. I, I, you know, it's, 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 these matches, a lot of time you get a feeling of what's going on out there. It feels to me that 55. John looks the more likely to score heavy, and yet he's 4-0 behind. That was a kick that did for him in that last frame, but he definitely looks good when he's on the course. Yeah, look at that high break of marks, 42 to lead 4-0. But I think we might see a different John Higgins now that... 62. He's got the first frame on the board, just needs this red to make absolutely certain. 63. Yeah, there's one player in the game who's never going to panic, even though he lost all four and was 4 0 behind. 69. Um, he knew that the mid-session interval could change things around, and it looks as if it has. John's had seven centuries so far in this year's Betfred World Championship. And we've had 78 76. in the tournament, chasing that record of 86. 77. We'd have to have nine centuries in the final to beat that record that was set 84. a few years ago. Eighty-five. And this is a player that's had fifty-four centuries this season. Ninety-two. Ninety-four. So normal play resumes for the Wizard of Wisho. Ninety-seven. That's a fabulous century. <laughs> Six. Yes, the path that you have travelled matters not. It's only the path that you're on that really matters. Oh, the fabulous. The 119 of the finest. John Higgins gets his first frame on the board of the world final and trails Matt Williams by four frames to one. And almost as if to say, take that. A quick popping outside here, and this is Tudor Square, where the big screen is located, and uh, a lot of people around Sheffield are camped out. They're watching there, they're enjoying the sunshine on this bank holiday weekend, and indeed events in this final, because from 4-0 behind, John Higgins is trying to do what was last done in 2004. Now, the last time a player came from 4-0 down and actually win was Ronnie O'Sullivan. He overturned a 5-0 deficit against, uh, against um, Graham Dot back then. And, of course, it was famously done in 1985, but we'll just gloss over that one as well. I think that was 8-0 at some point to Steve Davis. But there we go. It has been done, Stephen, several times. Yeah, we were still very early in this match. And, and, as, um, and as Steve pointed out, Mark Williams' highest break was only 42. So it's not as if he'd 
really dominated the first four frames. Okay, it was the, the farm where he settled more quickly and, and he looked more comfortable at the table, but he didn't really, you couldn't say dominated it. So, I mean, that's that's the ideal way for, for John Higgins to get his, his final up and running. Um, you know, it's been one of the best break, but people talk about his all round match game and uh, how much of a great safety player he is. But that's his strength, what he just did there. It is. That's his eighth ton of the championship. Interesting to note that he's been better in this championship by Mark Williams. He's made 10 so far and counting. And this was the man who famously didn't really bother about finishing off the big breaks. He was quite happy to win the frame. Not now. And a poor break off from John to bring the red up. And leave Mark with an early chance. Yeah, that was John's 727th century break. Only Stephen Hendry and Ronnie O'Sullivan has made more. I mean, he did leave the auditorium, come back in again and probably made his worst break off. And that was playing from. There was no good fortune about that. He picked that cannon out. And what a shot. Come up a little bit Eight. short with his position there, having to go back, might be able to hold, no, had to go for the blue. Nine. Just coming around to have a look at the two reds that are closest to the black, just to make sure that they go, just cleaning the chalk marks off the table, that's what he was looking at there. Got the one to the left of the bunch also. Fourteen. Fifty. All our viewers know how I like to try and study all players. I tell you, but something a lot of people wouldn't really think about. But for me, Mark Williams is the best in the business at it. His walk round the table, I just love it. Like Twenty-two. Fifteen. He's on, he's on a conveyor belt. So he just sort of glides round, stress-free, relaxed shoulders. No tension in there at all as this red struggled in. Even there, such a nice little shot. Made it look so simple, but half ball cannon. 30. Yeah, both 31. players are similar with their shot time. They're both around 21, 22 seconds, usually. Now you see it. This time he's stuck in the reds. So end of break, by the looks of things. 38. <coughs> Mar Williams, 38. That poor break off shot from John Higgins has cost him 38 points. <coughs> the 
there's a lot of very good safety players in the professional game, but there's a certain amount of them that put the white in such a position, it's very difficult to return the safety. And Mark Williams is one of them, and so is John Higgins. They're just not playing the white down the table. They're making it as awkward as possible for their opponent. Is he having a go at this? He did. <coughs> it could be very costly indeed. He couldn't see an escape route there, so tried to pot his way out of trouble. Yeah, you... He was hoping to get at least close to the pot, and then he gets a fuller cannon on the black, but... <coughs> excuse me, missing it so thick, he um, completely lost the cue ball. It's funny that in the modern game, that you think about people's safety game, it's, it, it kind of used to be about execution of safety shot. It's not about that. It's about the shot that you choose is the most important thing, and therefore the best snooker brain, the best minds of the game are the ones that excel in that department. Six. I said before, these two great practitioners of the game are two of the very best. Seven. He's looked at the black and he's looked at the yellow. And even though he's hampered, the black is the better choice for position. But he's hit the black too thin. Needs to pull up. I think he's just okay. There's one in the middle of those reds that pots. And I think he can just about Fault. reach it. There you see it there. That's where centre centre ball striking is so important. You just get more revs on the cue ball. So the cue ball comes back with less effort. That was a beautiful shot. And that's what he does now, Mark. He hits the middle of the cue ball and every not every shot, but when he's trying to hit it, he hits it. You see, if you hit 22. the middle of the ball, you're effectively hitting more volume of ball. Therefore, 20. there's less effort to impart the spin that you want. It's not rocket science, but it's difficult to do it. And you could see there where he was addressing the ball, right down at the bottom the cue ball to create the backspin. And winning this frame 29. means that he's guaranteed a lead going into the second session. Thirty-four. 35. And still, the steady pace remains. Nothing hurried. So many elements of this sport that people don't maybe think of. Breathing, walking, everything. 40. It's all part of your game out there. 41. When I say breathing, you know, just trying to... It's easy to walk round the table and sort of hold, be holding your breath, and then obviously the the tension can build. It's important to try and relax. Already marks highest break in this year's final. Forty-eight. Forty-nine.
but this frame a clear indication of how good it is to make a good break off shot which John didn't do after making that century break brought a red down and that 54. opened the door for the 38 break to start this frame 55. 60. That's those revs in the cue ball again. Top reaction in the cue ball. Top reaction to your opponent knocking a century break, coming back with this. Sixty-eight. Seventy. So all of a sudden, this final picking up pace. Both players queuing well, as you would expect. Seventy-three. What about this for a positional shot? Seventy-seven. Eighty-two. Williams leads John Higgins by five frames to one. Brilliant response from the Welshman, 95, and as you were saying, it could and probably should have been better. It, it could have, but um, yeah, it's a frame-winning ch yeah, chance that he took. Um, worrying times for John Higgins. Uh, these next two frames are important for him uh, because you know seven-one would be awful. It would, and suddenly, if he's sensing weakness in John this afternoon, he's got to jump on this, hasn't he? Well, I mean, I mean, he wouldn't have sensed weakness from the century that John Higgins Indeed. made, um, but he's bounced back straight away and, and, and like a box of matches, he's given him um, a dig of his own with that, with, that, with that total clearance. Well, not total clearance, but, but 90 up break. Um, yeah, and, and as I said earlier, it's, you know, it is damage limitation for John Higgins. Can he get out of this 5-3? Um, you would think possibly they might share the frame. Six two is not not the best, but Steve certainly doesn't want seven one. But that you know the other side of the coin, that's what Mark Williams will be going for. Well, we did have a, a laugh at a tweet earlier on saying that um, Mark just might start running out of steam here, but there's absolutely no sign of it so far, Steve. No, and, and he, he does look you know, it, it, back to his brilliant best. Uh, every match starts off with a new storyline to unfold uh, and four sessions plenty of things can happen uh, many times here at the Crucible we've seen one player dominate a session and then the next session the other players completely reversed the, the role and you can put it past John Higgins to get himself and regroup but it will be about regrouping I think mentally uh, and, and perhaps sometimes even regrouping after the first day waking up a bit fresher because yeah. I remember being in front of Jimmy White by a long way and felt like I'd had the domination of the first uh, first day but Jimmy came out firing on all cylinders a second and Stephen's done similar as well Indeed, and even in this championship John oh, Higgins was 4-1 down against Judd Trump came back and managed to knock him out in a final frame decider back we go to Alan and Dennis yes there's actually been a lot of finals down the years with huge comebacks even last year, John Higgins, he, well, he led Mark Selby, not sure, around 10-3 at one stage. Certainly 9-3, I remember. So many times Mark Selby himself been well behind to Ronnie O'Sullivan. Well, if ever he needed a long pot, this is it, because he can get on the black if he knocks this in. Wonderful curing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Christopher and Just starting to come alive now, this final, as we knew it would. He actually potted a red in the other corner last night, um, yesterday against Kyron, didn't he, to win the last frame to kick off the break that won the last frame. So it just signs here that both players are starting to <coughs> just grow into this final. As the Thanks. boys said, John really could be doing with Nick in the last couple of frames. Nine. There's still four reds available for John here. 60. <coughs> yep. I think he wants to leave the one. He's on the one at the back of the pack there, but he wants to leave that there for later so that he can possibly pot that and split the reds when he does that. So he's away at three or four shots ahead. Let's see how he gets himself 70. on that red I mentioned here. Looks as if he can screw back in behind it. Now he's left himself a bit straighter on this, so won't be able to do it this time. 24. So he's picked off all the loose 32. ones. Four reds, four blacks. Thirty-three. And a pretty good angle, but they're not a good pack to go into. He'd want to stun into the left red at the back there. He wouldn't mind springing off to the left with the loose red available, which is what he's done, and he's played it very well indeed. Forty. Played that. Extremely well, and now just play for the blue here. Forty one. I'm pleased to see this standard now from both players. There could have been a lot of tactical play. They're both brilliant at that, but they're in potting mode. And John up to 91%, but look at Mark sitting at 93% with his pot success rate. Look at Mark at 88% with a long pot. Oh, that got a big bounce off the cushion. That really did come off the cushion. That's baffled John. He can't believe that 46. one. 46. And that's spoiled the break. He just played once again for a single red, but that come off the cushion must much faster than it went on to it. John Higgins, 46. Oh, 
Well, he's left a bit of a tempter here for Mark Williams. He didn't intend to. One of the white on the box cushion. Just wondering if he could take a double on here as a free shot. He'd be on the black. <coughs> the red at the back of that little bunch could be possibly on for a double. And John's very good at that type of shot. <coughs> yeah, he's just checked to see if he would leave anything. And he wasn't, so has he got it? <laughs> of course he has. <laughs> <laughs> the Higgins family there. And I just noticed Josephine on the right there. She's come down as well. One of the best, Alan, at picking out doubles, John. Well, he's Eight. the best, there's no no question. Remember that? Nine no, miss final against Judd Trump. He doubled the the pink to leave a mid distance black to win the title. How's the split? No. Not terrible, not perfect. At least... Sixteen. Oh, I can see the one to the middle, that's a little bonus. Be careful with these, these are not as easy as they might look. Sometimes you just don't see the, see the line properly. Well done. Seventeen. the red and back to three behind and 23 be very interesting final frame of the session coming up John can close to 5-3 he'd be going in tonight feeling 24. really quite positive actually Yeah, you don't lose your form in a day here after you've produced the snooker that 31. this man has. As I mentioned, against 32. Kyron Wilson, two centuries in the 90 in the last, well, three of the last four frames. Thirty-nine. Forty-six. Forty-seven. Unlucky with the cannon, so it'll be cross double. Fifty two. Not this time. John Higgins, fifty two. But a good response from John Higgins. And he closes the gap to just three again at trailing five frames to two. 
So better there from John Higgins. And the other day, actually, he came into the studio and he wasn't playing particularly well in one of the sessions. In fact, his highest break against Kyron Wilson in one of them was only 37. But he saw our footage on BBC, didn't like what he saw, thought he was queuing wrong. Let's have a look at the footage today from him playing and we'll show you the differences. We see John Higgins walking into the shot now. OK, he's unusual in the respect that his tip doesn't get right up to the white. But he's actually shortened up his bridge hand. The distance from his bridge hand to the cue ball has been shortened in. He comes back, he still finishes his backswing as the cue nearly comes off his bridge hand, but it makes him very, very accurate and a little bit more compact. So I'm going to show you exactly what, what he does. And if you, if you try this yourself, you'd be amazed how much uh, work you can get on the cue ball. So ordinarily, I'd go into here. My bridge would be this sort of length, ready to go. But if you do what John Higgins is, keep it in the same place, but just move your bridge hand in slightly closer. Play the same way and you won't believe how much work you got on the cue ball. It's fantastic. You can always trust John to spot something there. And indeed, uh, great to see that uh, hopefully some of the footage uh, has helped two of our players today. Um, this is going to be a huge last frame of the session here, Steve. The difference between 6-2 and 5-3. the final frame three. of this session. It is, yeah, proof you can't, uh, you can't get a good man down all the time. But um, massive. It always feels like the last frame of a session is worth double. Back we go. Alan and Dennis. This is definitely the last frame of this session. Mark wasn't quite sure. He asked the referee, Brendan Moore, who confirmed that it will be the last frame. It's under two hours, just one hour, 50 minutes and counting. 15 minutes and 40 seconds, average frame time. Williams just tapped his leg there in appreciation. Usually they tap the table, but that time just patted his leg to say, good shot, John. Delicate, very delicate. <laughs> delicate, very delicate again. with a touching ball here but it's not you can still play away up the table just got to be a little bit wary of the red nearest the blue doesn't want to hit the brown that's a poor shot from John it has to be said Mark Williams should never had a a look at this one. Yeah. He just somehow knew that was in. Just brushed it in. Love the way he played it, actually. Didn't overhit it. Feature of Mark Williams' style. Six. Here it is again. See, tension sometimes makes you overhit shots like that, but uh, I've got an exponent in the game that doesn't really feel it, so he's able to just brush it in, as I say. Seven. He's a big lad here. He'll need to be to reach this pink, but I don't know how much work he wants to put in the cue ball, if any. Yeah, happy to. Play in the loose red. Play very, very well though. Not 
absolutely first. certain here, is he? Playing, he might even play the cannon in the black. Look at the pot success rate in the last three frames, 97%. Doesn't want to be straight on the black, and he's not. But unusual, look at 14. the reds. They're, they're like the reversed, it's as if the pyramid was facing the other way. I've never seen that before. Well, that's the end of break. That's the first real careless shot that Mark has played. A little shake of the head 21. tells you what he thinks of that. Uh, cushion's still on the slow side. John's been struggling with that as well, especially this black cushion. He's trying to push the yellow safe there, Mark. Paul Williams, 21. And now the yellow that you mentioned there, Alan, will be the target for the safety shot. It's as if you were trying to play a cannon onto the yellow and you know you have a chance of a snooker. Contact with that yellow full ball, he would have had the snooker. He's having a go at this, I think, Mark. First shot of this match he potted was not dissimilar, but this is tougher. Yep, not this time. He's having to inject so much pace into that. Everything's safe, though. This red won't pass the other red up into the corner. Just thinking about screwing back behind the black. Which would mean he'd have to knock this red onto the one that's closest to the middle pocket and screw back behind the black. He's just here, he's just trying to work something out of nothing. When there's nothing on, just, just play a nothing shot. I, I think, you know, these players are, sometimes you get greedy. Last frame of the session, you want to make it happen. But if it's not on, don't play it. At least he's getting a good cue ball. He's playing the plant. Yeah, perhaps he tried to just slip off that red and slide in off the other. As I say, the, the main thing was he was always guaranteed a good cue ball. The only thing with that last shot he attempted, he's given the initiative to Mark. And he gets the white tight. He's got the advantage. Just enough to be able to screw back, as you can see. And it's a pretty good one. First awkward frame we've had, really. Four reds up the other end of the table. It's one of those frames, isn't it, where both players having to just work so hard every shot. <coughs> a, try and put your opponent in trouble, and B, don't leave a red to either middle pocket. And with a red near the yet, the, the yellow bag as well. well any loose cue ball pay the penalty. It's a stressful frame the way this is and especially being the last of the session I think both players are enjoying things out there but 
not just at present. This is a tough, tough old frame. Yeah, there's not one player in the game enjoys this type of frame where they all go up the other end of the table. Now, this is a big shot he's taking on here. Huge shot. That was very risky and could be very costly. John comes into the table and, uh, well, he can't believe the easy starter he's got here. enjoying it yet. A school of thought that if you can enjoy the journey, the destination looks after itself. See, I think both players have, have enjoyed this Six. to a degree. It's, a, it's been tough going in stages. Oh. Definitely been better after the mid-session interval. Now, can John just close this frame out? But he's playing under huge pressure, even although, even the Seven. way the balls are. I know he's got a lot of balls to pot, but if he somehow can come out of this session, just two behind at 5-3 after it's being 4 nil behind, he'll be delighted. Yeah, and he wouldn't be worried at Third. all going in this evening session because he'll have in his mind as well that frame. Frame four, the on a break of 55 and got a terrible contact. It, it definitely cost him the frame. Or cost him... Well, he'd have been guaranteed to win the frame, but for the kick. So he'll not be stressed going in 5-3 behind. A long, long way to go. 20. And he does look in good nick when he's in close, and that's the important thing. Twenty one. figure he's looking to get to 67. And to get to that figure, he's going to have to pot quite a few balls because after the blue with the reds situated as they are, he's going to be on the lower valued colors. Wisely just taking the kick out of the equation this time. Playing for the red down this end. Good thinking that. 36. Well, he's had a premature glance at the scoreboard there. 37. He's only 16 points in front, so... Got to keep potting balls until the frame's safe. The two reds to the right 46. of the yellow, they're okay. They're in nice potable positions. Uh, 
I love this shot as they zoom in on the table. It just gives you an indication of how 43. big the snooker table is, 12 foot by 6 foot. Forty-six. Had to pot quite a few balls to get forty-six. Yeah, Twenty-five in front before 47. that red. John John Higgins, snooker brain has been working overtime in this contribution, working out what he needs. Just peeling off these reds, and hopefully, not going to require the one in the side cushion. 31 in front, the big shot now. Good position on the colour for the red and bulk. I think the easiest colour to play for would be the blue. Needs to keep coming though. Needs to keep coming. He's the wrong side of the blue to get to the red near the yellow and he's 32 in front he's going to need the blue and one more red why is he not even looking at the green I just don't understand that well you know what he's looking at Alan he's looking at one of his famous doubles to clinch the frame yeah, I mean fair play if he pots it but why is he not even, not even looked at the green this is risky Oh, well done. Great shot. 59. Made sure of the double. Wasn't too concerned about getting on the black. That was the most important part of the shot. But there's just one snooker needed at the moment. So you'd have to be very careful here because the way the balls are situated, no problem getting a snooker. John Higgins, John made, he had to pot 21 balls. Yeah, and John putting the black safe at the tail end of that visit. I know exactly what he was thinking, he thinks. If Mark Williams gets a red, black, look at where Brown is. To get a snooker, red, black, yellow, green, pretty much guaranteed snooker if he got that far. So he was wise to park the black. Good tip by Mark. he got up his sleeve here there's a possible back double on he's looking at the uh, maybe the chance of playing a snooker to send the red past the yellow and that way he's sending the red twice across and stunning in behind the yellow Well, he slotted it in. He 
played it in such a way that he might have got the snooker, but to pot the red at that angle into the middle pocket was top class. Three. Mark getting his bits together there. Five. And before the start of play, if someone had have said to Mark Williams, he'll take the session 5-3, he would have taken it gladly. Eight. He's marching around the table now, John Higgins. Chance to go and relax with some of his family and get himself Twelve. ready for the evening session. Seventeen. A very entertaining first session from Higgins. From these two former world champions, Mark Williams led 4 0, so John Higgins, he'll be pleased to have closed the gap to just two. He's 5 3 behind, though. This afternoon's first session had everything, a lightning fast, confectionery fueled start from Mark Williams and a resolute recovery after a big shock to John Higgins' system. What will we get tonight? Nine frames to play and we'll share them in the excellent company of two major winners, John Parrott and John Virgo. Good evening, James. Good evening, Hazel. Good evening, everybody. And the two players shake hands. Thank you, um, Thank you ladies and gentlemen. Frame nine, Mark Williams to break. And I think if that old phrase, John, form is temporary, class is permanent, then this is the answer to it, this final. Nothing more true, John, than that. Two wonderful players who have got themselves to another world final. Incredible. <coughs> but then again, when you see what attributes they have, Maybe not that incredible. Wonderful <coughs> match players. Great temperaments. I mean, can anybody more laid back than Mark Williams coming into a major final? Incredible. Yeah, he's a one-off, is Mark. Long pot success. Well, John Higgins at 50%. Four. And didn't see the value in taking that red on because he wasn't certain to be on a colour and it was risky. So just probably thinking, I'll just play my way in this evening because it must have been a shock to the system to be 4-0 behind and 5-1. Yeah, didn't really get out the blocks, did he? Opening session. I don't suppose it was being tired or anything. It was just a, one of those sessions. He just maybe a little bit nervous and didn't really get going. Double. Clever shot, as you'll see with Mark Williams, but this is a tricky black. Mm, just a bit high. Mark Williams won. To say, tricky black. But once he'd got the double, was forced into it, really. Close. I think John thought it was in for a second. I tell you what, that's a big shot in the frame as well, John, because if that goes in, and you see just catching the near jaw, purposely left it on the black where he pot it and go straight into the pack, so that was a huge shot. <laughs> I didn't think that was on, to be honest with you. One. He may have ended up snookered on both, pink and black. If he's landed in the one spot there, 
well he can swerve this to potty and he's just looking to see if he if he swerves it with a little bit of side will it come off the cushion and it can go between the pink for the red and there's Manchester United footballer Michael Carrick John somebody who uh, you'll know very well being a fan yeah absolutely one of Manchester United's all-time greats there's no doubt about that and uh, he's retired Eight. but he's going to be on the coaching staff and Talking about Manchester United, all our thoughts go out to Sir Alex. Hope he's on the way to recovery. Mark Williams, eight. That was an excellent pot from Mark in the middle there that he chipped in. But you couldn't believe where he finished. Just needed anything really on the black. It was a brilliant chance, as I say, with it being over the corner, he could have played the shot to go straight into the pack and open them up. That's John's luck. He's got a clear run to the reds just below the pink. Needs a good cue ball, though. A couple of reds may be possible. Ooh, he's caught this much too thin. That's a miss hit. He may have been fortunate as well because he's left Mark horrible cue in here. Got to be very careful when you follow through, the cue doesn't touch the red. Yeah, there was a lot in that shot to think about. Not only was it extremely difficult with queuing across the table, he had to keep his eye on the fact that when he followed through, there wasn't any contact with the red he was closest to, so it was a big shot. Yeah, and he had to play it that way. If he'd have played it with pace, he'd have probably kissed the red near the top cushion and been on nothing, but it's a, a reprieve for John. And how many times do we see it? You play a bad oh. shot, you think it's going to cost you. Next thing, it's cost you nothing, and you're back at the table with a good chance. Six. Seven. Well, off the jaw. I think you may have missed that at one point. Yeah, it was a type of shot coming off that left hand jaw as we look. He, he could have lost the cue ball, but he's okay, nicely on the black. Just screwing back a fraction to leave room for the black to go back on its spot. 40. There's no doubt, John, that John Higgins has shortened up his cue action slightly. <coughs> he came in the studio the other day and said he'd seen something on one of the BBC coverage programmes that when he was playing, his cue action was a little bit on the long side, even for him. Now he's shortened it up a touch. A bit more compact, a bit more control. And he certainly started to score when he did it. That's okay, he's got a red to the right middle. 22. Always amazes me with John Higgins and Stephen Hendry brought it with the day. How far the tip of the cue is from the cue ball when he addresses it. Most players are almost touching the white. Well, one eye on the cannon. John Higgins, 22. One eye on the cannon, took his eye off the pot. But what has he left? First glance, nothing.
qualities you need as a snooker player, and patience is certainly one of them. Mark Williams has just you know, got to hope for a better opportunity there, and also when John <coughs> miss it, the safety shot and left him pretty awkward. Mm, this is a wonderful arena, and the setting. Well, we've been here now 41 years, and it just never fails to bring out a bit of emotion. He's taking this red on. Feels the only one he can leave is the one he's playing. Great pot. <laughs> Wonderful shot. One. Yeah, can't cue one better than this. And of course, where he's finished on the back is absolutely perfect for a little stun up. Right at the back of the cluster, definitely goes. So, from nothing, he's created a chance. That was an excellent opening red. Eight. When he pots this red, he'll release another one to the opposite corner. Purposely leaving himself Nine. low on the black. He's got an angle to go into them. But if he just played a cannon on the loose red that's to the left of him, he'd, he'd have a red to the opposite corner to the black. Depends how he feels, whether he feels as though he can guarantee the cannon on the loose red. talking about John probably 60. a little bit tight wasn't it so he decided I'll take the cannon and take my chances played it well yeah it's worked out okay the only downside you would say is a little bit closer to the cushion than he'd like to be but that was a Seven. good shot and he's got a nice angle on the black. You feel just one good positional shot here and the 30 points he needs to get to Snooker's required stage will be there. But it's just one more good positional shot. Mm, and he hasn't played it. 24. I think he was trying to stun up the other side of the reds there. Just got into the cue ball a bit much. Trying to play for the red in the opposite corner, but got into the white a little bit too effectively. And now it's just a safety. So he's got a 40, he's got, well, I should say 35 point lead, but he's had three chances already in the frame. Not really put it to bed yet, which should be a little bit worrying. Yeah, he doesn't want to overcomplicate this third shot. Well, it looks like he's going to play safe into the top cushion and just put a red safe and the black safe or John in a safeish position. So I was thinking that to put the disappointment of the poor positional shot behind him, but this frame's still well and truly on. Yeah, he sacrificed there. More or less would have known he could be in trouble. And Mark Williams hasn't quite got enough on the cue ball, but there was a chance there he could have been right behind the brown. John still thought it was worth playing to try and get the black safe. Taking this on. Oh no, he wasn't. You fool me, but uh, now he's played it as he has. He maybe wish he had it done. Because he's definitely left the red to the left centre, containing safety, but it's not worked out. He's a brilliant pot in the middle pocket. One. And the only downside is if he's come straight, this was wonderful queuing from Mark Williams. Not a lot to look at there in those middles, John. Yeah, and I suppose we can see the value of John Higgins. If the black had been on his spot here, we could be saying that this is a great chance to steal, but as you say, a bit too straight on the black. 
Trying to force the cue ball out. Well, he's done very well. Needed a bit more side, but I don't think he Eight. wanted to risk playing with too much side. So, another good pot needed. Excellent. And this is a really dangerous table now for John Higgins. Yes, I know there's lots of pressure on it, and we see these players are that good, we think they're going to clear up every time, but this is a, a very dangerous board for him at the minute. 30. The Reds are all in the open, with the exception of those two, which will easily come out with a cannon somewhere along the line. So this is a very... 40. Good chance for Mark Williams, and an extremely important one, John. Yeah, absolutely. As you say, John Higgins has already had three chances, but it, it will a lot depend on this shot. He's looked to play a cannon on the red just to the left of the pink to hold, but he needs to catch it full in the face. Just about there is perfect. What an absolutely wonderful touch he's got. I mean, if that shot goes wrong, it's end the break. He's hit it, plum. As I say, once he gets 20. this black, the next red, the black is perfect for a stun up into the two stuck together. Although he wasn't expecting that big bounce off the cushion. Yeah, he seems to get a big bounce off the other side cushion as well. So whether he's just Maybe pushing the cue through a little bit firmer. Because obviously there's tension out there. 28. Mm. He could have done with being a little bit straighter. So Cannon on the two reds, trying to bring them into play. Oh, once again, played it beautifully. We have a new favourite for the frame now. 35. Yeah, lovely touch. 36. Perfect world, you'd get the green back up on its spot. Make yeah. it easier. And I think that's what he played for, John, and he's just under hit it. <coughs> We've been able to control the cue ball nicely. Now two points ahead. 39. Forty. Hmm. Could have done a tiny bit more on the cue ball there. He's got a little bit too much of an angle. Don't think he can drop the blue in without getting the cannon on the yellow. It's very close. He just plays the drop in. If he can, that's what he'll play. Yeah, because it looks like the yellow will pass the, the brown into the far right corner. It's all about line and length. Good line. Perfect length. 45. He's taken these well, hasn't he? 47. This is absolutely vintage Mark Williams. This is what he's always been exceptional at, John, when he was winning tournaments. Yeah, and he's just, he'll be a little bit disappointed there. He let that cue ball run through a couple of inches. John Higgins will be there wondering about the chance he's missed. Mark Williams needs green, brown and blue to take the first frame of this second session. But he's OK Fifth. now. Yeah, and even that was a better shot than it looked when you got that extension on the NDQ with the extra weight. Very easy to get into that cue ball too much and screw back. But he played it beautifully. Fifty-four. This blue to go 22 points in front with just 13 remaining. <laughs> Excellent snooker from Mark Williams. John Higgins had three chances and you might say had a run of the ball. First chance Mark Williams has got, he's won the frame. 65. And looks in marvellous touch.
Good start from Mark Williams. He won't be worried whether the cue ball goes in the middle or not. 72 and a friend. The family are happy. John Higgins needs to pick up his game. Three chances and not taken. Mark Williams now extends his lead to three. Six frames to three. Yeah, first blood this evening to the Welshman and Ken, a fantastic break and the foundation of it was that pot to the middle. Yeah, he must be one of the best middle pocket potters that we have uh, ever had in the game. And have a look at this, it's not only such a tough shot into the middle and uh, such an acute angle, uh, but perfectly on the black and played a really good break there, not only good black to red state, but then mm. a, a couple of beautiful little cannons. I mean, his cue ball wouldn't be on a string like John Higgins' would, mm. but what he does, he has a wonderful touch, as John Parrott said, and just to keep that break going, it was a magnificent break. He's very effective without looking effective. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, um, and actually, one thing that's, uh, that John Parrott was mentioning this afternoon when he was doing some demonstrations was that John Higgins has spotted that he felt he was pu pulling his cue back too far for the shot, for the weight of delivery of the shot. But it's something I spotted with Mark Williams. I think Mark Williams is pulling the cue back shorter distance than he had to a few years ago. So he's very compact uh, and he's hitting through the ball positively because he's not pulling the cue back too far. And when he hits it, he's punching it rather than stroking it. Yeah. And on a short, on, a, on fast tables, you don't have to have that long a pullback. And he, he's stolen a frame from John Higgins there, who will be not happy that he's given away guilt edged chances, mm -hmm. three, fr three chances, as we said. Exactly, three chances. Not not converted by John Higgins, yeah, very, he, very so. You, you could see him, he was steaming in his chair there as John Mark Higgins Williams was clearing up. That was a chance miss for John Higgins. Just a reminder, there's going to be nine frames played in this session. And John Higgins goes back to his seat with a wry smile on his face. That's not a good break-off shot. Just not found his touch yet. Yeah, I love this shot on the break, John. This one, absolutely perfect. I hit that red full ball. It was end the break if he missed that. Beautiful little shot. Took the harder shot, or the harder pot, if you like. But can John Higgins get past the blue? The way he's looking, I think he can. He's coming down to see the availability. Well, can he? On our virtual. Look, he seems as though he can't. He's having to play a little bit of swerve. This is missable. Well, that was missable. He'd be relieved to see the cue ball nestling into the cluster. Yeah, you had to play that slower than that, didn't you? Once you hit it that hard, the swerve wasn't going to come back. See, the cue ball goes out. Not enough time for it to swerve back in. I'm very fortunate to stick in the side of the pack. Decent cue ball. Now this will be a test for John because a couple of safety shots he played in the first frame of this session, he caught them much too thin, didn't really hit them, played a break off shot, didn't really hit that well. Needs to be finding that ball cushion, particularly against the potter of Mark Williams' quality. So there's pressure on this. That's why, once again, he played a containing, but he's not hit it right at all. OK, he probably left a red that Mark won't be tempted with, but that's certainly not like he played it. Hmm. Well, this is brave. This is a horrible shot. Cut back in the corner, no idea where the cue ball's going. And you need to cue it well off the cushion. Mm. 
question that shot selection, John, because as you said, particularly under the cushion, it's hard to generate the pace, even if the red had gone in. Look where the cue ball finished. Can't get to the one that's just away from the pocket. I'm going to play this one near the top cushion. Hoping to go up for the blue, probably. Or pink. In it went. I was about to say, John, it was right oh. touching the cushion. That. It needed, it needed putting. It looked, it looked easy at first glance, but it was very close to the cushion, that. And it just about wobbled in. Sounds ridiculous that you could miss one of those, somebody of John's capabilities, but they can be missed. Just feel as if he needs to make a frame-winning contribution with one of these chances just to settle down this evening. As we mentioned, he had two or three chances in the, the opening Six. frame. Didn't take them. Just needs to get his scoring boots on. Seven. Mind you, I'm saying that, John, in one of the sessions with Kyron Wilson in the eight frames, his highest break was 37, if you can believe that. But he came out of the session 4-4 four, four with him. So it just shows you the quality of his match play. 15. That's what his B game's like when it's not all firing. Yeah, but I think those type of frames against a young player like Kyron, you'd always fancy John in the tactical side. But Mark Williams can match him in that. And I agree with you, this is a, a big visit. 20. Just to settle him down. Twenty-three. The two reds adjacent to the left corner pocket, I think. Well, at least one goes, so he could stun up for one of those here. Which he's done it now. I assume the right hand one goes as well. 30. Yeah, this is a really quite a nice chance because he's got obviously two or three loose reds, but he's also got a lovely cluster, 31. the three next to the pink. If he gets on the blue at one point or indeed off the pink, he can split those up. He's having a look at the pink now, but it's one of those that will be after, absolutely lovely coming in there off the blue. So he's taking it this way with the pink, slightly stretching. And there we go, flicks the three reds out into open play. Even better chance. 37. What he said. <laughs> Thanks. Thirty. No, sort of an angle has he got on this black? He doesn't have to play any more cannons. Situations you wouldn't mind it being straight, but he's just off straight. Got to cue this nice. Well, he's got a little bit twitched in between. Forty-five. He's looking for another twenty-five points at this visit to get to snooker's required. Taking the slightly trickier red in the. Left hand middle. Forty six. Really generate any pace. It was such a tricky pot that. So he's slightly wrong on the blue. He 
Is the cue ball going to pull up? Mm. Well, applause, but it's a bit further down the table than he wanted. He may still have a pot on, but it's not as easy as he was looking for. Still looking for three more reds. No, it was tricky, that. John Higgins, 51. It's not an easy shot that on a screw down and up the table off it. Shot before was the one that was the costly one. And a big area really off the blue for John to play into. Once again, when you play it with that page, you've got to be so accurate. And as soon as John walked to the table here, something was interesting him. Three ball plant. And do you know, John, it looks on. It looks absolutely plumb, John, doesn't it? It does. <coughs> when these second two reds are very close together, you've got to hit the first one bang in the middle. But at first glance, and looking again, looks unmissable. Well, I'd be amazed if he doesn't take it. Well, maybe... Well, they say the camera never lies, but... The only thing I can think of is the second red in the line of three is just on the other one, touching the other one. Maybe he thinks that's the problem. Yeah, maybe. Well, Mark's having a look at it. And I think Mark would be of the opinion that it could be, so he won't be leaving John a chance of possibly playing the plant from the balk end. Okay then. That plant's still there then. I mean, in that virtual thing, I mean, it, it looks on, but. You know better when you get down behind a shot, obviously. No, just nestling into them. Yeah, it is touching the other wow. red, John. And that one didn't nice. touch your red either. No. Mark Williams, four. Yeah, it is. <laughs> He's not asking the referee to replace it, is he? Referee Brendan Moore would be pleased that you said from there, Mark. He won't want to be replacing that. I suppose that's the problem with John with this type of shot because he cues so far away from the cue ball. It's this delicate shot's difficult. That's a good point, John. It is very unusual. I can't think of any other player in the professional ranks who cues up like that. To be honest with you. Well, that's opened the reds up. Mark Williams hoping to get the next chance. You feel if John Higgins gets it, he'll be frame over. And possibility of cutting this red to the right middle. Well, no, just decided to knock it safe, so he's putting a few insurance uh, balls to the cushions. Don't want to take any undue risks. He's trying to protect that 47-point lead. Tried it in the last frame. Didn't work.
Hmm. I read that's in the book area that John's ignoring. It's going to play some part in the shot because if John Higgins thinks he's found a shot to nothing somewhere or. He's having a look now. I wonder what shot he's come up with there. Yeah, there's that red that's just up into the right of the black. Only problem is, you've got to be careful he doesn't run into the red near the left hand side cushion. Well, he's avoided that, but by playing it that way, well, he's left the red he played. Mm. Not striking the ball well so far this evening. Well, it's also a bit strange, John, isn't it? Because he's, he's played the shot before to put a red on the cushion to try and keep it as tight as possible and then follows it with that shot. It's not like John at all, that one. Well. Anyway, it's gone. Live by your decisions. If Mark Williams can, after potting his excellent red, can knock the blue in, big chance certainly to get back in the frame. Absolutely. I think it's going to be a tall order to win it at this visit with the reds near the side cushions. Six. Seven. Fourteen. Fifteen. Right, he's hitting the ball this evening, Mark Williams. It really is just like him at his best. Floats around the snooker table like nobody else. 22. Economy of effort with the cue ball. Doesn't hit anything hard. Except for that one he missed. Now, was that a kick? Mark Williams, 22. Mm. Well, I didn't expect him to miss it, to be honest with you. Let's have a look. Well, there's a bit of a jump, but when you're playing that top spin, you get the balls jumping. We'll see it a lot when we get this super slow mo watching. It. And it's amazing how often the, the cue ball leaves the bed of the table. But it looks as though he's had a little bit of a reprieve by covering that red with the black. <laughs> John Higgins now just trying to cover the red in the ball can or leave the cue bell ball parallel with it so you can't play a good safety off it. <coughs> this was the shot before. Yeah, you see the where the cue ball stopped. On impact. Yeah, played that well. Just a clever little shot from Mark there, just chipped the red cue ball opposite so he couldn't see it, the one in the bulk area. John may be forced into a pot here. He was, and he needs a bit of luck. Brown was blocking the the pocket for the pot, so John was a little bit fortunate. The significance of this session this evening, nine frames, somebody's going to win it. 
stands to reason nine frames, an odd number. And with Mark Williams already holding the two frame advantage when we come into this evening, you just feel that John Higgins' goal was to try and win this this evening's session. But so far, Mark Williams looks the, the steadier of the two. Well, if I said in the last frame that it was ripe for a clearance, this one definitely isn't. And John Higgins won't be in a hurry to remove those reds. OK, it's only a 25-point lead, but the way the balls are, that's quite a big lead. This will most definitely be the longest frame of the match so far. 21 minutes in frame two is the longest frame they've played. So that'll be going past that in a minute. It was a half chance. consider this red worth taking on. The only red he could leave is the one he's playing. But both players at the moment got a touch of the nearlies. And every time a red's missed, he seems to go to a cushion. is a bit loose. Well, maybe the pink's just covering it. No look from Mark. So just intent on getting this red away from the cushion. Possible double. Treble. Oh! Where did the cue ball nearly go? Well, it nearly went in there, and he's angled on probably two reds, John. He may have to be forced into the three reds on the left-hand side, so that cue ball finishing where it has done, stuck on that jaw, is making him play this shot. Well, got us what Dennis Taylor said, a dreaded double kiss, but that's uh, a good double kiss. Slowly but surely, though, the balls are coming out into open play. Just a two now over on the left-hand side. So Mark Williams showing all the patience. He was quite happy before just to chip the balls on the cushion himself, despite being behind. Just as I say that, another one runs up the cushion. Yeah, but once again, it was a half chance from John Higgins that... He didn't really get close to. He's in trouble here, Mark. This is what he's got. Can't see those two reds there. He can only play the ones down the left-hand side. Not easy to get back to the bulk area. Unless you play it with a loaded check side and hit it that well. Wonderful shot. As you say, John, that was difficult. And a little tap on the table from John Higgins.
It's coming up to 24 minutes and can't see an end in sight. Uh, John's going to play this and he doesn't like it because he's going to hit it thick. He's got to hit it thick to have a go at the pot and to avoid the red on the right hand side. The two reds that are to the right of the black, he's got to avoid the right hand side one. Brilliant. Oh. Fabulous oh, Williams pot. Four. Yeah, and of course he always knew the cue ball was going close to the opposite corner. Pulls the upside for John, he's got another red off the table, even though it's cost him four points. Saw the scoreboard there. Mark Williams has got to get the next chance, you feel. If John Higgins gets it, he'll win the frame. Mm, some good stuff at the minute. Mark's trying to get the balls into play and trap John. John's having none of it. He certainly won't be moving the two reds on the left-hand side cushion, that's for sure. Three reds on the left-hand side cushion. It's an excellent reply from Mark Williams. Really good tactical stuff from two masters. Yes, he can clearly get through to the reds on the left, but he's swerving around the yellow to hit this red. Don't want to bring one of those reds away from the cushion. Control swerve. <coughs> but he'll have left this on. But look at the table. You can't fancy Mark Williams winning the frame at this visit. What a brilliant try that was. Played the red with pace, up off the top cushion, trying to come down and split the reds. And just got the bump. Very clever shot. Yeah, and if he hadn't just caught the bump, uh, I think he may have well brought two reds into play. As it is, the pot on the pink, too risky for no reward. Mark oh, Williams won. Well, just at the moment, Mark's in control of this safety exchange. Twenty points ahead, John Higgins. Fifty-one remaining. Just wondering, he's trying to play a little bit of a shot to nothing. Red right across the table, cross double type shot. Here it goes. Good effort, but look at the cue ball. Excellent. Yeah, it just signs in the last few safety shots that John Higgins starting to hit it a little bit better. Where's the cue ball going? <gasps> it's good now. Take the chance of moving the reds away here, Mark. Well, he did. He could play it. So there's two back in play out of the three. And the one that's on the left hand cushion for a left hander isn't terrible. Yes, it's in an awkward position for potting, but it's a lot better when you're left handed. So from looking totally unpromising in this frame, if Mark Williams gets the next chance, it is a chance. 
I think if that red wasn't on the left-hand side cushion, John Higgins may be tempted to play the pot here, but if he missed it, he could knock that red away from the cushion. This is Pacey. In and out of Bork. So Mark Williams, he's going to get that half chance, but good pot needed. Stuff and then you feel Mark's got a half chance. Never take those reds for granted. Misses it. And John Higgins now. Two reds, two blacks to get to snookers required. Yep. One. Well, he'll be more than a little disappointed there, Mark Williams. He worked very, very hard to get that opportunity. Some tremendous tactical play. The balls were awkward. And he finally was presented with his chance. It wasn't easy, but... He'll be kicking himself, he didn't take it there. Looked like he had absolutely no chance of winning that frame. No, half an hour of determined effort from Mark Williams, but if John Higgins can pot this red, another black, he'll Eight. go 36 points in front with just 35 remaining. Oh. It's in, and he's on the black. Yes, and I'd be concentrating like mad to get right behind this red. It's only one snooker at this level, and that isn't a great deal. So absolutely dead weight. 16. Drop it into the jaws of the pocket and let's see it disappear. Because what you don't want to do is give yourself 15 or 20 minutes of aggravation. Attempted snookers by your opponent, so it's in. Okay. 17. Yes, as you say, no heroics. I'll keep Mark Williams in his seat. Any, any chance <laughs> of you turning that off, please? As the dreaded phone starts. 24. Anyway, fortunately, it didn't matter. The frame was over. And Mark Williams will stay in his seat. Oh, get out of it just to Johnny go to the... 24 uh, and the frame. For a front for break, comes to John Higgins, but John Higgins will be much relieved to get that frame on the board. So now he's still two behind, but he started to strike the ball better near the end of that frame. Yeah, we don't uh, see John Higgins with many weaknesses in his game, but I want to show you one. It's obviously with the rest, you've probably heard me talking about it. Part of the problem is when you're playing a shot with the rest, w watch this right arm. It's a bit like a pendulum. You want to catch the cue ball in the middle of the, these feathers here. So what I'm going to show you, I've got a couple of cue balls, a couple of reds. The way John feathers... <coughs> Excuse me, he's too far back from it. You see it there? So by the time he delivers, he's kind of searching for the cue ball. What he wants to do is get up nice and close like that, yeah? Nice and close with the ball. And then he can release from there. What he gets from that is more control and more power. I think it's something John Higgins could be working on because in frame four, it cost him today. Yeah, one of John Higgins' very few weak spots. But you've got to say, Steve, we were talking about this, you, you must convert your chances against Mark Williams. In essence, why? Uh, well, at any level, really, at the top-class professional level, the players are so good, even if they're 50, 60 pints behind, they can clear up on you. So, therefore, when you get a good gilt edge chance at the start, you'd like to make a frame-winning contribution. And John Higgins hasn't done tonight. He's let, him, let the, sort of the balls go astray. Uh, first... First frame, Mark Williams converted that chance he got. He, he didn't get away with it a second time, so he didn't get it. So, you know, John Higgins would be much preferring to win, like, you know, 70s and 80s and winning in one visit. Exactly. Because it's more his style. Yeah, well, exactly. And Mark Williams is a great hoover or operer of scrappy frames, <laughs> is he not? He certainly is, yeah. But I, I just love the, the cat and mouse games, you know, the tactics from both players, because they're both at the top of the game in that department as well. And uh, it's quite interesting. John can mix it with anybody, and Mark Williams can certainly mix it with anybody as well. Master Master, master tacticians. It's it's kind of degrees of greatness that we're playing for here, aren't we? In this final, I mean, they've they've been there, they've done it all, really. Um, it's it's Williams yeah. is after a fifth, and uh, Williams is after a third. I beg your pardon. Higgins is after a fifth. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're both great champions. They can both play play with lots of uh, with pressure heaped upon them and still pot the balls. But they're great thieves. 
of frames <laughs> they shouldn't be winning and that's uh, it's quite fascinating to see how they go about that yep it's been a great final so far so back out we go we've got a long way to go this evening but this is the third of our evening that last one was just over half an hour so plenty to enjoy between now and well who knows when thank you frame 11 mark williams to break Frame 11 underway, and just looking back at those first two frames, John, I think Mark Williams was probably, I know he's won one of them, but he may be a little bit disappointed he's not taken both of them. Yeah, he uh, certainly created a chance in the last frame from, well, a pretty forlorn position. As I say, the balls were horrendously awkward, weren't they, on the cushions, but he just showed tremendous patience and tactical acumen just to get himself a chance near the end. He didn't take it. It was a pot that he missed, but the stuff that he, he played to create that chance was fantastic. Yeah, the trademark long pot, we used to him knocking in. He didn't. And he'll be slightly kicking himself about not taking that chance. With that type of shot, you always err on the side of it, isn't it too thin? But catching the yellow... Has given John Higgins a tempter here, and he's good queuing. But the black is available into the opposite corner. And as I say, it just, I just felt at the end of that, with a couple of safety shots, that John was starting to strike the ball a bit better. Anyway, this is a tester. Played it in such a way that he thought the only red he could leave was the one he was playing, and he was right. Nearly got the double kiss, but safe enough. Not much Mark could do there. And the problem here is that red on the balk line. No real telling safety in the balk end at the moment. shot from John there, I don't quite know what he was doing there, but he's left Mark the possibility of a pot, screw across the face of the pink for the black which he's potted so and he's played in a way that is absolutely outstanding how many players would have played it like that that is wonderful a very strange shot from John Higgins the last one Funny enough, Mark's played a few of those in the Championship, John, and nearly all of them have gone wrong. Yeah, it's sometimes Eight. very difficult, particularly when you're using a cushion to go into the red, to generate enough pace. Just need a bit more topspin to get the arc on the cue ball. Yeah, far from an easy shot. It's just uh, Eight. he's either over-arced it or under-arced it. <laughs> Anyway, it was uh, not really a brilliant chance, even though the opening red was fantastic. You can't be a crucible, ooh, can you? <laughs> Got a good cue ball, though, did John? Yeah, I don't know about you, John, I used to hate these frames. Yeah, I don't think any player particularly likes them. Mainly because when the first chance comes, all the reds will be in the open. So whoever gets the first chance, well, you think is going to win it. And it's whoever's brave enough to go for a pot that might be left. I mean, the red on the right hand side of the table, John Higgins wouldn't normally be tempted by the double, but 
He can't get the cue ball into a safe place. He's looking to leave this cue ball tight to the top cushion. Just restricts what Mark Williams can do. Yeah, it's all part and parcel of the game, John, isn't it? You're going to get some of these when you play them. Mm. But it's just that you just know that they're just bitty, horrible frames until someone gets a chance. And whoever gets that chance, invariably, it would be a very good one. Just wondering whether he might be tempted by the double now, if he can get the cue ball back to a safe place, but not even the thought of it. Just content to find his top cushion. Tighter the better. Well, this time he's trying to get a snooker behind the black, but that wasn't one of his best. to the bottom of the cue ball. It could give him the advantage. Yeah, there are very, very few players on the circuit who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the tactical department with John Higgins. But Mark Williams is definitely one of them. He almost gives off the aura of not being capable of doing it, John, because of the way he plays, doesn't he? But you play Mark Williams and you are in some horrible spots on the snooker table. He knows where to stick the cue ball. Very clever. Yeah, that was a clever shot. Purposely playing that red from into the face of the brown to keep it up at the other end of the table. The other thing that's making the safety a little bit more difficult, the red near the far right corner, it's possible. So basically all the safety has to be in the left half of the table as we look. Couldn't play safe in the right half, you could leave a cut. And it's also stopping somebody having a go at a double for exactly yeah, the yeah. same reason. Absolutely. There's a couple of times I thought, oh, John might play the double here, but then I noticed that red over the corner. And Unless you get the cue ball on the right-hand side of the table, but then you might leave a pot to that far corner. But these reds gradually beginning to open up. Excellent cue ball. Oh, that's better. Tighter you can get that white to the top cushion. Least amount of shots your opponent can play and reply. Can't get the cue up in the air and jack down. And play a shot where he brings it. I mean, see Mark's face there, a little nod, appreciation. Definitely got the upper hand here, John Higgins. Is he taking this on? He did. He did. And he couldn't have got much closer. Oh, it nearly dropped. A bit slower. Gravity may have pulled it in. Anyway, John Higgins gets the first good chance. One. Yeah, just had the natural angle to come on the black. Mm. Nice shot that from John. And it really is fascinating at the start of these frames watching these two players. 
They use that expression, don't we? Chess with balls. I certainly like that with these two. And one's got a manoeuvre, the other one usually has an answer. But it was John Higgins' Eight. excellent cue ball. Tight on the top cushion that stopped Mark Williams from getting the cue ball back. And he was forced into that pot in the middle. So advantage Higgins there. Nice. Play for the brown in the middle, but he's overscrewed it. He wanted to be straightish on this brown. He's got a little bit of work to do now with the cue ball. May have to risk some kind of cannon here, coming round off two cushions. Well, he thinks he can. He could hold it off one, and I'll tell you what, he couldn't have played that any better. He couldn't have played that any better. 30. Look at the way the cue ball art with the backspin he had on it. That was a very good shot. And even better, John, the angle he finished on the 40. red, isn't it? Just to run through. Because the blue's pretty tricky with that red next to it. Maybe not pot at all. So he had to get position on the black there. Yeah, I don't think he has to play a cannon here. There's a little cluster of three, and I think the one the sort of load will go to the same pocket as the black. That's the one he's played on. Needs a bounce. Doesn't want to be hampered by the red near the cushion. Yeah, and back to the, the question on the blue now. Can he run through this and get for the black? Probably. Because if he can't, that's the shot he'll play. And he could. 22. Yeah, and not only did he nudge the red, he's opened them up. He's now got a 14-point lead. I wouldn't say the frames at his mercy, because we're playing in the final of the World Championship. But it's a great chance. 29. There you go, just looking for another 41 points from this position. When he clears the reds at this end that are in the open, he's still got that one over the far right corner. Played the little cannon perfectly. Just what you'd expect from someone 37. who's been four times champion of the world. Great response. And a fascinating frame right at the start of this with all that tactical play. And he's getting his just reward. And very importantly in this break, he's managed to stay on the black right the way through it. Doesn't 45. Have to get involved going up the table towards the blue, which is slightly hampered by that loose red. 46. This is excellent. Yeah, and I picked on it, or picked up on it in the last frame. Just signs now he's getting through the ball better. He was a bit nervy at the start of this session, but he's gone through that barrier and now queuing a lot better. 45 points the lead. I mean, in an ideal world, he'd like to have an angle on this red and go up the table for the pink. Well, he's decided to play 54. for the black, as long as he's not straight. <coughs> yeah, it's easy to forget as well, John, in these long matches, isn't it? The fact that he was actually 4 down in this 61. match as well, so pulling back to 6-5. I'm delighted. Oh, he's been under it from day, uh, from the start of the match, hasn't he? 4-0, 5-1. 62. Oh, he's pops the pink. And he'll go 60 points in front with 67 remaining. 
So just one red required after the pink. Confirms it. This red and Mark Williams will need a snooker. Sixty-nine. Truly really excellent from John Higgins this break. Lovely cue ball control. Perfect position around the black spot. And even though he slightly overhit that one, I won't be on the red next to the blue, I don't think. Or is he? 72. Now oh, a little swerve required. No problem. 73. Yes, and that'll keep Mark Williams in his seat. For any aspiring snooker players, you watch on John Higgins. He went through a rough spell at the start of this match. 78. Went in a, through a rough spell in the first couple of frames, even though, even though he managed to win one. Just believing that he hung on in there, 79. he starts to cue better. And he certainly is. Chances of making a century. It would be very difficult with the two reds on either side of the table, but... He does like a double. And that's what he's going to play here. 85. He does like a double. 86. thing when you're in the crucible theater when someone rolls a ball you don't 92. know it's in until it drops he's already had eight centuries in the tournament and there have been 79 okay. so could this be the 80th it's the record of 86 going to be beaten this year Well played, wonderful. Turn up. And the Higgins family, well pleased with that. And you can be a lot of things in this game, John. You can be a great pot of rate builder, but you need a big heart and battling qualities, which John Higgins has shown here. Yeah, you need a lot of ingredients in the recipe of being a top class snooker player, John. And he's got all the ingredients. Every one of them. Hundred and nine. Hundred and forty. Well, we said when they were tip-tapping about, it's a frame that no professional life, because when you get the first chance, then invariably the balls are there for the taking. But you've got to take them, and you can't take them much better than that. The Higgins family over the moon, as will John Higgins. He's still one behind, but now beginning to cue well. Mark Williams leads, 6-5. Well, there you go, a confirmation that that is John's ninth and it's the 80th century of the championship so far. Uh, we're chasing 86 as the record year in 2015 and 2016. And if we're to do that, there's already been two centuries in this final made by John. Uh, the top in any match here has been eight 
We're going to have to beat that in order to break the record this year. Can be done, of course, and he's certainly gone about it the right way. And it was all Ken and Steve because of this miss, the foundation of it from Mark Yeah, they were, sort of, they were sort of fiddling around, trying to get the cue ball back. And eventually, John got Mark Williams in a very difficult situation. And Mark, as he normally does, tries to pot himself out of, uh, out of the situation here. And he goes for this red into the centre pocket. And just how, look how close it is. Just went into the pocket and out of it. But if you look at the position of the balls there, Hazel, actually, John Higgins cleared the table from that position. <laughs> it was an incredible break, and uh, it sort of got him well, into the groove. From that position, actually. Yeah. From that position, actually, the only ball that he, he was leaving was the one he missed. So he's yeah, a clever yeah. opportunist player as well. But... Um, you know, like somewhere down the line, you have to take a risk. And Mark was the one that did, and John Higgins capitalised. This is the last before their interval. And just a bit pacey on the break off shot there. But I think the yellow may have come to the rescue for the reds on the left hand side of the table. And we always say that the World Championship is a marathon. This is Mark Williams' 100th frame of the championship so far. On the other hand, John Higgins has had 98. Not a lot of difference. Should be warmed up by now, then. Missed a couple of these cutback blacks. He's taking this one on. There's a couple of reds there, so he didn't. If he pots the black, you think he's bound to be on one of them. Played it well. If you get a bit of luck, take advantage of it, because it could always go the other way. Eight. John, I had absolutely no doubt he was knocking that black in. Honestly, I've seen him play thousands of frames over the years, and there's never been anyone who's more adept at potting those awkward, horrible shots that nobody likes. He's just brilliant at them. Here's the fluke, which obviously it was. He landed the safety, but the black after it. And there's John Higgins, not too impressed by it. But the black afterwards was horrible. Twelve. But He's brilliant at them. Now, to play the cannon, because the pink is slightly separated from the cluster, you have to hit the pink absolutely plumb full in the face to get that pink to run into the reds. There's one loose red, but you might not get a better chance than this. Got to hit that pink full. No, he didn't, and that's why he's gone in the corner. Mark Williams, 12. Mm. John Higgins, 6. Needed to hit the pink full. OK, don't get me wrong, it's a little unlucky for the pink to go in. Look at it again. See, he just got it half ball on the left-hand side as we look. Unlucky to see the pink go in, though. Seem to be coming to the boil now. Well, will we play the same shot, do you think, John? He's looking at it once again because the pink's slightly separated, but he can play it slightly differently. He can play it a bit gentler and play half ball on the pink and the red just left of the pink. He'd still be on one to the corner, but does he go all out full blooded? Looks like it. Oh. 
That was the advantage of having that red just to the left of the pink. There was always a chance you could have developed that. Six. Well, he's on this red. It's finished on the left-hand side cushion, but it's mighty thin. You say, John, it was mighty John thin, and it's a delicate shot. Settle down, please, thank you. The way John Higgins' his face looked, he just caught that jaw, didn't it? Mark what? could get through to it, he's got a nice angle on the black here. Mm, how well did he play that? Never easy when they're in the jaws to get perfect position, but that was superb. Well, under normal circumstances, you say, maybe he's a little bit unlucky there. They stuck Eight. on him, but the red he's got to the left corner. But we may be able to get one to the right middle. The right corner. Oh, well, the one to the right middle shouldn't cause him a problem. The one to the left Nine. corner where he was hampered. Could have just dropped it in, maybe finished on the pink, but he'll be happy with the lay of the land now. Forty. Fifty. Yeah, that's twice now, and uh, referee Brendan Moore has just said, just give me a second, because there's some noise coming from backstage. I don't know where from. <laughs> and it'd have to be something, <laughs> you feel, to put Mark Williams off, wouldn't you? Anyway, 22. He found the gap nicely, perfect on this red. 23. And if none of those reds go, that little cluster of five, would play a cannon, but I don't see the value in doing it now. It could go wrong. But he'll be thinking of it pretty soon. As I say, unless one of them goes where you can play it in a certain way. 29. That you could pot a red and bring the others into play. This black to go 36 points in front, still 75 remaining. Played the cannon that time. Well, it's all right, but that cue ball being close to the side cushion doesn't make this red to the middle any easier. the cue ball and that was a tricky enough pot and where the reds are stuck behind the brown good luck with this one John Paul Williams 37 if he hits one here and gets this safe he'll be over the moon yeah normally with this if you can hit one cushion you play hit and hope I think you'll have to play the hit and hope Wow, Mark Williams, seven. Here's a question now for Mark. Well, we'll take this red on a potter of his stature. He's not going to have these replaced, and this is a chance to win the frame now. One. Yeah, no value in sticking him back there, was the John? Because, you know, John Higgins may fluke one, so. If you've got a chance like that, take it. Could have finished better on this pink, in all honesty. Oh. 
but played that well, using the rest. And this red, just this red, we're putting 52 points in front with just 51 remaining. And he'll restore his two frame advantage Seven. going into the mid session interval. And he's on the blue. Eight. Just. And he knows that if he makes certain of the colour, then John Higgins won't come back. But at the moment, just one snooker needed. Mark will be well aware of how good John Higgins can be playing snooker. So make certain of the blue. And he did. And he's going to be on the red below the pink. I'll tell you what, John. These two are saving up some Fit. final, aren't they? They are. And uh, as we saw at the start of this frame, that little run of the ball is going to make all the difference. But you feel in some of the frames. That was an outrageous fluke that Mark got. But as I say, you've got to take advantage of them. Give him the platform to win this frame, just have a look at the scoreboard. Pots the pink, there'd be no way that John Higgins will come back to the table. Yeah, it looked like we're going to have one of those frames again, just tip-tapping into the reds, and then from nowhere 20. he fluked the red, got 37. OK, didn't win the frame, but when he ran out of position, he just... Played the snooker behind the brown, and that oh, caused a mistake from fight. John Higgins. So John Higgins marches off to the dressing room. Mark Williams will be relieved in a way. He's still got his two-frame advantage. This time, it's 7-5. Brilliant. And our gallant semi-finalist, Barry Hawkins, tweeted the other day how touched he was to see some of those films and makes him appreciate how the players and, indeed, this sport really connects with people. So you've met some of our super fans now, back to our superstars. We've got another five frames to play in this best of 35 frames final tonight. Who will have the overnight lead and Thank by you. what Way margin? Down, back to John and John. Frame 13, Mark Williamson. Thank you, Hazel. Yeah, Crucible the family. down now, please. And we very much appreciate their support and dedication to the game that we love. Absolutely, John. Been a love affair myself with this place ever since I was a 13-year-old boy. Came through the doors for, well, just nearly 14, actually, in 1977 to watch the first time when the championship was here. And it was electric then, and it still is now. No venue like it. Just saw the average frame time, just under 17 and a half minutes. Both these players get on with it. Every short time, it's not slow. Just got to judge this well, though. Seen a few of these come off a bit square and catch the pink. <laughs> it's in that red full, made certain of the safe. Touching ball, is it, referee? He's having a close look, is Brendan Moore. He's touching that one, Mark. It is touching, so that gives Mark an easy path back to the ball end. Now, sometimes you can play just to make certain you get tight to the cushion, or is he going to come off the ball cushion and try and get in behind the yellow? In behind the yellow, he's trying. Not quite. <laughs> Not left a pot on, but... Uh, I think John can get through to this red to play the containing safety. Just while we've got a few safety shots on John, just ask you, pardon my ignorance, did you play in the 77 championship here? I did, I lost uh, to John Spencer, the, uh, the eventual winner. And were you a big fan of the venue straight away, were you? Well, the first thing that was a real shock to us was uh, starting playing at 10.30 in the morning. Snooker players didn't get up till well, at that time normally. And I bet both these players, when they play morning sessions, are walking around the streets of Sheffield from about 8 onwards. I bet you were. 
Yeah, well, I actually started practicing before I came to Sheffield. I, I, at home, I had a table at home looking enough to have one. I'd be up at 8 o'clock in the morning practicing in preparation just basically because I knew you were going to have 10 o'clock sessions. You might as well get used to them. Yeah. But as I say, originally it was 10.30, then it went to 10 o'clock. And I'm amazed at the standard that's produced in those morning sessions. But no morning sessions in the final, the afternoon and evening. And what a match-up. Two of that great class of 92 here. Couldn't do anything else but just play the containing safety. And with that red in the balk end, well, you could play safe in the balk end as long as you cover that red with the yellow. Or is it too risky? John thought so. It's a funny thing watching the expressions on these two that they've got total appreciation for the shots each other plays. You know, play a shot and John Higgins will come up and look at the situation. Some good shot, pal. That was clever. And Mark Williams, likewise. And covering that red in the ball can with the yellow puts a little bit of pressure now on the shot for John. There you see, just covered it. We knocked a red towards the corner. And kissing the green. Not the best of safeties. Can't get to the one near the left corner pocket, and I presume the fact he's looking down here, the green is covering the red near the bolt line, so John was a little bit fortunate there. Yeah, he's been down to have a look as well. If he drops onto the red that's near the top cushion off the side cushion, he'd be, would he be leaving anything? But he's decided to come off the pack instead. Well, he could play the top two reds, so no damage done there. And it looks like a pretty good cue ball. Covered everything. Although I'm saying that, is there a gap between yellow and brown? Double, maybe, is he thinking of? Well, there is a gap, but he can only hit the red full ball. Can he force an angle to screw back to the ball cushion? Never thought about the screw that went for the double. But that's why we always say why professionals don't like doubles. If it doesn't go in, depending on what part of the jaw of the middle pocket it hits, and you're never certain, it was close, but he's left it. Just making certain here, there's quite a few reds you can play on. The black obviously goes to the right corner, so he'd like to be on the black as soon as he possibly could. There's the best angle from the green. It's all about line and length. And we just want to kiss these reds. Mm, that spoilt it somewhat. Well, he's got a straight red to this corner, but as I say, I don't think the black goes into the opposite corner pocket. Can he make an angle to run round of two cushions for the pink? He's going to have to pinch a bit if he does. 
Mm -hmm. Tried to pinch too much. Mark Williams, four. <coughs> yeah, you can't try and pinch any of these pockets. I know we've all said they're playing generous, but not that generous. Yeah, and in fairness to them, I do think in the last couple of sessions they've tightened up a little bit. I think it's when the cloth is absolutely brand new, they've been sliding in a little bit too easily. There's been one or two that haven't gone in, that had earlier, so a little bit more of a test. But John will be disappointed with the safety at the moment from himself. Players hate it when they hit ball colours, but particularly when you're going down the table, there's no real reason for that. It has to be said that his long potting's just not quite on it tonight. No. This is no gimme, skinny. to go into the pack here. Could do so if he wants, but doesn't have to. There's a, a red on the left-hand side, at the bottom of the cluster. Yeah, does he fancy playing the precise positional shot? Answer was no, he didn't, so he trusts a little bit to luck, but he'll be happy with that. It's worked out absolutely perfect. Six. Yeah, lovely little cannon, that. And of course, once he drops this red in, An excellent chance for Step. John Higgins. Yes, and I think it's only the red that's closest to the left corner that's stopping the black going in both corner pockets. So if that's the case, that's the red he'll play for off the black. Doesn't have to play any cannons to get over the winning line now. Red's nice in the open, and I think the black will be available into both corners. You clearly see it will be after that red's potted. 50. Great chance. Just wants a little stun up into the red above the black. That's the fella, but he flicked the other one first. Just caught that first red. Wanted to miss that. Got the second one up. And because he got that flick, slightly 26. lost the cue ball. But shouldn't be a problem. An untimely sneeze. So, being the consummate professional, John gets up and gets back behind the line of shot needs full concentration on this chance. Twenty-three. But once again just lost the cue ball slightly. Yeah, ever since that couple of shots ago that little cannon that he flicked the other one. It's just been Slightly awry with the cue ball control. And he still is. Trying to play the screw with check side and come back up the table for this red. Yes, he can still pot it. But he's not ideal and the cue ball's running away. Just seemed to be an accumulation 29. of pressure there. That's all it was. He just, once he didn't get that cannon, 
and he flicked the other red. He was out of position for the next one. Then off the pink, and they basically just caught up with him that break. There's the red he missed, and he'll be very disappointed not to have made more there. That was a very good chance. Overhit that slightly. Now, can John get past the blue? Well, he can, I think. Referee Brendan Moore just having a look as well. If he can get through to it, then he'll take it on. Because he knows if he knocks it in, it could be a frame winner. And could well be now. Wonderful shot. One. Nice, just excellent queuing. Straight through the ball. to play the cannon there, just flip the other red out. And he looks like he's perfect on the red on the left. Eight. A little stun up. And you could not ask for these to be in better positions. Another 33 points from this position required. Nine. But take nothing for granted. Sixty. Seventy. So you feel if you can screw back for one of these two reds just below the pink. Get on one of them nicely without being hampered, and that's absolutely perfect. Twenty-four. So after this black, he's looking for red, cover, red, to leave Mark Williams needing a snooker. When he pots this red, there'll be 67 remaining. So as I say, red, cover, red needed. 33. He didn't come actually uh, absolutely perfect here. And to hold for the, the, the red he needs, he's going to have to play a cannon on the pink. And you play, you don't hit these too hard. Give time for the backspin to take effect. And got it. <laughs> and this red Fort. now to go 66 points in front with just 59 remaining. Lucky to get the second chance, probably, John, but great opening red. Deserves to win the frame from it. As you say, we've seen one or two shots, long shots from Mark Williams haven't quite gone in this evening. But there was no problem with John Higgins's long game there. That was an excellent shot. You can't hit it better than this. 48. <laughs> 49. Well, if he's screwing up and down the tail, he's got to miss the yellow. Oh, he checked it. He's checked it. Is he going to knock these reds on? What a great effort. <laughs> he played it with a ton of left-hand side. Like an exhibition shot. But it won't make any difference. Mark Williams won't well, bother getting out of his seat. The train was well and truly over. And 
John Higgins once again reduces his deficit to just one frame. And it's still four to play in this session. 7-6, Mark Williams. Oh, it's cat and mouse, isn't it? <laughs> Williams manages to get away and then suddenly Will uh, Higgins is right on his tail again. And the foundation of that break was that fantastic red that we saw. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Mark Williams had played a, a loose safety shot uh, and gave him a sniff. Um, and whilst, whilst you expect at this level and this, this juncture of the tournament that players are in stroke, you've still got to knock those in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was a beautiful shot he played. Uh, perhaps a guide with the blue a little yeah, bit. Yeah, see how close the cue ball actually got to the blue there. He was almost had to flick a little bit of right-hand side, just to, but the, the, the blue was actually a good guide as he's down on the shot for, in his eye line, but cued it in beautifully and, again, you know, made an, a frame and a break from it. Impressions of the way Higgins appears to be warming up a little now? Well, he's still not happy that he's not clinching yeah. mm -hmm. the frames in one, one visit, as we now be, it's become you know, the de rigueur for, the, for the, the, the top players to be able to do. So he's, he's letting Mark back in. Uh, so it's, I think it's just who can actually grab this game by the scruff of the neck at the moment. It may not happen in this session, but somewhere down the line, somebody might take Thank off. Thank you, frame 14. Uh, it might not happen, but John Higgins uh, to break. anybody that can is going to have a great advantage. Can he get back on terms here? Yeah, this final at the moment, John, is being played out like the two semi-finals. Usually have a session in a match where someone runs away with it and maybe wins 6-2 or something like that. We've not seen that in either of the semi-finals. Mark Williams looked as though he could have done that in the early stages of this match, but was able to push on that advantage. Yeah, I think in this case, I think with this, these two together, I think they're just too clever. I think they're too clever for, even when they start losing a few frames, they know how to... Scrap the way in and win another one and stop. You, know, you, don't, you don't see them losing five or six frames on the spin because they're just too good at match play. I think that's simply it in a nutshell. Now, Mark Williams will be tempted by this red in the middle, I'm pretty sure. Far from easy, but Ken mentioned before in the studio, he's one of the best players he's seen, I think, in the middle pocket. Doesn't lessen the pressure, though, if he does decide to go for the middle. He could play it to the far left corner and maybe feel as though he wouldn't leave anything too easy, but if he plays it in the middle and misses it, he's going to leave a sitter for his opponent. You know, I think one of the reasons why he's a little reticent, John, with the blue being knocked off its spot of touch, I think if the blue was there, he'd, he'd, he'd probably feel as if just playing this natural weight would take it up towards the blue. I think it would have been slightly off its spot. He's got to hit it a bit firmer. Unbelievable shit. And he obviously oh. thinks the pins will pop. But that was a brave shot to play. Look what he was leaving. And the pink does go. Yeah, that's ultimately why I think he chose the shot. I think if he was having to play up with any pace more than that, higher up the table, he wouldn't have taken that. But because the pink did go, he decided to go. Oh, what a great shot. Seven. Pink spot not available. Goes upon the blue spot. That won't bother Mark at the moment. Eight. A little bit straight, but I think he's just got a, enough angle to be able to nicely come on one of those reds in the other half of the table. <coughs> yeah, a little trace of the left-hand side. Now, there is a red at the bottom of the cluster that will go, and the reason I mention 40. that, some players, rather than go into the pack and play the cannon... 50 would rather play on the red that's loose, just leave himself a half-ball pot, and in potting that, bring other reds into play. We'll see how he wants to play it. Straight into him. Oh, oh well, would you believe it? Ball OK, he didn't 15. catch it full in the face. John Higgins, But six. once again, when he's gone into him, previous frame, he knocked the pink in when he didn't catch it, and this time, not catching him full, down, he's please. gone Thank off. You. I don't question the choice of shot, but he had an alternative to play. 
but that is unlucky. Obviously no problem with being able to pot this red that's there. John's just having a look to see if he can pot it. That's why and avoid the cannon on the any of the reds as he comes down the table. Can't really screw this red in, so it's just well, he may be able to get something out of it. He's just I wonder if he can screw past the other side and get a gap. Which is what he's done, although he didn't get the gap. And now one. Well, he stuck a red over the corner. He may be forced into this black, John. Yeah, and if that red had just been slightly away from the cushion, it'd have made this pocket feel a lot bigger, but it's not. So there's a lot of pressure on this shot, tight under the cushion. John rightly said that red Eight. wasn't close enough to the pocket to make it a big hole. So there was plenty of pressure on that one. I'm just looking at John's body language. He's obviously had to give 100% concentration to potting the black, but he's not landed good on the red. Just a puff of the cheeks told me that he's left with another slightly difficult shot. Yep. Going across the table, slightly hitting down. Very easy to flick a bit of side on these. Need good cueing. Nine. Well, it was good cueing. Now, John had a good look at this before. It must be pretty tight because he didn't just get down straight away. I mean, from our angle, it looks like it flies in, but where John is, it might be a touch tighter, looking at it. Played it really well. It's one of those, if you're straight behind it and you've got the view of the object ball and the cue ball and the pocket 50. in line, you'd never miss it. But as John said, it was tricky. What a chance 60. to draw level and after being 4-0 down, 5-1 behind, this would be some achievement from John Higgins. Hmm. Is he on this red to the corner? 23. Hmm. Pretty tight, so maybe not. Might be change of plan. Obviously, you can pot this one that's close to the left corner pockets, but a little bit of work to do with the cue ball. Twenty-four. Well, it was nice to get through the gap. But he knew he was going to be slightly hampered with the next shot. Just had to stand for it. Yeah, this is tough. And all you can do in this situation, you can't try to do much with the cue ball. Just pot the pink and just trust to look you get the right cannon. It's flicked in off the red. He's OK. A horrible split second. He thought he'd missed that. 30. Such was the wafer thin contact. 31. Flicked the pink in the pocket. <coughs> and these are lovely now. Yes, and that red near the left corner is a lot easier than it was when it was tight against the cushion. Thirty-eight. Another 39. twenty-four points needed in this situation. So basically, we're looking at this black, two more reds, and he'll have levelled the match. <coughs> he 
He really is made of stern stuff, as John Higgins. I've been 46. saying it for years and years and years, both playing him and being in the commentary box and in the studio. Match after match, he just seems 47. to find it from somewhere. <coughs> Brilliant competitor. And this time he's handy to play for that red, which as I say was difficult before, but when he potted the ping and it flicked it away from 54. the cushion, it may give him a nice angle for it. Red, colour red needed. Thanks. 55. This red to go 54 points in front 62. with just 51 remaining. 63. He's disappointed, I think, particularly with his long game today. And well, yeah, okay, a couple of times he may feel he was unlucky when he went into the cluster. And this, on this occasion, he went in off. Another occasion, he knocked the pink in. Well, going right back to the start of this break, John. What a black that was from John Higgins from the jaws of the pocket. Seventy-five. Absolutely wonderful cutback. Lots of pressure on it. 76. Floated in the hole. And everything he got, he deserves after that shot. And he's got his shooting boots on, John. I mentioned earlier, he needs to just step it up a touch. Well, he certainly has been doing. And this has been mightily impressive. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see what the response is from Mark 82. Williams here. We've said that he's long potting just slightly off. How will he respond? Because John Higgins at the moment has got eyes only for another century. Mark Williams has made 10 centuries in the tournament. If John Higgins can make one here, then he'll equal that. 83. And it'll be the 81st of the tournament. And of course, it's John Higgins who holds the record for century breaks made in the World Championship, 14. 90. And the thing is about him, John, 92. once he gets on this roll, he can reel off big breaks one after the other, no problem. 95. Ninety-nine. Just this blue for another fabulous centre. Well played, John Higgins. One hundred and four. Absolutely wonderful. Hundred and ten. He's really starting to hit it good now. That's for sure. It's there. Absolutely wonderful from John Higgins. Another century, break of 117. 117 in the frame. And at last, John he's Higgins. it back. It's 7 all. I've spoken about Mark Williams' technique in the before and during a shot. We know all about that, but it's important also to to have discipline after a shot. There's a, there's a bit of footage from a couple of frames ago in frame 13. This is marked with a tricky red. He sort of is up, he's up too early. He doesn't finish his shot properly, as you see. Then he leaves John Higgins this long red. Watch the difference here. John doesn't move until the white stopped and the red, and then he's up chasing. It, it just, you got a sense of how confident he was when he was playing it. As I said, here's the shot that Mark had. I mean, it's a tough shot, but you've got to tell yourself, stay down on it as long as you can. There's an after. 
Uh, there's something that goes on after the shot that's really important, and John's taking that into frame 14. He's really starting to look hot, isn't he? He sure is, Alan, and Alan loving the fact that he's got three tables to himself down there, doesn't he? <laughs> just love it. We talked about Higgins warming up, that's his third century, and from William's point of view, a top break of 72 in this session. Yeah, I think, you know, just John is, is a, as I say, is just, will always try his hardest and uh, he seems to be coming good. That's a nice frame to win in one visit. I keep on mentioning this, but it does become important to get a roll on. And now, you know, you'd, you'd say, well, he's going to be better placed for the, the next three frames. Yeah, absolutely. He looks, uh, you know, he's, he's starting to motor a bit more. His tempo has picked up. Uh, and he's starting to strike the ball with a little bit more authority. And Mark Williams needs to sort of break that rhythm a little bit. You saw him look down when he was in his chair. 15. He knows that he's up Mark against Williams. it now and John is on a roll. He's got to find something himself to try and uh, break that rhythm and stop the rot. So seven frames apiece, ten centuries apiece in this championship. It couldn't be more even Stevens if it tried. Yes, you could certainly say, Hazel, that the cream is rising to the top here. But I agree with Ken. Mark Williams has got to find something now. I know one thing, John. Alan McManus has given us all a bad name when he's doing them demos. He never misses. I know. <laughs> oh, I said uh, in the last frame that John Higgins held the record, but... Well, I should have known that the king of the crucible, Stephen Hendry, had 16. Sorry, Stephen. I'm glad you corrected that, John. He'd been throwing things at the TV. Oh, well. <laughs> Mark Williams looked over to John Higgins there, apologised, but... Apologise or not, he's Mark Williams won. taking the opportunity to play the snooker and he's purposely covered the right-hand side of the table as we look. He was playing this red past the green. It's all wrong. Quarter ball off the green is in the pocket. Now, the reason he's cut down the... That was John's look, an expression. If he comes down the right-hand side of the table, he could get it safe. So he's having to come off two cushions here you can always misjudge the slide off the second cushion. This isn't the certainty to get it safe. Always slide off the second cushion. Not hard Foul enough. Miss. Mar Williams foot. But that line, a bit harder, he'd have left something. See how it slides off that second? Oh, well, he just had the right weight not to leave anything. I'm looking at Mark Williams and he's had an intake of breath there. He thought he was certain to be on something. It's a funny thing. I think the, the, the main thing that where the game has changed. The players, because of the long potting of the players, they don't like playing thick, aggressive safeties. And John Higgins would rather play this risky red than, than do that. I think it's the only red he could leave is the one he's playing if he goes for the pot. And he did go for the pot, but missed it by such a way, he'll be lucky if he's not left anything. Yeah, that's... Uh... Well, as far away as he's been with any pot in this session. And, of course, he's left Mark Williams with a straight red. It's a funny thing, John, as well, isn't it? The well, psychology of this game, you, you're playing catch-up in a match and you get all of a sudden you get level. And then it's as if your concentration drops for the next couple of shots. I mean, that wasn't an easy shot by a long stretch, but it's almost saying, oh, you, you say to yourself, oh, my first objective is get level. And then your concentration can go... And all of a sudden, you're behind again. Eight. Mm, this is a chance now for Mark to bring other Reds into play. 
and he's played it nicely. Nine. Well, we asked the question. He's got him up a gear. Here's his chance. Sixteen. Seventeen. Twenty two. Twenty-three. A little bit low on the black, but I don't think you'll be playing a cannon here. There's a couple of loose, loose reds to play on. Thirty. Just looking at the cluster. 31. There may be a red just below and to the right of the pink that goes to the left corner, although having a second look, I don't think it does. So two loose reds to play for. Needs a good line and length here. Playing for the one near the top cushion, and this looks good. Lovely line. Hold you up, you're not straight. Looks perfect. 35. Excellent shot, but definitely the right red to play for. Type of shot you could be very 36. positive with off the brown there, and you knew virtually guaranteeing position by hitting it firm. But nicely struck all the same. Yeah, nice angle on the black. He'll go into him here. He wants to catch the left-hand side of him, because he's got that loose red on the left of the table. He could be on. Look at Mark's face. That tells us whether he's on an easy red to keep this break going or a difficult one. He's not had much luck when he's gone into the pack not at this all. evening. No, and I think the pink is a problem there, John. And the pink's blocking the easy red he'd have, the one up to the right. So that doesn't go. So he has got a, a red into the green pocket. And maybe he can cut that one in the middle as well. So it's just his choice of how he wants to play. That's the red. He's walking, he's walking. 44. He's perfect on the blue. Well, last frame we just said how brilliant John Higgins was. 49. That break of 117. So far in this break, this is class. And it's the ability 50. when you've been fr frozen out or haven't seen a lot of great chances or maybe missed a couple that when you sense danger you can go back in and have your response and this is what this is from Mark Williams. Yeah, he's just giving us a bit of thought. He's just run a little bit too far so I don't think he can just roll the blue in. If he could roll the blue in and get a full ball cannon on the pink that would hold the cue ball. If he's got to play on and off the top cushion, got to be careful. Well, he could roll it in and get the cannon on the pink. Same problem as the last time, but after this blue, he's just looking for one more red. Can't play a cannon on the pink this time. Yeah, he's undenied about this one for a, a little while. Okay, 
surprised that's happened. He's heard a little on the side, on the side of caution there. If he'd come up further, he could have snookered 61. himself on the red he's on now. That's what he was worried about. This red to go 67 ahead with just 59 remaining. Good response here from Williams. He just felt that if he got a chance, he had to do something with it. And fair play, that's exactly what he's done. This is good stuff, isn't it? 67. This is a great response from Mark. Thank you. It's just 68. wonderful match play snooker played at the highest level. I mean, we've had one frame that's gone over half an hour. The rest of them have been pretty quick fire. Even the frames that look like they're going to awkward have been resolved by good play. And both players and really good stroke and playing really 75. well. Maybe an opportunity in potting this red to bring one of the two reds near the side cushion into play. 76. Well, he's not perfect on the pink, but we know he's a, a master at dropping this type of shot in. He'd love to make a century. 75. Right in the heart of the pocket. Centuries still on. They are level, they make right? ten centuries each. 82. Can Mark Williams creep ahead once more? This could be his 11th. 83. Eighty-eight. Eighty-nine. And this is what you always seem to get at this game, John, don't you? Once one player starts playing well, then the other man knows there's no other way, but you've got to respond by playing well yourself. Doesn't make it any easier, but... This has been superb from Mark Williams. Ninety-one. Ninety-three. Green and brown for the 82nd century break of this year's Betfred World Snooker Championship. Ninety-six. And it will be Mark Williams' 11th for certain now. Five. Doesn't get much better than this, JV. No, this is superb. We can all play 111. sport and sometimes, you know, when you do it in practice, but to do it this way in the heat of battle when he's... <laughs> his opponent has thrown the gun and boy, oh boy, did Mark Williams pick it up. That was absolutely superb. As we say, the one potting machine, and he knows he's back in front again. 8-7. I've been enjoying this from the practice room. The standard's getting pretty warm out there, isn't it? There was a little shot Mark Williams played. He played the brown with the rest being a lefty. We see it here. Spins round a few cushions. As the guy said in the box, it was a brilliant way to play it. But actually, it's not that difficult for a top professional. He lands nice on the, the red, but really, it looks fancy, but it's not. I'm going to play the, a similar, although I'm right-handed, but playing for, round for this red, I'm going to try and get four cushions. Try and knock this in, but there's only really one place the cue ball can finish. All right, so round it comes. For a, for a professional player, it's actually quite an easy shot. You can see they're decent on the red. Piece of cake. <laughs>
Oh, it's easy for you to say, but I tell you what, um, this is soundproofed, obviously, in here, but I suspect that Mark Williams might have been able to hear you. Pick your act up. You yeah, he's going to get moving, and he uh, has. You know, he had to get moving. He had to find something, and boy, did he find something. And that was a wonderful break because there were some great shots in that break. He wasn't perfect all the way through, but he, he potted a great red up into the green pocket. Uh, then he potted a lovely long blue uh, under pressure up into the yellow pocket and just kept the break going. He had to find something, and he's found something. It was fantastic response. I'm more interested in the fact that all of a sudden there's a new kid on the block of the demos. Uh, yeah. Adam Manis, he's a demos. And Ken, you're going to have to up your game. <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> exactly. He's never missing, is he? Um, but in terms of back-to-back -back centuries we just had in this match, that's the fourth century. This is absolutely top quality now. It's getting, it really is warming up. There was the fear, the danger, that the two, two players had punched themselves out, that possibly they were just going to freeze a little bit in the final because of the gravity of what was they could possibly do. But I think we're now seeing their class players. Yeah. The first session was a bit more nip and tuck, and now all of a sudden they're opening their shoulders out. They're going to have a slugfest, <laughs> and tomorrow is going to be brilliant. <laughs> it is. That was yeah. the 82nd century. Remember, we've got 86 is the record. Mm. We talked about the fact that there's only ever been eight in one match. It's happened three times, in fact. Yeah, yeah. And most recently with Ronnie O'Sullivan against Barry Hawkins in that 2013 final. Do you think we've got a sniff of that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's well within range. And if these two guys are going to play the way they've been playing these last few games, uh, there's no reason why it can't go. I mean, it's only another five centuries to get in you know, so many frames. It's well within reach, I would feel. And what the top players like these lads can do they respond very well to the other player. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it gets if it gets scrappy, they can scrap. But if one like sort of pots and you know, makes a century, but the other guy goes, oh, I can make one of those. They, they do have a little bit about them. <laughs> Thank you. It's frame fantastic, 16. isn't it? Mark Williams has not been in a crucible final for 15 years. It's like he's never been away. John Higgins to break. Yeah, John Higgins just before he was breaking off was asking the referee how many fr frames they got to play. Well, this one and one more. And yeah, Alan McManus looked very good in the, uh, the practice table there, but potting the brown at that pace using a rest was a bit more difficult. can get through to this and if he pots it the blacks available into the opposite corner this is a similar type of straight pot that John Higgins knocked in to win a frame in the opposite corner calls for good straight queuing well he decided to roll it did mark and that double kiss will leave a pot on for a, for John Yeah, played it in a way. The only way he could really get in trouble was a double kiss. You see from Mark's expression, it's exactly what happened. So, chance for John. And the way these two have been going after the last few frames, <laughs> this could be a very heavy contribution. It's been brilliant stuff. Yes. Basically, as you say, the last few frames have just been one mistake snooker. You make one mistake, you go back to your seat, and you'll be lucky to get back Six. to the table. Seven. Wonderful shot from our jib there. Coming down over the scene at the Crucible Theatre. Everyone engrossed with this match, and why not? 12. I agree with Steve. He said, that, you know, sometimes you think being hard getting to the final, they've had tough semi finals. Will they be a little bit punched 30. out? But these two, 
You don't become two old warriors if you don't know what to do. And they certainly know what to do. Yeah, and also I think we've got to take into account that even though what they've achieved in the game, it must be a dream come true for them to be in this final and playing one another. I was talking to Jason, John Higgins, his brother, and he said he remembers the first time they played. It was 28 years ago in this 20. junior world final. That's how long they, they've been battling it out against one another. Yes, I uh, was walking around then after playing a match in that particular tournament and bumped into Ronnie, young Ronnie O'Sullivan. I said, oh, you're in the final then? He said, oh, no. He said, uh, I lost to a boy from Scotland called Higgins. He said, he's pretty good. And he beat Ronnie 3-2 in the semi-final and then he beat Mark Williams 6-1 in the final. So they knew all about him fairly quickly. <laughs> and that's a player he's gone on to beat. Yeah, and a clever shot there. 28. Knew if he cannon that red four in the face, it would open other reds. OK, the red is on now. He may not be able to play for the black. 41 points more needed from this situation to get to snookers required. Twenty-nine. Just about got the angle on the blue, but just looking at it, there's only one loose red to play for. When he went into them before, he only not one red out really. Just coming round to have a look, see if there's any possibility of a plant. I mean, if he's got enough angle, he could decide to force this blue in and come round off two cushions and play a cannon. But I don't know whether he'd fancy that. So playing for the the red in the middle, unless there's a red in that cluster that will go. Can't see one. Yeah, he just put his cue down on the table there. He's looking for an angle, some somewhat level with the black would be perfect. And then a stun up into the pack. So he's played 35. it down off the two angles, and that's a way, well, at least to guarantee you've got an angle going in. Could have done with a little bit more on the cue ball. But whatever you do with this shot, make sure you knock the black in. That's the gap he's looking for. Oh, he's missed the black. Where's the red ball going? Well, it doesn't matter. Higgins, that could be very costly for John Higgins. How many times do we see it playing with pace, thinking about the cannon? Just take your eye off the pot, only a fraction. And it looked as though it was safe until the black came and released the cue ball. I think Mark's got a, what we call a big pocket here. Can't really miss this one. Being off the other one, if it doesn't go straight in. One. And how much of a mistake will that black be from John Higgins? Just a funny shot, John. That's why I called it before he played it. I said, whatever you do, don't miss the black, because just when it's a little bit more of a cutback than you think, and you're trying to play the cannon. Seven. I've seen them missed time and time again. Yeah, and at that pace that you need to break the reds open, you've got to be right in the heart of the pocket. And he wasn't. It was a fraction out. And now he's going to sit there and suffer. This is a great chance for Mark Williams. Remember, Mark's in stroke, made 118 break in the last frame. Eight. And of course, John, if he wins this frame, absolutely guaranteed to be in the lead coming into tomorrow's two important sessions. And he'll also, if he wins this frame, have a bite of the cherry for an even bigger lead with the last frame of the evening. Nine played in this session. Fourteen. Fifty.
If it had been straight there, I'd like to have held a spot. Has he? Yes, he has. 21. Given the opportunity to play on these two reds without being hampered by the pink. 22. If it had gone on its own spot, that is. Twenty-eight. It's funny how again can turn round. We were questioning that maybe Mark Williams' long potting wasn't quite on it tonight. But the two chances, this frame and the last one, he's been left right in amongst the balls. Makes a difference. Yeah. And his cue ball, when he's been in, John, has been on a sixpence. Five. It's been that good. Thirty-six. Yeah, the long pot success from both players is well below what you'd expect. 25% John Higgins, 33% from Mark Williams. 42. As I say, and we always say, if you miss when you're in, then you can 42. only expect the worst. Yeah, most definitely at 43. this level, that's for sure. Well, that's not the worst kiss on the brown. He wouldn't have been playing for a cannon there. And the fact he says it virtually full ball towards the pocket is lovely. Right now, he needs a good positional shot on the colour. 47. Was able to hold 48. for the brown or green. Good shot. Fifty two. He can go up for a bought colour if he should should so wish here, because he won't need the blue. And that 53. blue being close to the black, that could have been a problem, but that's not the case. 18 points of the lead, just yellow. 53. And then yellow and green, and snookers will be required. Yeah. I think we had the temerity to question whether Mark Williams was going to step it up this evening. Well, since it's gone 7 all, 57. we found out our answer, John. He's been absolutely superb. And John Higgins, when he's made the mistake, has just had to sit and suffer. And Mark's just put round and flipped. 60. Flipped and balled in. And once again, a wonderful response. And there's certainly nothing wrong with his nerve. That's still intact, that's for sure. Yeah, 64. and I think that is the word. Nerve. From both players. Say it's all right doing it in the practice. It's not in, but it won't matter. Marlis, 29 points in front, 18 remaining, not a concession from John Higgins. So Mark Williams now takes a two frame advantage, one to go. And as John was saying, he's guaranteed an overnight lead now. And, and in the, the grand scheme of the final, how important is that? It can work both ways, obviously, and you guys have experienced it both ways. But for you, Ken, how important is it? I think it? it is when you're, you're going to bed and you know you've got the lead and you, you have the, sort of the edge going into the next session. Uh, but as we've seen in, in the semi-finals as well, I don't think it really matters for John Higgins because he's so good at coming from behind and anyway, as is Mark Williams, you know, like, you know, when it was put up to Mark Williams tonight, he's responded uh, magnificently and, and John Higgins will do the same. It's just getting the little edges here and there and the fractions that make such a difference. I mean, John Higgins missed an easy black off the spot going into the pack, Mark Julie pounced and sometimes those frames can make all the difference in the long run. And those are the ones that can really hurt you as well, surely? Yeah, they can. Uh, they're debilitating. You, know, you get on a roll, and then all of a sudden you drop one of those in. It's sort of back to square one. It's like going up a snake, yeah, you know, down the snake. But um, uh, if you were trying to get a clue 
uh, as to who was going to be the favourite for the final from the semi-finals, yeah. you'd have thought the way that John Higgins closed out Karen Wilson mm -hmm. was a clue that, that John Higgins was playing better snooker because it looked like Mark Williams struggled to get over the line. It was very nervy. But you just know that every match is different. And, um, and I think Mark Williams will be the happier of the Thank two you. how he's coped with today. John will have a few, a few sort session. of worries about the fact he hasn't Mark won every frame in... In, in one visit when he's given, been given a chance, but Stan has been so good and it's, it's a long day tomorrow. They've got to fight hard. They have indeed. What will be the margin of Williams' advantage? Let's find out. On the face of it, decent enough break off shot. Don't think John will be taking the pot on here, just the containing safety. Well, that red that's just flicked off the cluster, it may be a tempter for Mark to cut to the right middle. And in it goes, cue ball close the corner, but it's OK, and he's got an angle on the yellow. Yeah, brilliant pot, John. Absolutely brilliant. And he's just caught the jaws and he's actually left him perfect. So, first chance to Mark Williams. He won the first session of this match by five frames three. to three. This session, it's four all. Chance to win the session as we close in on the four and a half hour. Mark for this match, but winning this session, after winning the first, he'll go in overnight with a three-frame advantage. Yeah, Mark just pointing his cue there, that gap he's looking at, he's got obviously this red, if he could stun, play for pink and come down, he'd love to get that red away from the black. Four. I don't know whether he's got the angle to do it now, but... He's gone pretty straight, so we're doing it off this shot. I'm not certain whether the pink spot is available. No, it's not. So just to remind you, when all the other spots are occupied, it goes as close to its own spot as it can in a direct line with the middle of the top cushion. I bet you it's not going to happen here, John, but I bet you'd love that pink to be able to be potted. Ten. Because that would be the one he'd play and go straight into the pack, but it's, it's not worked out that way, the way they are. So back up for blue. Half ball angle, if you can. Eleven. Yeah, he's not had much luck with this shot tonight, has he? But here we go. He's come a little bit close to the cushion there. He's got to jack the cue up in the air. Tougher to get power in this. Yeah. Much tougher shot being near the cushion, that. Yeah, as you say, striking 16. down. And, of course, he'd be making certain that he didn't miss the blue. Just playing safe off the red, just to the left of the black. He doesn't want to open them up. Mark Williams, 16. It was always going to be difficult, particularly with the black only available into one corner pocket. John can get past the green, needs a telling safety here. It's a bit pacey. That's why it's come on and off the ball cushion. And there's a red on the left-hand side of the table that will tempt Mark Williams. Once again, John, though, no. you mentioned earlier, once he's been in amongst the balls, he's been great, but missed a couple of these this evening. I mention it like it's a gimme, but they're not, but you just, you'd expect Mark Williams, the way he's queued in this championship, to knock these in. 
And that is the only department at the minute that's not firing on all cylinders. Everything else is great. Yeah, so it just shows you those stats we show you about long pot success in this session. And he didn't have to do anything with a cue ball. He'd have been perfect on pink or black, and he's a little bit taken aback by it. Is John Higgins playing a double here? Once again, as I say, the problem with the double, if they don't go in, you don't know where the red's going to finish. He thought he was playing as a shot for nothing. He may well have not left this red. Played the cut. Got the cut. But not a good kiss on the yellow. Pop. This was very thin. And a better kiss. You'd have been okay. Well, if he's playing the pot on the brown, this is a brave shot to take on. Mark Williams won. Well, here's another double that John Higgins will be playing for certain. Yeah, just coming round to have a look to see what position is going to be. Could be a stun down for the black. Don't think the pink pots from that side of the table. Very close. Yeah, he's usually very good at doubles, but they're just not finding the pocket this evening. So close. And has he left a pot for Mark? Wouldn't have thought so. He wouldn't have played the double if he had it done. No. Mark just playing the safety. Quite right, too. I mean, not only is it the correct shot, he's 9 7 up. He doesn't have to go chasing anything. It's John Higgins who's under the cosh at the minute. Yeah, this is a big psychological frame, I believe, because uh, when John was trailing 4 0 and 5 1, if you'd have said, right, okay, you're going to finish the, di the first day just one frame behind, he'd have uh, been over the moon. But Mark Williams will have something to say about that. Yes, John, and also the fact that when you've got to 7-7, seven, seven, you'd be really disappointed to be 10-7 down overnight. Yep. Foul. Well, that's always on. John Higgins, 7. always a possibility. I mean, Mark's thinking, well, what's the odds of knocking the black in? But there you go. But is there anything that will tempt John Higgins? He's just looking to see if he plays this red on the right-hand side of the table. Would this red be the only one he leaves? Should he miss it? But it's a big shot to take on in a big frame. He's gone for it. And he 
may live to regret that decision. Always a possibility with that shot. When you play it like that and it hits One. the jaws, nine times out of ten, it runs and goes across to the other corner. So, another chance for Mark Williams. Not straightforward, of course. Seven. I'm going to have to open that cluster, but... He'll be trying as hard as he possibly can Eight. for that 10 7 lead overnight. Yes, yeah, so and no reason not to play the cannon now. Just played a gentle one. You'd probably be thinking maybe I should have hit it a little bit firmer because he's not really 15. developed that many reds here. But whatever he, whatever lead he builds on here. It'll be a good one. And mainly because of that red tied up by the brown. John Higgins gets a chance if he comes to the table 40 or 50 behind. He certainly can't win the frame in one visit. So I'm into play for this red to the... To right middle. Just looking for another 27 points from this position, but he's not a given. Twenty-four. This could be the key shot. He'll go for this full blooded. Now you need you need plenty of top spin on this to get the arc on the cue ball. First glance, it's no good. You never really know when you split reds up like that. But you could have hoped he'd been on something simpler. Forty-one, the lead. Is it time to play a safety? Take what you've got. Nine seven up. 41 in front. Is it time for a bit of prudence from Mark Williams? taking his time here. Shot time's just gone over a minute. Well, what do you think he's thinking of, John? I think he was thinking originally, John, of trying to clip the red in the middle pocket and, mm. come, and come around and make... He ha he's come behind and he knows that if he plays it and comes around the other side of the black, he'd be leaving one in the middle that he's trying to pop that red in. So maybe he's decided on a double, which he has. <coughs> but has he left Mark a Williams, red on the right-hand side? And if he's left that red into the middle, which he can be stunned in onto the pink, he's played a poor shot. Yeah, the way he turned in disgust when going back to his seat tells me that this red is on. But there's pressure on it, because John Higgins knows, should he miss it, that will be end of frame. He can't win the frame at this visit, you wouldn't have thought, particularly with that, as I mentioned earlier, that red near the brown, but he can get right back in it if he can pop this. Big, big shot. Brilliant. <laughs> Go for it. I'm going to dig Mark Williams out, John. He played the wrong shot there. It's not very often you can say it was poor shot selection, but he shouldn't have played the double there. He had a 41-point lead. Push a red safe on the cushion and wait. It's John Higgins chasing. No need to play this shot. Seven. I 
wasn't as even he got close with the double, was it? Yeah, and we always commend him on his Eight. choice of playing a shot for nothing, but he got that one wrong. As I say, I can't see John Higgins winning the frame at this visit, but if he minds his work, he'll be right back in it. Good positional shot there. Still 30. 28 points behind. Forty. Perfectly played. Twenty-one. You have no thought about the red near the brown. He just looked at it actually and pulled his pulled his face. Because it's not one of those situations where you feel as though you could hit the, the red because the, you could knock the brown in. So what I'd be doing now, 20 points behind, just close the gap and then see if you can play a good safety off that last red. Well, I couldn't agree with you more, because it's a perfect plan, those two. 22. So it's virtually impossible to get that red out unless you hit both cushion first and into the brown. But even then, how are you going to... You have to hit 100 mile an hour to split them and get the ball into... A possible position, so there's nothing he can do. <laughs> I think it's take what there, try and leave the cue ball when you're on that red on the ball cushion, and just clip off it and come down and try and play a safety. Can't see anything else. Now within 13 points. 28. <laughs> 29. As I say, um, as you say, you could do it coming off the ball cushion, but it's very risky. He's got the perfect angle on the black just to roll it in and finish up on the red to the right middle. Well, he had a look a second ago, John, didn't he, to try and leave that angle off the second last red. But surely, if he gets the cannon, he is going to knock the brown in. Can't see any other result. Well, as you say, he'd have to come off the ball cushion 36. to get the cannon. He can't hit the red direct because, as you say, almost certainly the brown will go in. Just five points behind now. John that Higgins, 36. Happen. That had to happen. Mark Williams, four. Things Quiet down, please. Thank you. In the heat of battle. Yes. Two wonderful exponents of this sport. And you've seen two shots that are hard to explain. Mark Williams attempted a double. And John Higgins' attempt to get that out. Could only be one result player that way. One. Ten points the lead. Still needs a good shot to get good position on the yellow. And with it being very close to the cushion, needs a good angle on the yellow to get on the green. <coughs> Found a beautiful line and a wonderful length. Eight. Quick glance at the scoreboard, 17 points to lead. Still needs yellow, green and brown for a three-frame advantage overnight. Absolutely Ten. wonderful, but the shot for the yellow could not have been played any better. To leave that angle and then that yellow was a lot better than it looked. What a brilliant frame of snooker to finish the evening. It's a fabulous 30. final, and this has been a fabulous final frame of it in this session. Yeah, not the icing on the cake for John Higgins, but what a marvellous nine frames we witnessed this evening. Is that everything? Is that absolutely 17. everything?
and this crucible audience are completely enthralled with it, as we are. So it's Mark Williams who won the opening session and he's going to win this session just by the odd frame, but it'll give him a three frame advantage at the end of day one. Marvellous snooker, absolutely top draw. John Higgins will be disappointed, looked like he could get within one, but Mark Williams, when he was asked to, produced. Overnight, he leads by ten frames to seven. So here we go, warmest bank holiday Monday ever, they say, and the temperature is going to soar in the crucible. It always does in the final. Eight frames to play this afternoon in this third session. 18 is the magic number they need for the title. And settling down in the commentary box, it's a good afternoon to two world champions, Stephen Hendry, Dennis Taylor. Thank you, Hazel. A very good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the final day of the Bank World Championship. Thank you, frame 18. John Higgins to break. There's no better place to be on finals day than breaking off. And it's John Higgins who gets this first frame underway. Put a black and red together there, which makes it slightly awkward, but this is going to be a fascinating session, this one, Stephen. Yeah, it's going to be an amazing start to this third session. And I tell you what, Dennis, there's pretty much not another player in this game that would back to come out today at 10-7 down and John Higgins. Well, there's no one in the game knows his game better than you do, Stephen. The coin. I don't think there's a player in, the, in this game that I'd rather be chasing than Mark Williams. Not be chasing, I should say. He just very rarely makes a mistake and gives you easy chances. He can play any sort of frame. He can, he can knock in the big breaks. He can win the scrappy frames. Safety, long put. He got everything. Both players have got everything, you should say. I like that simple little shot there because it's freed the black there. And now with that red there, the one to the left of the blue is the awkward one that's causing the players to come back on the cushion behind the black spot. He's left Mark a shot at this red that I mentioned to get the frame back to normal. Well, you always see a lot of chalk marks on the cloth. Have a look. That's why. <laughs> what a shot that is. Good camera work there. Tempter, the red next to the blue, to the right corner. It's dangerous. Okay, you can possibly screw the cue ball back to the bulk area to play it as a kind of a shot to nothing. But I always think you have more chance of missing it when you put a safety element into it. It's not far away. Well. That's not what John wanted to see three frames behind. He was hoping to get in early, and it looked as if he was going to until that red disappeared into the corner pocket. Green's just in an awkward spot to get up the table as we show you the 
pot that was a long way off, but it wasn't a long way off that pocket. Yeah, it took the more difficult pot there to get up for position, and it's pretty good. Four. Just look where he's placed that cue ball. Choice of reds he left himself. Five. Twelve. <coughs> yeah, we got a player chasing 30. as John Higgins is. 10-7 down, your heart does sink a bit in the first frame when your opponent gets to the table, has first opportunity to score. Mm, that was a little bit fortunate as well, not as played, but he's ended up with a choice of two reds. 20. To the right centre. Twenty-one. That's the number he's looking for. If he can get to sixty-nine points, John Higgins will need a snooker. Well, that's a superb shot there. Absolutely played to perfection. Twenty-eight. Yeah. Very aggressive shot. He had loose reds, but he knew he had the absolutely perfect angle in the black. 29. That's a shot I really like going into the pack from high in the black. So you make the right contact, the cue ball's always going to stay in amongst the reds. It's amazing how much the cue ball arcs as well Thirty when six. you play that shot with side. 37. So it looks as if he's going to take full advantage of that fluke on the red. Forty four. Forty five. Stand up for a choice of reds. Red to the right, the pink to left middle. There was a red at the bottom of the pack to the left corner. Mm, it's just not gone high enough with the cue ball. So, 52. Going to take a bit more of a tricky positional shot. 53. Well, he may have fluked the red, but everything else has been top class. His positional play has been perfect. Yeah, if he was playing just to pot that to play in the blue, he's more chance of getting it. He's played it as a, getting the cue ball back to safety. He missed it by a mile, but what a fluke it's turned out to be. Fifty-eight. Fifty nine. <coughs> Few more pots, sixty one to secure the frame. I don't know if that kicked or not, Mark Williams, or whether he just 61. hit it too hard. But look at the cue ball spinning. So something funny happened there. Let's have a look at this. <laughs> Kick. Jumped half an inch in the air. Just when he was about to clinch the frame.
did try the double there. McGree left the cue ball at the red have gone in the middle. He could have rolled the black in the same middle pocket and that would have been enough. John Higgins can get this cue ball in behind the black somewhere. He could force an error from Mark Williams. All the reds are in the open now. Oh. Well, there's a fluke, so we've two flukes to both, both pockets. But one hasn't really helped John Higgins, you have to say. Okay, he can still win the frame, but he would love to Black be ball. taking a colour from that red. John Higgins won. close together there to make that a difficult escape for Mark. Yeah, this is a kind of situation where it's going to so hard to force an error from someone like Mark Williams. He's so clever playing this kind of little tactical struggle here. No problem, just dolling the cue ball up to these three reds all the time. Foul, no miss. John Higgins, four. Didn't quite make it. So four yeah. points shouldn't make a lot of difference, but you never know as the uh, frame progresses. It might come into play. Well, what it does do, Dennis, it gives John Higgins a bit more room for error if he does get a chance to clear up because you know, he won't need as many high value colours. Well, the reds, and there's two reds in the bulk area. So that was a, a careless mistake from Mark Williams. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. 67 points on the table. <coughs> so that four points will come in handy if John Higgins gets a chance to cl make the clearance. When playing this shot, John needs to get the reds opened up a little bit. Ah, that's a better shot. You can come off the right side cushion and just land on the reds. Can't come off the left side. He's up looking at the red near the brown, but that would be very risky. He may be tempted to play this red into the left middle. Leave the cue ball up near the, the green pocket somewhere. Looks like one of these situations where the safety shot's as difficult as the pot. Deciding whether to take that pot on to the left middle. It's not an in off, I don't think. No, change of plan. No, I think he maybe he is taking it on. Oh. <laughs> he is a shot maker. Well, so much more for leaving it the cue ball in the green pocket near the green pocket for safety. He had to go for that red. He had no alternative, but what a pot. Six. Seven. Frame safe now. And this is why his nickname is the Welsh potting machine. Thirty.
14. So we're going to see another. This has become a Mark Williams special. Watch the eyes. 20. Pretty impressive, Dennis, isn't it? <laughs> it means, it means your means you're cune straight anyway. Well, listen, I'd have been lucky to put that with my eyes open. Yeah, he, he did it yesterday, I think it was. He potted an unbelievable pink on the day before. <laughs> Quite the down the, the green spot. Pink was on its spot, did the same thing. It's something he 29. must just practice sometimes. You would never do it unless the frame was safe. Well, no normal player would, would do it. I mean, he wouldn't put it past Mark Williams. But I, I suppose when you've got your set up right, you're, you're, you're cueing straight, you know, you're aiming, then, then you know, it shouldn't really Isn't matter, I suppose, you think about it like that. But no, you'd never, you'd never do it if the shot mattered. But I must say, it's a, been a very, 34. very good start in this frame from Mark Williams. Hasn't looked in the slightest bit nervous. OK, missed the opening red by a mile, but was really playing it with safety. Since then, it's been an incredible first frame performance. 37. Well, even the Welsh potting machine can't pot this brown. <laughs> He'll try it. He'll hit it hard. Well, not too hard. Yeah, he may have had a fluke on the red, but the seven. rest was impeccable. And Mark Williams takes the opening frame and extends his lead to 11-7. And the gap out to four now. Stephen mentioned, in the commentary box mentioned that John's heart must have been sinking when, obviously, Mark got the fluke to get in there in the first place. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're hoping uh, to get off to a good start. Um, you're hoping your opponent doesn't knock a long one in. John Higgins would be delighted to see him miss by so far. And then he, he probably had a good view of that ball going towards the pocket. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cruel game sometimes. I know, but no luck in this one, John. Oh, that's an unbelievable pop. But he, he, he just basically said, well, I've got no other shot. That's what I've got to take on. But, I mean, his middle pocket play this week's been incredible. That was one of the best. How do you read the situation as we start this uh, second day of the final? Well, John would have been hoping for a, at least a 3-1 in this first sort of mini-session here, um, just to close the gap somewhat, um, and he'd be sickened by the fact that he's just not had any chance in the opening frame because of that fluke. Um, it doesn't stop him winning the next three, of course, but, you know, it's, it's not the start he would have liked. Uh, I, I think... Um, yeah, I know it's the start of every session, you've got to sort of get off to a good start. And, and I mentioned this last night as well. Uh, um, I, I think probably John Higgins fancied he could win the event. And, and I think everybody thought that John Higgins could win. I, I think perhaps there was a few more question marks over whether you know Mark Williams can win the event or whether he's just got as far he's just done well to get this far. Yeah. But I think all of a sudden now Mark Williams is probably believing and knowing that he can. So therefore he's a, he's a very dangerous animal. Okay. Well, look, it's a long 17 days, guys, and I thought I'd bring you some food of champions just to keep you going. <laughs> okay. Oh, brilliant. Get Mark going yesterday. I got a kebab. Mm, cool. Thanks. Thank you. Frame 19. Mark Williams to break. Yeah, and not only would John Higgins have been disappointed with the way Mark played, but just sometimes you're hoping for a little sign of weakness from your opponent, a sign of perhaps he's maybe looking ahead to the winning line, getting nervous. John's confidence, the world of good, and the fact he can and the brown means he's got a chance to cut the yellow into the pocket as we show you this long pot, good queuing. He's knocked so many of that type of shot in over the last 17 days. 
Yeah, but you'd think now John Higgins has got to play as well as he can play now to win this final. Mark Williams doesn't show any signs of laying off or easing up. Three. It's very awkward, but he doesn't have much to do with the cue ball. Just has to drop the red in. Four. He missed one like that yesterday into the corner pocket. Just got a bit of unwanted side, but no problem that time. Nine. I don't know if he's got an angle to head up for one of the bulk colours. It'd be easier to get into the reds from one of those. I'm just playing for the blue, Ten. but the pink is away from the reds. And if he would have to hit the pink absolutely spot on here. And he did. And he deserves a bit of good fortune. Because of the pink being away 50. from the red, he had to get a full ball, and that was almost perfect. Yeah, you can't hit a shot any better. And John Higgins just played there. Could have had something a little bit more straightforward than this, but it shouldn't be a problem. All these tricky shots. John Higgins are becoming 15. more difficult just the fact that he's 11 7 behind. It's purely the pressure of having to chase this match. He knows he can't afford any errors at all. Did very well to avoid canning into that red near the right middle pocket there. He played a much thicker contact on that red. He was attendant. He almost caught the red in the, the black cushion. And that's the reason why he hasn't got the cue ball to the bolt cushion. I think Dennis going into tonight's session, John Higgins doesn't want to be any more than four frames behind. I think if that happens, it's hard to see him coming back from that. That'll be the absolute maximum distance he'd want to leave. Typical <coughs> single ball pot from Mark Williams. That's why he's so hard to chase down. I'm just wondering if he can avoid canning into the yellow here when he takes the blue on. If he plays it with a little bit of pace, he might just miss the yellow, which he needs to do. No, he couldn't. Thought he could avoid it, but it looked a natural. Six. Mark Williams, six. See, they're both brilliant tactical players. It's hard to separate them.
far in this. John Higgins, four. Well, he needed a thin contact, but uh, now that he missed the red, the whites just come up past the balk line, and there's a bit of pressure on this long red, the one to the right of the pink, if John takes it on. Four frames in front, he'd never miss that shot. Pressure is so much more on One. those sort of shots for John Higgins than Mark Williams. He also needs help from his opponent, John Higgins, but I can't see him getting much. We always talk about John Higgins having the best snooker Six. brain in the game. Mark Williams is not too far behind in that department, I can tell you. Thanks. Meanwhile, he hasn't hit that Seven. hard enough. So that's a mistake. But even though he's played a poor shot there, hasn't batted an eyelid, just carries on as if he was on the, the blank. He's going to have to fight seven. hard for chances here, John <laughs> Higgins. He's going to have to come up with some terrific tactical and safety play to create the chance for himself. Just looking to see if there's two reds a plant. Not that he can get anywhere near them, but it's where he is going to leave the cue ball. He doesn't want to leave a plant on for Mark Williams. I'm just going to the left of the pocket, it looks like. Oh, this will be some shot. He's trying to find a gap. Get back down the table off the red there. There's three reds together. He's looked at it. And the red, the right side of the table, is in the way. So back to this couple of cushions and land on the red. I mean, he could try the two cushion and clip the red and get back down, but that's risky also. And that's what he's played, the two cushion. Foul, the miss. Mark Williams, four. Better missing it with the first attempt. The last thing he wants to do is hit this full ball. didn't hit it full ball half ball has got him halfway down the table but I think everything's covered into this right corner by the looks of things that's why Mark's scratching his head there well hang on a minute he might be able to make the plant John's shot, 
he needed to get the white way up the other end of the table. But I'm sure he didn't think there was a plant there. Maybe out of position. That could be the end of break. Seven. Gone just too far there. I'd have to swerve that to make the potting angle. He did something the other day I'd never seen. He held his hand over one eye when he was looking at a shot. I think he's... <coughs> not sure whether this pots or not. If not, he can play a straightforward safety shot off the red that's on the right side, down cannon onto the yellow. But the thing is, if he can swerve this, he knows he's on the black. to take this long over the shot, but he knows how important it is. Well, now he's looking at the two-ball plant, but... Don't fancy that. I'd rather try and bend it round and pot the other red. And that might have been help there. That was such a difficult shot. There was so much room between the two reds. That could have gone wrong, but could be a frame winner now. Yeah, it looks so easy w when you see it like this, but to judge that, you know, it's high risk, but he made it look easy. Eleven. Eighteen. Nineteen. Line up another plant to left corner. And this, he's playing a cannon off the black. He did have a look at the plant. Hmm. Be knocking that red towards the corner pocket. <coughs> Very happy with the outcome there. 26. He's just not making any unforced errors, and that makes it so difficult, or is going to make it so difficult for John Higgins to get back into this match. Twenty-seven. Well, four or five seasons ago, I never dreamt I'd be commentating on Mark Williams back in the final of a world championship. He was thinking of packing the game up at one stage. And only just over a year ago, he was thinking of that. And here he is playing in the final of the Betfred World Championship, leading one of the all-time greats, 11-7. It's quite 35. remarkable to think it's 15 years 
since he last played in the final. Unbelievable. Forty two. Dennis last year had to qualify for the Crucible and didn't make it. So what a difference in a year. And there's his wife Jo there. She's 49. so nervous watching. Uh, I was telling her it's uh, not so bad for Mark. More difficult watching. Yeah, last year, Stephen, he lost 10-7 to Stuart Carrington and didn't make it to the Crucible. I think he's looking stronger today than yesterday. Okay, it's easy sometimes to look confident. You can People will say you're going 12-7 up. It's easy to look confident, but sometimes and you can look ahead and the winning line can... I mean, you go into your shell a little bit and play defensive, but there's been no sign of that at all. Mark Williams, 56. John Higgins gets marked to the referee. What a start for the Welshman. Mark Williams takes the second frame, and now he leads John Higgins by 12 frames to seven. Uh, and what we always talk about Mark Williams being such a shot maker and what a shot you came up with there a wonderful plant and this plant was so difficult so because there's so much room between the first red and the second and that was a wonderful shot which set up of course the frame winning chance now if we go to two plants here uh, a plant are very easy when the balls are so close together so here's the first one into the corner pocket not too much different distance between two reds there you go that's the first one but this one, a lot more difficult. Look, there's about six inches between the first red and the second. You've got to judge the distance and, of course, get the right contact. And this is how difficult it is because this probably won't work for his time. But I'll have a go. Oh, look at that. Surprise, surprise. But great shot. Innovative. And what a shot maker Mark Williams is. Brilliant. Yep, and you really never know what he's going to try or attempt. And they're coming off here. And John Higgins always manages to find what I would call the champion's gear, but he's, he's fumbling around for it now. He may have to show something equal to anything he's done before because at the moment Brilliant one player is really in stroke. John Mark Higgins Williams looks very comfortable. John's not getting a lot of table time in fairness, but even the odd chance he's had, he's, he's missed shots you wouldn't expect. So he's got to find something from somewhere, but he's also got to get his help off his opponents and I'm not too sure he's going to get much. Yep, a five frame lead, the widest margin of separation between these men so far. Yeah, mathematically, Mark Williams could win this final this afternoon if he won all remaining six frames. It'd be hard to imagine that happening, but he can certainly put himself in an unassailable position going into tonight. He can virtually win this match today, this afternoon. talk a lot about players being tired on the finals day with all the tough matches they've had but when you're out in the arena the adrenaline just keeps you going it's when the whole thing finishes that's when you are shattered but while you're out there it doesn't enter your mind pushed one over the corner and it, it looks like he's going to find the gap so and the black is in the clear and we know how he floats these in
one. Didn't pot it as he intended. That's why the whites stayed in the jaws. And he's running away from the reds. There's one to the left there that would be available. He's overcut it. It was the pot Mark on the red that uh, didn't work out as intended. Well, has he covered everything now? There might just be one red that'll go into the left corner. And John has potted so many of this type of shot, but not under these circumstances, not five frames behind. tempted by this red down the left cushion because the cue ball will be coming it'll miss the red that's to the right of it and the cue ball will be coming towards the black cushion and he's just saying it'll miss the red it's almost the only red he can leave is the one he's playing here and he's psyched himself up for it Blooded for that one. But as we said before, Dennis, those shots are so much easier with 12 7 in front than 12 7 behind. And you see him walk around the table, Mark. It's Eight. It's like he's floating around the table. Nine. Very measured, not rushed, but when he's playing like this, one of the quickest players in the game. And his average shot time still at 20 seconds. 16. 17. From 7-7, seven, seven, he's been flying. He's won every frame since then. 24. 32. That's his pot success rate since seven frames all, 94%. John way down at 76. Thanks. 33. you can do in a game of snooker sat from sat in your seat and that's what's pretty much John Higgins has been resigned to for the last five frames he's not had many good chances 39 40 
46. Thanks. It looks to be fifty four. Pretty straight on the black. On a slight angle. He could play top spin off the right hand side cushion. Or play the cue ball a bit of right hand side off the side cushion, play for the red that's tight on the black cushion there so so he's now looking at a plant possibly to the left corner there's a red at the, the edge of the, the left edge of the five will go up to the far right corner mm, this is definitely missable okay if the red's tight in the cushion it makes the pot a little bit 61. easier I liked your shot better, but he's so full of confidence at the moment. And that's floated into the pocket beautifully. 62. Well, this is quite a remarkable performance from Mike Williams. Quick 69. glance at the scoreboard. John needs a snooker, so he could take the plant on. Mark Williams, 69. Well, even that little shot there. He didn't try and screw back for the black. He just played the plant softly, so he was hoping he wouldn't leave John Higgins anything. So that's why it's going to be so difficult for John to get back into this match. Your opponent's making no unforced errors at all. He had a bit of a chance there. Four reds, four blacks, and then he only needed one snooker, but now the plant hasn't come off. It's over the middle pocket. One. Six. Seven. <coughs> Fourteen. Fifteen. Just over five and a half hours of some superb snooker and the biggest percentage you've had coming from this player. 21. Incredible. And so good 22. to watch as well, the way he goes about playing this game and break building. John Higgins has had, had to go at so far at half chances. And there's been so much pressure on him because he's so far behind. And he's not been able to make anything of them. 25. Twenty-nine from Mark Williams this afternoon. 
31. Yeah, it was a big frame last night, the last frame. But since then, it's one way traffic. And this frame is final, 34. sorry, it could be over quicker than anyone would expect. Thirty-eight. Forty-three. Forty-nine. Is there any way of stopping this Welsh potting machine. Mark Williams yeah. has taken oh, six frames in a row and he now leads the four times former champion John Higgins by 13 frames to seven. This is brilliant. John Higgins at six behind now. Can you see a way back for the man who's won four titles? Only if uh, Mark Williams sees a finishing line and sees it early. Uh, and the way it started off this session, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. This is turning into a mini Welsh fairy tale at the moment. <laughs> what a story it would be if he just annihilated him. It's just incredible. This, this red down the rail, John. Uh, it's unbelievable, Kieran. He's in the absolute peak of his form. Uh, and personally, I can't see any way back for John the way Mark's playing. Because to come back from that far behind, you're going to need help. And at the moment, he's not going to get any from Mark Williams. He's, he's walking around the table, looks vintage. I was in the com box last night looking at him. And the way he floated around the table when I watched him, I thought, you are back to your very, very best. I, I was impressed with him there. I just thought today, for John to be in it, this first session, he needed a good start. And that fluke in the first frame might be massive. Well, we saw how well Mark Williams stuck in there yesterday, particularly given the fact that he was shattered after that semi-final win over Barry Hawkins. But if anything, he's upped his level today even more. That's right, and you know, and John Higgins was 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 good towards the end, but then it sort of faltered a bit. You know, going back to that last frame last night, how massive was that in the context of things? The funny thing is with it, you know, you see John Higgins you, playing Frank, matches, 21. and he seems to strangulate his opponents with it. He just keeps putting break. them on the book. But Mark Williams seems to have the right antidote down, to all that. You. He never have any frames that are like that. He just, he just brilliant in his own way of, you know, tactical play. He never seems to get embroiled in anything that, that takes a long time. Okay, this is the last before the interval. Yeah, I thought at the start of this final we would have some fabulous tactical and safety play. There's been a certain amount of it, but. No, it's been very fluent. Frames have been all very quick. No really drawn out frames. Yeah, John Higgins' only hope is to try and get a bit of momentum. It's very hard to see how that's going to happen, the way his opponent's playing, but somehow can manage to string two or three frames in a row. It's the only way he's going to put pressure on Mark Williams. As I keep saying, when your opponent makes no unforced errors, that becomes almost impossible. Yeah, he's just not taking any risks. He's playing the percentages every time. There's Mark Williams, and it's certainly working. But John Higgins has got to think in his mind, well, Mark has just won six frames in a row. If he can do it, there's no reason I can't. But is he going to get the chances? That's the thing.
don't be surprised if Mark Williams doesn't float this red up into the left corner pocket. Not this time. Uh, has he left it or has he covered it? <coughs> well, looking at John's expression, he's left it but it's dead straight. The only thing he can do here is leave the white where the red is and leave the yellow for the middle pocket that he's bridging next to. Has he got a slight angle? He's playing it with topspin. He could follow this one in. It's amazing, Stephen, on these cloths. That looked absolutely dead straight, and he got an angle just by forcing it. No, this is an aggressive shot. Brown into the far left corner, into the bunch. John Higgins, one. So often happens, you stick a red up. Just, it's just all half chances at the moment for John Higgins. And the pressure he's under, they're just proving too difficult. One. Before the final started, John Higgins was four to seven favorite to lift the title this year. That's where you would put seven pounds on to win four. So he was a strong favorite, but there's only one favorite at the moment. <coughs> Six. Slight unforced error there. Okay, the way he's playing is still I still expect him to pop this red to the right corner, but left the cue ball pretty much in no man's land there. Seven. There's an angle on the brown. He's got one. Yeah, it's be interesting to see how he plays this. Good chance he'll play the red down the left cushion, being left-handed. Screw back for the blue. If the other red that he's looking at now is a natural angle to can in the one next to the black, this is the one he'll play. It's the more difficult pot. Well, if he'd potted the red, he would have got the Mark can. Williams, <coughs> As usually is the case when you're playing really well and you take a pot on and miss it, it goes safe. Well, he's not had much to cheer about this afternoon so far, John, but the fact that Mark did make an error, didn't capitalise on John's Miss Brown, you've got to take every scrap that you can get to try and build some confidence, some momentum. This time, he hasn't got away with it. The red passes the yellow. He can leave the white where the red is. It could be nicely on the blue. He could go into the bunch because the black's out of commission. The pink's awkward. Could all change in a couple of shots. Okay. 
key well, shot coming up. He's just going to have a look to make sure there's no plants on, and he can then hit it as hard as he wants. He might even be able to develop the black, depending on how the cannon works out. You know, I was just looking at the situation in the reds. I don't think he'll open the black up, but that's what I'd love to happen. Oh, that red just came and just nudged the black. But it's six still not available. gone at the moment. John, John Higgins, six. Yeah, you don't say that very often about this player, but having lost six frames in a row, even the greats feel it out there. Yeah, the problem is every chance he get, he's getting at the moment is half chances. Everything's awkward. I know that pot was quite an easy pot, but the position was awkward, the black's out of commission, the pink's out of commission. He needs help, he needs something straightforward to get him back into this match. Is he going to get it? That's not like John Higgins, down at 63% with his pot success rate. Not quite where he intended. The black's tied Four. up at the moment, as Stephen was saying, but you see the red that's near the pocket, if he can clear that away, that will open up the black. <coughs> and that's the red he's looking at now, so if he pots this, drops on the colour, it could turn into a good chance, but this is not a, an easy cut. Well, everything's easy at the moment. Maybe that kiss Five. has spoiled things because to pot the green, he'd have to get over to the left side of the blue as we look at it, and he'd have to play it with quite a bit of pace. He's really got to hit this. Wow. He's <laughs> look at the action he got on that. From that position, in fact, he's hit it too well. Eight. He's enjoying every single minute out there, and he's queuing like a dream. Yeah, it's a lovely position to be in. Nine. Full of confidence, your opponent. You've pretty much got where, got them where you want them. Ew. It's a very dejected looking snooker player sat there. I wonder what's going through his mind at the moment. Well, that's gone wrong. Well, he may still have a red to the right corner. 14. Get the cue ball out of there. We have to just hit this hard and hit and hope. Fifteen. Well, he's. 
pulling off all sorts of shots. We talk about him being a shot maker. I mean, that's why he's so good to watch. He pulled a shot off yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Where he sent a red off the puck cushion, finished on the black, and potted one that was Eight. over the middle pocket. The number of people that stopped Nine. me on the way down to the theatre, just talking about that shot that he pulled off. When you're playing 24. well, you get the little flicks like that. It was a perfectly played cannon, and it's worked out very nicely. 25. I never expected that this, between this final, between these two great players would be as one-sided in either direction as it has been. 30. I thought this was going to go all the way. 31. He's going to try and get something out this afternoon, Dennis, and doesn't want to have the embarrassment of being beating a session early. 38. I know we talk about little mini sessions and how the players go about it, but I heard you saying Mark Williams is not the sort of player he doesn't. He just plays each frame as it comes along. I don't think he thinks about winning mini sessions. He just thinks about winning each frame that he's playing. 44. It's just a tricky red for frame ball. 45. Well, his wife, Joe, must be absolutely delighted with watching her husband performing out here. 52. is absolutely flying. He's won all four frames and he now leads 14-7. Who would have thought that would be the scoreline? Well, yesterday Thank John Fergal said 22. that the essence of this final can be John summed Higgins up in one break. line. Form is temporary, class is permanent. And that's true of our finalists and true too of our lineup in the commentary box as well. Uh -huh. As we welcome two more major winners, Al McManus and JV himself. Thank you, Hazel. What can John Higgins find? That's the big question that's out there. And I've got to say, Alan, I've been so impressed with Mark Williams in the first four frames. He's, he's really racing towards that winning line. Yes, he, he's grasped the metal. Simple as, simple as that. John Higgins in the four frames this afternoon has amassed a measly 31 points. How, as you say, how does he turn this round? from your opponent. The only thing is the black has been knocked to the top cushion, but if he's got a slight angle, he may be able to play for the pink to the middle. Such a great competitor, John Higgins, and he'll need all of that in these next four frames. decided to play for the black and boy is the pressure on this
wonderful. Eight. Now can he make the most of this opportunity? This is all he needs to do now. He needs to start scoring heavily and keep Mark Williams off the table. Sixteen. Yes, he pretty much has to play. No miss snooker now, John Higgins, for the remainder of the day. If he's to have any chance after that seismic mini session by Mark Williams. 25. It's just not happening. And as we always say, you miss a black off your spot when you're in, it's usually very costly. One. Quite interesting there, Alan, that he played for the black. Six. And we were, th you know, reds, blacks, but he wouldn't be thinking of 147. The pink was unmissable. I'm not quite certain why he played the black. Seven. Yes, I, I, I tend to agree, John. I mean, we, we try not to be critical of these guys because they're the best of the best, but yeah, the pink was, as you rightly say, was, was unmissable. Interesting shot Mark's played. Yeah, and he's going to finish up on nothing, or nothing easy. 14. Yeah, I think when you're in the position that John was in, it's just nice to get your hand on the table and maybe get 40 or 50, you know, make things easier for yourself. But another lovely red stroke in, and he's going to be on the pink to the middle. Boy, can this man pot? And he just never seems to be under duress, Mark Williams. Just stroked it in. Just took the tension out of the shot the way that he played it. Like most things he's done today. 21. Twenty-two. Well, puff of the cheeks. He thought he got a bit of a bounce there, but he's got a nice angle on the black just to play a little cannon here. Ooh, but he's not played it well. That's gone wrong. Needed to catch this red full in the face, and 29. probably you'd have to say with a little less space. But catching it half ball, he's run out of position. This is part of the problem that John has now been so far behind. <laughs> Matt Williams is such a difficult guy to chase. He's 
Got to be careful he didn't catch it too thick and catch the bump in the middle pocket. No, he's OK, and he's played it well. <laughs> and it'd be much relieved that he's still in this frame after missing the black off the spot. That's a lovely reply from Mark, is it? Well, just flicking the brown stopped it from being a good safety. The other thing about Mark Williams, of course, apart from his potting, he can frustrate you, can't he? Yeah. He keeps you at bay for extended periods now. John has to start knocking these in. Yeah, good pot, then actually, if John were to go on and make inroads here, one good thing about it, if, as he goes on to do, the business in this frame, that marks it a chance. Yeah. You can get little doubts in your opponent's mind, and all the better. But I repeat, Three. he almost has to play no-miss snooker from here on in. Four. Which, of course, he's quite capable of doing. Now he's got the perfect angle on the, the black here. He's going to play the cannon. The one two down from the pink looks to be the one that would be the perfect one to hit. He needs this to go right. Well, he's opened all the red. It's worked out perfect. 11. Fifteen points to the lead. Nineteen. Just looking now for another twenty-one points in this position, which really equates to three reds, three pinks. Twenty. Looks easy enough, but as we know, he's under pressure, and every shot needs due care and attention. Twenty seven. So there you see it, red and a pink. To go 30. 36 points in front with just 35 remaining. 34. He's needed two chances. But he's taken this second one really well. Good opening red. Brought red into play and has never looked like missing. Yeah, cracking opening pot, wasn't it? He's taking these nicely. There it is. Get it with control. Thanks. And that means Mark Williams will not be coming back to the table. Slightly. 
he's not bothered. 47. He knows that this frame's over now. But he want to keep potting balls. He want to keep his cue arm going. He's not had a lot of table time. Just over six hours this match has been in. 52. In progress, and it's been a fascinating contest. Fifty-six. <laughs> Sixty-one. Yeah, not bother about playing for the black. So John Higgins gets his first frame on the scoreboard, and you can hear the delight from the family and from the audience. They want to see a match, and John Higgins now has reduced his arrears. Well, it's still six, but there were signs of hope there. Fourteen-eight, Williams. Yes, signs of hope indeed, and they needed to come fast as well, guys, didn't they? That's his uh, first break over, what, 30 since his third century to level at seven frames apiece last night. Been a long time coming. Yeah, shows you how well Mark Williams has been playing, and, and obviously John's dipped a little bit with his form. We mentioned he was running a little bit on the empty with the petrol gauge, but um, that'll give him encouragement, and uh, I do think that interval came at the right time there just to regroup. Yeah, and Steve... From John's point of view now, he knows it's a long way back. How do you start to claw back in a final like this? You've both been in finals, you know what the dynamics are like. How do you think about the job in front of you now? Ball at a time. Not even a frame at a time. You just play the shots in front of you, forget the scoreline. It is a bit easier now to, for John Higgins to, to forget because he's, 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 he's lost touch. So therefore it's just, OK, right, let's just play. But Mark Williams, the job does become hard in one respect. He's got to make sure you don't look over your shoulder. He showed a bit of weakness in that. Uh, situation, but he was so strong in the first part, it would have been so hard to keep that up. Um, so yeah, it's still three. important for Mark Williams to try and Mark keep Williams his focus here. It certainly is, but we are guaranteed an evening session. Decent break off shot. Anything that doesn't leave a pot on nowadays is called decent. So the dreaded losing with a session to spare has been averted. It's only actually happened three times ever at the Crucible. Steve Davis did it against Cliff Thorburn. <coughs> Steve, Stephen Hendry <laughs> did it against Jimmy White. And <coughs> excuse me, Steve Davis also did it against their own John Parrott. So. Thankfully, that's been that's averted. That saved a shot from John Higgins. Nearly went wrong, but he just managed to get the cue ball back to the ball end. Thin cut, but always knew the cue ball was travelling. Back to the ball end. <laughs> the problem is for John, these two reds on the left hand side of the table, he's got to cover those because if he doesn't get a good cue ball, Mark will need be taking one of them on. He's looking at coming off the main bunch. The problem is with that, he doesn't really want to open too many reds. But this is a tough one. Gotta miss the blue here at all costs. Oh, caught it much too thick. 
needs that cue ball to run to the side cushion to have any hope of it being reasonably safe. Which way is he going to play this, Mark Williams? We know he likes to drop them in slowly. He's not made his mind up. So wisely getting back up. You have to commit to this. In terms of controlling the many facets of your game, a sound temperament can actually be contagious. Eight. Positive thought flows from the estuary of the mind. This afternoon, Mark Williams has just had John Higgins under Nine. a torrent of pressure. Sixty. Just a little bit straighter on this red would have been better. But judge the cannon Seven. nicely. <laughs> Although he was just off straight the wrong side, he may have a bit to do, but yeah, he's straight enough. <laughs> Managed to force the angle and played it well. Thirty-two. Yes, four reds, four blacks. I don't think Maximum will be entering his head just yet. But at some time he's going to have to go into that cluster. It's not a bad cluster to go in, actually. There's a few little gaps you could screw into. Thanks. There's only the loose red on the left-hand side of the table. He's got the angle, he may decide to play it now. Coming off the top cushion, needs lots of top spin. Yeah, look at this again, the combination of accuracy and power with control there was awesome. 41. Hmm, just a bit short of pace. Can't get close to the next red. Trying to force it around the angles. Forty-six. No, oh, another great 47. shot. It's one of those shots that uh, I tend to call a, a 40 or a 50 point pot. You fully expect him to score heavily from here now. He's keeping that nice rhythm too. So there you see it, 53 ahead, 91 remaining. Three reds, three <laughs> colours. Would get him to the snooker's required stage. And the one thing that's impressed me in this session, Alan, he's certainly not balked at the sight of the winning line. He's got stronger. 
impressed. Yeah, familiarity breeds success, doesn't it? And he, he, <laughs> he's been familiar with the, the winning line down the years, Mark Williams, especially this season. Completely comfortable out there. And of course, this just shows you the nature of the game. John Higgins tried to play safety shot and not bring other reds into play, so 59. he went on the one near the top cushion, caught it much too thick. Left a difficult red. Stroked it in as he 60. did that one, and this time nicely on the blue. You just get the feeling at the moment, Mark Williams, any chance of any pot, he's going to go for it and he's going to make it count. Ooh, slap on the table. Mm. He hit the red well, but what he 65. failed to do was hit it with a bit more pace. And he realised that straight away when the cue ball stuck in the reds. Something else that tells us that Mark Williams is in his own mind knows that he still has a match to win here. No part of him will be thinking of th th this is almost over. Not by a long chalk. There's a little reaction. You don't get much from him. <sighs> Mark Williams, 65. So John Higgins is still in the frame. Mark Williams, 65 points in front, but there's still 75 remaining. And the balls are nicely placed if John Higgins can get the next chance. Mark's view of the table, plenty of reds to hit. He liked to play safe and knock a red near the cushion. Just working out which is the best way to go about it. Missed it. Not the first time he's played down that line. And missed the ball, and I'm certain John Higgins won't move. Have it put back. This is always the danger here. If Mark Sorry. was to miss it this time, because he can Leo. hit reds full, if he misses it this time, he'd get warned about forfeiting the frame for three misses. <laughs> Hi, John. Caught it well that time. <laughs> yeah, good shot. And John Higgins tapping the table, which is good to see. It's funny. For a top snooker player, in some ways, the first shot he played there, Mark, and he missed it, was actually a better shot than <laughs> the one he's played because he, he gave himself a sighter. It was clever. Just so clever. Well, John Higgins is eyeing up the pot to this right corner. I suggest he needs to get it. Oh, what a shot! Does it run past the red? Well, obviously the black will go. It's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. It's there, and he's got the cannon. Well, 
Well, Eight. this would just be unbelievable if he could steal this frame at this visit, Alan. Boy, oh boy. What a shot. What a couple of shots, Nine. actually. You don't get to be a four-time world champion without having top ticker. That was incredible. Now is the chance. She's done this time after time after time over 25 years. 16. Seventeen. He's got plenty of points to play with. I.e., when he gets the last couple of reds, he could go up for blue or maybe a bolt colour. These three reds, three colours, and the six Wait remaining colours. Yeah, straighter on that pink, it had just been a case of rolling it in. Just about fell, but he played the cannon nicely. 30. And it just needs one precise position of shot off this red. And he's just wondering, I think, whether to play that precise position of shot on the pink or would it be safer going up for the blue? Yeah, he's conscious of either being straight or high, 31. and he's finished just low. Just low of straight is not perfect. Having to work this cue ball. Playing for the red in the middle. Glance at the scoreboard. Any colour will do. 37. And then the six remaining colours. Right in the heart 38. of the pocket. He's got the perfect angle on the black to stun yeah. off two cushions for the yellow. This is the big shot now. Right in the heart of the pocket. And he's on the yellow. So now it's just a case of holding yourself together. He's looking to see if he can, what well he needs, but he needs all six colours. Forty-seven. And I like the way these balls are going right in the heart of the pocket, Alan, under the utmost pressure. Yes, that yellow was smooth as silk. Now, I always say that this is the key shot in a clearance. Off the brown, if he gets perfect on the blue, no problem. 54. Mm, he's going to have to stun on and off the top cushion. Fifty-nine. Perfect. Sixty-five. Preposterous. Alive with an unbelievable clearance. 
Intervals sometimes change matches. Is this going to be the case? It's back to 14 9. Oh, what a frame, and what a typical frame from John Higgins when his back is against the wall. A beautiful long red to start off the break, but have a look at this black. Just to keep himself in it, he's not only got to pop the black into a blind pocket, he's got to make the cannon as well. And the degree of difficulty, we always call it a blind pocket because you can't, you're not actually looking down the line of the black and the pocket is in your line as well. He's looking at the middle of the cushion here. Now he's got to pot it with a little bit of side and also he's got to make the cannon on the red, which is very difficult and particularly when you're so far behind in this match like he was. But he showed a lot of bottle. It's very difficult. I'll try to demonstrate it. There you go. Made the cannon and went on to make a wonderful clearance. Typical John Higgins. This match is still on. Sure is, and that's, I think, three out of three for Ken Doherty in the demos. He really has upped his game as well today. He's fantastic. He's getting with <laughs> Angles Matt Manus. The two of them are brilliant. Now, you thought Mark Williams was too cool to show he cares? Absolutely not. Look at him breaking down here on 65, and I think Alan exactly right. He knows he's still in a match here, guys. Yeah, I mean, like, he knows that split, and uh, he's got his seven-frame advantage again. It's... Uh, who... <laughs> He's still in the driving seat, of course but there's the possibility if, if, if John Higgins can win the next two frames, there's a match on this evening. What I'm trying hard to explain is where's he found that from? Because before the interval, he was gonzo. I mean, he just, like, he didn't have anything. He had, his concentration was gone. He looked like he was on empty. Don't know what he did in the interval, but it's worked. Maybe some wine gums. Who knows? Unbelievable, but it was just an incredible turnaround. I mean, just it did not look like he had anything. And you look back in history, Stephen Hendry six down from 8-14 against Jimmy White, 1992 wins. Thank you, frame Mark Williams himself, 7-13 down to Mark's Matthew Stevens, 2000 wins. Even last year, John Higgins knows there's nothing safe. Mark Selby came back against him from 4-10 down to win. It's on. Yes, in the deepest, darkest recesses of the snooker jungle, lurks an expert ambush predator, and that was John Higgins at his absolute finest. Played it well. And the referee hasn't declared a touching ball. And I don't think there's a way that John can get back to the balk end here. Yeah. Well, he's asking for the spider. Maybe he thinks there is a way back. Okay. Got to be... Careful here. Yeah, well played. As long as he misses the yellow, he's OK. That's a good shot. That's an excellent shot. It would have been so easy then just to trickle into the pack, but he wanted to put Mark under pressure with this safety. And it's forced a mistake. Just had a look. He's trying to take the heat out of this pot by screwing over to the side, and he thinks he can get a position where the only red he can leave is the one he's playing. Doesn't matter now, the red's gone in, needs a bounce. Yeah. yeah, that red that opened the counter clearance in the last frame was good. I feel if this black goes in, that rather that red there right there could be equally as important. Now this is a biggie, big shot. Oh, 
smooth. Very smooth. Yeah, he potted the black, and obviously the black Eight. needed due care and attention. But he's not perfect. He wanted to be on the red immediately above the black to be able to roll that in for the black in the corner. The red he's got to the left corner, he may be able to manoeuvre, but he'll need the extended rest, extension on his cue. May be able to stun across to play for the black in the same pocket. But this isn't the red he played for. I'm just looking if there is a way that he can get to the black just by dropping this red in. Big moments in the match now for John Higgins. And you can hear a pin drop in the crucible. Nice. So it's a, a tricky cut back black. Nine. But he automatically cannon the red just above the black, so. All he has to do is concentrate on the pot. The cue ball will take care of itself. Ah, wonderful again. 16. We just seen seventy small signs of John Higgins beginning to tread a golden path, bravery, courage, and heart. The wizard of audacity. He's just got a slight angle on the black. <coughs> Wants to be straight on this red. I'm looking at his facial expression and he, he doesn't look too happy with it. 24. Mm, he wanted to be straight so he could easily run through for the black. So he's going to play a little screw back here, which means that he's playing a black, 25. a tricky black. Quarter ball pot, he's missed one of these early. Doesn't want to be doing too much with the cue ball here. This is an important pot. Right in the heart of the pocket. Is he on this red at the bottom? I'm looking at his face. I think he is. 32. that red at the top of that little cluster in the middle of the table 40. going to the, the corner looking at his face I don't think it does no it doesn't well he can play the red that well he's looking at the one that would give him position on the black personally this wouldn't be my preference I'd play the one that's just to the left of the black into the right corner. At least you're going back to the ball end with an element of safety. Playing this one, it's risky. Yeah, he's gonna take my choice here. Don't know whether he's thinking 147s here, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a moment to start thinking about him. Yeah, but I agree, JV. Oh, he's, he's looking at the more difficult of the two, my goodness me. Well, 
just struggled its way in. He's knocked it on the black. 41. I think he's simply made his mind up here. He's going to go for everything. Doesn't do half measures, John. This is a massive shot again. Mark Williams, and there's the Higgins family. Boy, I wouldn't like to be in their shoes. Nerve-wracking. Forty-nine. Well, unbelievably, there is a possibility of a maximum. The frame, obviously, is the priority. But he's got this far with reds and blacks and everything crossed. Fifty-seven. I think you'd be looking to get the couple of loose reds. As I say, the the maximum is still on, but the frame is so important, and he knows that. I believe you can. Ooh, that needs to. Well, I think he played that with a trace aside and got nothing on the cue ball. Sixty-four. He's finished on nothing. Bad misjudgment. Yeah, I suggested John that it, he's not going to renege on anything from here on in, John. Well, not until at least he gets back in the match, if and when he does. This red will go actually to the yellow pocket, but only just. Is he playing a double? Well, double, or can he see enough of this red to pot it in the left middle? He's clearly just going to go for it. No, he's played the double. He's played the double. He's got the double. 65. This black and one more red, and Mark Williams will need a snooker. It's still a possibility, but 72. would you sacrifice that for the frame? Because I don't think he's on this red where it's a natural angle to play for the black. But he only needs the red to go 73 points ahead with 67 remaining. He's played it with tons of side, he's got the red. And now he can concentrate on the black and trying to make... A maximum. He's made a 146 already in the tournament. Can he better that? Yeah. How can you lose seven frames in a row? Produce that clearance. 80. And now he's on a maximum. Dear me. breather for a couple of seconds. Yeah, it was funny in the last frame when Mark Williams played a bad shot. There's Denise, John's wife, and well the frame's safe so they can relax a little bit. Oh, well, what a shame, what a shame. Maybe he's been dropping concentration on the cue ball play, but the most important thing was the frame. And he got that, and what a way to get it. And he's now four behind. 14-10, Mark Williams. 
He couldn't make 40 a few, a few frames ago. <laughs> and now we've had clearances, we've had doubles, we've had maximum attempts. This is extraordinary stuff. I honestly, I just don't know where it's come from. I have no idea. I've seen loads of things he's done in the past. I've seen him try, I've seen him turn matches around, but this is just monumental what he's doing here. Steve, where does he drag this up from? Um, well, I think he's always had the ability to just be playing in the moment and forget the scoreline. But in a session of snooker, uh, when, when all of a sudden it goes wrong, that first session, you know, it, all of a sudden you unravel a bit, but the, the intervals can sort of get yourself back a bit. But he's got so much pride in his game and, and, and so much ability and you know, doggedness as well. Uh, but for this last frame now, Mark Williams has entered the madhouse because he's not desperate to win it, but thinking about that split that never went wrong and he smashed the table, yeah. it looked a bit petulant. No, he knew that, that John Higgins was still in there with a the shout. This would be a big frame Thank for Mark Williams to win. Frame of this session. He was seven frames break. ahead, Mark Williams, and this man is coming back at him. Yes, you thought at the start of the session that... John Higgins, well, couldn't lose the session, but when he left the first four frames, that looked on the cards. But now, well, you can't stress the importance of this final frame now. Foul on this. We just feathered the pink Marwell first. six. Yeah, yeah Mark's Leo, having it replaced. Leo, I think this one moved. Seen a few players this week when they've been playing that one off the side cushion. I don't know whether it's coming off a little bit square, but there's quite a few hit the pink. On what? The pink. <coughs> yes, I think also. And you're right, John. Related. Also to that, I think yeah. the, you tend to err on the high side, don't you? You don't want it going south on you and slipping off the back of the bunch, the, 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 the bottom of the bunch. Absolutely. Because then you could leave a red. Just to trace more side. Okay. Yep. That way. Yep. Okay, John. Mark. Thank you. Thanks, Leo. Thought I didn't like that. He'd leave a touching ball, but Brendan Moore, our referee, didn't call it, so it's not. Thick, which is why he's caught the yellow. But the red that possibly would tempt Mark on the right hand side of the table as we look, slightly hampered by the yellow. Sigh relief there, Mark Williams didn't catch that red thicker. Yeah, he decelerated there, didn't he? And for all, he played tremendously well in the first four frames. That barrage that John's just hitting back with, he'll be feeling the effects of it, will Mark? 
the strange thing is, although he's got a four frame lead, it's obviously not a must win frame for Mark, but he could be doing with it. Playing the pot here, I think. Hoping to wriggle it and get it away from the pocket. There you go, that's actually a good shot. Well worked out. John was trying to cut out the escape route down the right hand side of the table, but I think Mark can just get past the pink. Only a thin edge sticking out, isn't it? Ooh, and he's missed it. Foul, the miss. John Higgins. Unless it's a free ball, John Higgins will have it replaced. There's not a lot of this red sticking out, so this cue ball needs replacing absolutely perfectly. Brendan Moore just asking, or having it confirmed that that is the right place. Okay. Thumbs up from Leo Scullion. Thank you. But of course, if he missed it this time, he'd be warned. Can he can hit other reds? Oh, but well, this time he did find the edge. And the cue ball's travelling towards the corner, but what a wonderful shot. Yeah, it's a, a bit of a little piece in the, in the practice room last evening, talking about finishing a shot. How well did Mark Williams finish that shot off? That was beautiful, technically. And if John can't get past the pink to play a similar shot to the one Mark just played, he's in a spot of bother here. Very congested down the left-hand side of the table, and I don't think there's enough of that red sticking out. Coming in on the action. Certainly makes the uh, shot look more difficult from the side on, doesn't it? Our top shot does for short and things. Now what's he worked out here? Oh, well, he's had a result there. He was very fortunate. Just caught the knuckles, which avoid him. I don't know if it's a tap on the table from Mark or a banging on the table. I think, you know, he got away with that. <laughs> yeah, there it is again. Just caught it a hair thin. Fortunate. First, first frame today, Mark Williams. That outrageous fluke, didn't he? Made full advantage of it, so take everything you can get because it won't last. This John Higgins gonna finish. Well, he, he'll be actually very relieved that it's caught the blue full. Still on for John, though. Yeah, it was just off straight, but just did the wrong side of it. And as you say, if that red doesn't catch the blue, it'd have been an absolute sitter for John to start this visit. But it's not. Take a good pot here. It's actually, I mean, this is a tough pot, but for a perfect, it's actually quite a nice shot to play. Screwing back, you, you know that you're guaranteed being on something. Can he find one from here? Oh, not quite close. Mm. And Mark can get through to this red. He's not refused much. It's a thin cut. Yeah, no hesitation at playing it, and he's got a nice angle on the blue. Yeah, he 
made that look easy, but that was exceedingly dinky. If the black is available, Six. pink's a bit congested. Oh, obviously, the black is available. Seven. And it looks to have landed on it absolutely perfect. Just a little screw back play for the red that's just to the right of the black. Fourteen. The standard. Fifty. It's unbelievable. I don't mind telling you. My heart is leaping with joy watching this. This is just the best thing. How can you look so cool out there? Mm, just wanted to be a bit straighter on this red. Maybe able to run through, nudge the red below the pink and beyond the pink. Played it nicely. 21. <laughs> oh, going a bit Mark Williams slow walk. This is when he needs it. 27. All about composure now. Another 43 points required from this position. It's not a formality by any means. Nothing is at this stage of the competition. Twenty. while you're at the table, it's in your hands. A bit concerned. He wants to play for one of those three reds in the opposite corner, but he feels that if he plays a stun to come off the side cushion, if he stuns it too much, he might flick one of the reds and be on nothing. And he's not happy about it. He's now thinking of the alternative of, well, potting the black and playing a red to the middle, but that wouldn't be easy, It'd be missable. But that's the decision. They didn't quite grip the cue ball as intended there. I don't know if we can 43. run this through for pink. I think it's back for black, so that makes the middle pocket a bit smaller, playing it at pace. Oh, she stroked it home. Not that he's lost the cue ball though. How brave is he going to be playing this with check to get the cannon? Nope. Thank you. Mark Williams, 44. Yeah, and that's what happens, you see, the, the tough red in the middle. He had to make certain of the pot, and he didn't get good position on the black, and as Alan said, he had to play that with right-hand side to get the cannon. 
OK, he may not have left anything. John Higgins looking whether he could play this along the top cushion and going off the black. But John will just be glad to get back to the table with the chance. Yeah, I, I actually have fancy this. Two ways of getting it. Damage has he done? Well, it looks like it could be plenty. Mm. You know, when we look from the back of the pocket, it wasn't a certain enough to black, was it? Yes, yeah, you're right, John. There was a little bit of the jaw still there. If the black had been closer, obviously it'd have gone in off it. So Mark Williams made the mistake One. and didn't have to do anything to come back to the table with a chance now to clinch the frame. Talk about the the changes that Mark Williams made technically in the last year, eighteen months. This is where this is where he'll get the payoff. Six. He made a conscious commitment in the pursuit of excellence, as Mark. Change can be a frightening prospect, Seven. but this afternoon he has been excellent. Just want to put the finishing touches to the session. Red colour red would be enough to go into the final session this evening with a five frame 14. lead. But when John Higgins lost the first four today, you felt, well, it might even be over in this session. He's pr produced some tremendous snooker. 20. To hang on in there. And who's to say, Alan, if he came out Thank tonight and won the first four, as well as done, and he's quite capable of doing it, he's proved that. He's up for the fight. If I had one little criticism, and I'm not being too harsh on John, he's come out with the attitude, I'm going to go for anything I see. And maybe that one was just pushing the ball out too far, that trying to. Play the red in off the black. But we can all be clever in hindsight. 34. Yeah, the handshake will come oh, now. It's a great session of snooker. John Higgins on the comeback trail, but Mark Williams takes the last of the session and he goes in tonight with a 15 frames to 10 lead. Well, not since Ray Reardon in 1978 that we had a world champion in their 40s crowned at the Crucible. Age is just a number, of course, and the only number that counts tonight is 18. And it's an all-star cast out there and in the commentary box as well with world champions Ken Doherty and Dennis Taylor. Good evening to you. Good evening, Hazel. Good evening, everyone. What an incredible introduction that was to these two brilliant former world champions. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Frame 26, John Higgins to break. And it's John Higgins who gets the first frame this evening underway. Needs to get a good start. And straight away he's left a possible long red for... Mark Williams, who has potted so many like this throughout this final. Oh, didn't get close to that one. You could expect a little bit of an edgy start with all that introduction and the atmosphere, well, Ken. I'll tell you what, Dennis, I don't know how the boys are feeling, but the hairs on the back of my neck are standing up, that's for sure. What an atmosphere we have in here tonight. Nothing like it. Bank Holiday Monday, the final of the World Championship. And two great champions battling it out.
this red definitely pots Dennis to the left hand middle pocket and Mark Williams lived out one of the best middle pocket players that we have in the game and there you see another example of a well, better shot he played not nice on the black but have a look at the angle here brilliant well, that was difficult. The black is equally as difficult. No, is it? No. It looked as if oh, it might drop. Cleared to just float the black in at one stage. Mark thought it was going to drop. Wasn't comfortable, so the best thing is to get up and then get back down on the shot. Make sure your mind is clear. He needs a good start, and he's got the first opportunity here. Yeah, he needs a fast start from John Higgins here. He's going to have a chance of clawing his way back into this final. I'm easily taking the aggressive shot, and that's worked out a treat. Great shot. Big target, the Reds, of course. But Eight. Still, good aggressive opener. Split the pack nicely on the red. He's got a red into the left center pocket as well. And go up for the pink or blue here. Nine. Once again, gets up off the shot and clears his mind. Oh, the cannon. Well, it's not too bad. He's a bit close to this red. It could have been nicer than this. He wanted a fuller 50. contact on those reds that he cannoned into. If anyone could come back from this deficit, it's the man you're watching at the table here. Yeah, there was one magnificent clearance he made earlier when he was 65 behind. He made a 72 clearance. 21. And kept him alive in this match. And as you said, Dennis, he's done it before. He did it against Judd Trump. 11-9 down, came back to win 13-12. A quarter final. 22. Yeah, in fact, it showed that at the top of the show where Mark Williams made 60 and mm. was unlucky and slapped the table. Very rare for him, but he knew that John was going to clear up. He just sensed it. Still 28. Not exactly in prime position. Okay, he's got this red into the bottom right hand corner pocket. May stay on the pink or go for blue. There's a choice. 29. And that's perfect. You've got the three reds and then the two reds, and I think he's got the angle on the pink to leave that, if not the other two to the left of the pink are also available. Yeah, he's dead straight, so he can't get to those two that are just to the left of the black. So just a fraction either way, it would have been straightforward here.
36. Now I hear a pin drop in the Crucible Theatre. Both players got a standing ovation when they were introduced. 43. 54. You see 50 ahead. He's just checking the scores there. He's working out the mathematics. He needs a three reds with colors. Just to 52. put the frame beyond his opponent, Mark Williams. And it all came from that wonderful black into the pack. Just to split the reds, lovely. A nice controlled shot. Aggressive shot, but very controlled. And this break has been exceptional. Here you go. Here's the shot again. Look at this. Nicely into 59. the pack, a little bit of side, just to brush off it and stay on that red just below it. 60. Well, we have said for years that John Higgins has got the best snooker brain in the game, and he proved it there with that shot you've seen when potting the black. Because it's paved the way to giving him this opening frame, just this red needed for the start that the 66. wizard of wish I was after. 67. And there's the Higgins family there. They know this is far from over. They know their dad can come back. And there's the score. 73 ahead. That black will stop Mark 74. Williams. 74. Even contemplate and come back to the table should John Higgins miss, but John just making sure the score is there. Seventy-five. Oh, that's a wonderful shot. And we said that John needed a fast start. Oh, it doesn't get much faster than this. Possibilities of a century now in the first frame. 82. John's had 10 83. centuries so far. Mark Williams, 11. 82. We've had 82 centuries so far. 86 is the record. But will he be able to get the century? Needs a good angle on the colour to get to the last difficult red. 89. Yeah, it's not a natural angle to cannon the red, so. 89. He'll be faced with a tough. Final red. Ninety six. Ninety seven. What a start for the Wizard of Wishell. <laughs> Opening frame. And there's Oliver there with 10 up for his dad. 104.
106. John Higgins this can. It's fantastic. Absolutely. Top quality from a great champion. 109. And he's playing a great champion as well. And I have a lot of respect for each other. But this is Sean Bottle. And courage and all his glory here. 130. Just exactly what Higgins and his family and all the supporters would have wished for this start. 118. And look at the break there, a yellow, a green, a brown, three blues, four pinks, eight blacks. He's been all over the table. And, and everything's been going right in the centre of the pocket. What a way to start the session. John Higgins plays the table with a magnificent break. You can't do much about that. He needed a good start, and he's got it. He's pulled the frame back. 15-11. Wow, and as we uh, start the final session after 17 days, uh, confectionery fueled like Mark Williams yesterday. Mm. Are our two world champions <laughs> here, uh, Steve and John. John's got to win 8-2 this evening. Every long journey starts with the first step. What a step. Brilliant, absolutely, and that's as good as he's hit the ball in the final. That was a wonderful break. His cue ball control was absolutely immaculate. That's the start he was looking for this afternoon when Mark Williams flicked the red in the first frame and he didn't get, and after then, Mark Williams took over. But that's a great start. How much do you think that nerves from the Welshman are going to play a big part this evening? Uh, well, if he's given enough chances, he may be able to get over the line very easily, but it's down to John Higgins to make sure that Mark has to work for it. But interestingly, that's the first time John Higgins in this match has won the opening frame of a session. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, he's got the upper hand. Can he capitalise on it? Because sometimes, regardless of the scoreline, you can get your opponent cold uh, on the table, on the, on the session. So it's now John Higgins' job to try and just sort of, like, press on. Not easy, you never know where the balls go. He's made four centuries, Mark Williams has made one. This is an absolutely top-class quality final. Oh, you, right the way through, it's been, every session has been fantastic. Mark and, Williams you know, don't kid yourself, because one's 42 and one's 43, they can't play. This has been wonderful stuff. Right, they go. Oh, well, just what Mark Williams didn't want. That will unsettle them slightly. Just take a seat there, please. Maybe just somebody come on back just into the seat. Just, just maybe cut his eye. Referee, just Brendan Moore, just directing a member of the audience into the seats. Now, does this black pot into the bottom left-hand corner pocket? John Higgins is coming around just to have a quick look at it. I don't think it does, so let's go up. Or a ball colour off this red. Good shot. <laughs> As we saw what? from that last camera angle, Dennis, at least the red just above the black to the left will pot into the left hand corner pocket. I think he just hit this one a little too hard because the pink was available there. I'm sure John was trying to get on the pink. Not the best in the world with the rest, John. John Higgins one. Previously, that the black didn't go, so I don't think the red goes. Maybe the red does pot. We'll find out shortly because the white's coming up towards it. Needs to pull up though, and I think he's just about perfect on it. Four.
five. Well, he's played for the pink here. I'm, I'm not quite sure where he'll go into the pack from here. May just get onto the loose red below the black forest. Well, he's tried to bring the reds into play. <laughs> It didn't look possible, but what a wonderful shot he's played there. Lots of top spin. 11. Well, that was a magnificent 12. shot there. Get on that red now, just below the black, into this bottom right-hand corner pocket. The one thing about Mark Williams, Dennis, no matter what you throw at him, he still looks as cool Thanks. as a cucumber around the table. He's got such a wonderful languid style, never phased. 20. Yeah, one of the best temperaments. You could wish to see nothing phases this Welshman. It's not bad. I think you can get onto the pink off this. Just come across the table. It's awkward queuing, but he doesn't have to hit this too hard. Might be the 28. wrong side of the pink, but the yellow's off at spot, so that helps the situation. Or he could go between green and brown, just depends how he feels. But with the yellow not being there, <laughs> it was a good target, but he's a bit too hard. He needs a good kiss here. And I don't think he's had it. 34. Yeah, put in a little bit of a quick one there. Very, very pacey on the cue ball. May have found a plant here into this right-hand centre pocket. Well, if he has, well, what a shot. <laughs> 35. Well, you're very fortunate, it has to be said. He said he didn't spot that before he played the pink, but that was a bonus. It's amazing. He thought he was out of position and then had a glance. 42. And he, he found the plant. Fifty. Fifty-one. I might be a little bit straight on the black, but there's a red in the middle of that little bunch of five that will pot. Yeah, he is dead straight. Oh, I missed the yellow of the rest, but I detected possibly that the rest head might have just moved 58. a little. Yeah, it moved to the side slightly. We were talking about that the other day, and Steve Davis was saying, you know, they used to have little, little cups on it, you know, to prevent that. This is a big shot into the left centre. That's why Mark has just taken his time. If he gets this, he should win the frame. Normally, so good into this middle pocket. Normally so good, but always he knew the importance of it and just look at what is left. That was frame ball basically, and that's why he just hesitated a slightly. Now, unfortunately, Mark Williams has come back and left a sitter for John. One. The red that's close to the pink spot, I'm sure it pots into this bottom left-hand corner pocket. John could possibly play a cannon here. 
And it's got a red that's available into the same pocket as the black as well. Decided against the little cannon and played for that red just below the pink spot. Just let the Eight. white run away a little bit. You could see by his expression and he didn't get on the red as he wanted. Just let it run away a little further than he intended. Nine. But look at the reds now. <laughs> well, could he possibly pinch this frame? You never know. Perfect position. 16. Play for the blue here. 17. The blue will go on the pink spot. And play for the red just above the blue to the right. He's got two reds there into the same pocket, so he doesn't have to play any more cannons. 22. So you could play for the middle red here, you can pot that, and, or you could play for the bottom red, middle red, and then maybe blue again. <coughs> 23. Well, I know he's maybe five pots away from getting on that yellow. That is going to be key by the looks of things here. To be able to pot, he's now looking down the table, working the score out. He's already thinking how he's going to get on the yellow to then get him to the green. <coughs> yeah, and the reason he was then is because he's holding the pink spot here, which means the blue will go up onto the yellow spot. And that will certainly help the situation. 28. Probably contemplating about six shots ahead there. He was worried if he, the blue stayed on the pink spot, brown to blue, and a possible clearance would have been a bit more difficult because blue would have been on the pink spot. So very, very clear and positive thinking there from John Higgins. Thirty-five. A couple of shots from here, John will be working out if he can get the white somewhere near there. He could pop the yellow and screw back for the green, but he, he's got to negotiate this red, first of all. Now, has he got the angle to get over somewhere near to where I said? He's a bit straight on the brown to do it. I don't think he can now. I think it's going to be change of plan. It would have to be the green to leave the yellow. And Mark Williams knows that this frame is far from over here. Can't get as close to the yellow as he would have liked. Well, he's forced it round. If he misses the blue, he's got a chance. And he's got, he's got on that spot. OK, he's near the cushion. 40. Mm. Such a difficult pot on that yellow, but didn't get the desired screw back. This is very dangerous. He's got it. He's got it. He's still got it. Another. Keeps having a look at the scores, but he needs brown, blue, pink, and black. Everything in the moment going into the heart 49. of the pocket. What a wonderful positional shot. Now, one more. He's played quite a lot already in this break, Dennis. He needs one more from blue to pink. Look at the side spinning the 54. white towards the pink. 
two more pots and two incredible frames he's played. Mark Williams had a red 60. on 58 into the left centre, one he's normally very proficient at. Left the red for John Higgins. This is the response. And it's a fantastic response. John Higgins has won the opening two frames. It looked for all money it was Mark Williams' frame. He's very disappointed. John Higgins cuts the deficit, but it's still Mark Williams, 15. John Higgins, 12. That might be the score, Ken, but we have ourselves a final, boys. What a clearance. Wow. John Higgins just trying to throw a hand grenade into <laughs> Mark, Williams, Mark Williams' brain there. <laughs> wow. I mean, how's he feeling? It's the worst feeling in the world when somebody comes back here that strong. What a clearance. One of the best we've ever seen. And the green, particularly, was the shot for you guys? Well, the yellow was good anyway, just to get there off it, but then to, to play this across the table thin and straight in the middle of the bag. But the whole thing pays with it. I mean, the circumstances, that is an unbelievable clearance. And you asked me this afternoon, you said, is this match, can John Higgins win this match? And I went, no. Could have changed my mind. Yeah, well, well, certainly, it's <laughs> your prerogative. Because, honestly, those two frames he's played there, there's two as, as good as he's played in the entire match. We've talked about huge comebacks at the Crucible. Are we in for something dramatic and spectacular this evening? Maybe. Maybe, but, I mean, Mark Williams has got great resolve, mm -hmm. uh, but he's going to have to need all of it because uh, you know, as those frames start to slowly slip away, it's easy to panic out there. And we've seen plenty of people panic in finals at the Crucible. We have, John. And actually, it reminds me of what he said after that semi-final against Barry Hawkins. He said, I don't want to play snooker feeling like that. I didn't like it. We were gone. That was horrible. I wonder how comfortable he's feeling with John Higgins on his tail now. Yeah, not great after that clearance. When you've seen him play two immaculate frames like that, it does start to get worried. But the one thing I, I said this afternoon, I mean, is John Higgins is to play brilliant and he's going to need a bit of help and a mate and it was an unbelievable clearance but he got a bit of help because mark williams John missed the red in the middle ready. it's boiling up nicely isn't it on this really hot bank holiday monday night can you just check the volume on your earpieces please if one or two of them are a bit loud in this area thank you better break off this time from john no pot available just Sending the red back up the table. Oh, we said John Higgins had got to play a no-miss snooker. He hasn't missed a thing so far this evening. One of the best clearances right up there with the top clearances at the Crucible. And there's been a few of those over the 41 years we've been here. Look at the pot success rate for this fourth session, 98%. Well, that was uh, pretty poor from John. Not sure what he was trying. Well, he was just trying to send the red past the blue. Not easy to drop nicely on a colour and with the cue ball tight on the cushion. And after seeing what's happened in the last two frames, that was a big question mark being asked of Mark Williams here. One. That was the problem there, getting onto a colour. Oh, what a shot that is. What a cracking pot that is under the circumstance. <laughs> well, Dennis, I mean, that was so courageous. Particularly as he missed a Seven. much easier red into the opposite middle in the last frame, but that really was. Nice. Really took a lot of courage. Eight.
I know. As we're talking about. Fifteen. A bit of help in the last frame, John Higgins, but what a magnificent clearance. I don't think 60. Mark Williams <coughs> will bottle it. I think if anything that John Higgins will throw them, he will definitely respond. John Higgins is just going to have to play no Miss Snooker, I think, to win this final tonight, Dennis. But I don't think 23. Mark Williams will bark at the prospect when he gets closer to the winning line. That's what makes it so fascinating. 24. Well, he just missed a shot similar to that in the last frame, and John made that incredible clearance. So he hasn't done much wrong, Mark. Thirty-one. And we mustn't 32. forget he still has a three-frame advantage, so looks totally relaxed again. He always does. Thirty-nine. Thanks. Forty. Quite sure he's got enough angle to go into the reds here. He still has that loose red, of course. Tried to force it in. Would have loved to have had a better angle on that cue ball. Now, is he on this red at the bottom of the pack? 47. Body language would suggest not. Yeah, he played the split very well. Bit unlucky to leave absolutely nothing on. Played it with lots of side. You can see the white arcing. If anything, it just arced a little too much for him. Mark Williams, 47. Just enough room to pass the brown and catch the edge of the reds. <coughs> Come up a little bit short. I'm not sure if Mark can get through to the potting angle. No, not of that one. But he might clip this other one in, playing a safety shot into the right corner. Now he just played the straightforward safety shot, but where's the cue ball going to finish? In quite an awkward spot. What's the player's view? See, he doesn't have anything to go into this bottom right-hand corner pocket, but he's got to be very careful, very difficult to play a safety shot from in the jaws of the corner pocket. Yeah, very difficult indeed. Now, what's he left? The red doesn't pot past the yellow, but he has left the red into this left-hand corner pocket, left of the black. Not very straightforward, this off the cushion. This takes excellent queuing. I mean, he, he struck that beautifully. I thought it was in. He'd give it every chance from that awkward position with the cue ball on the cushion and. Got to be a little bit careful with this one. He's got to get a little bit of work on it. Probably leave the black into the same pocket. He's got to come around the right-hand side of the black as we look at it. And he's played it well. Could 
Could he do it again? 47 behind when he came to the table. We certainly strutting around the table with a lot more purpose. There's no doubt about that. He's got a bit more of a spring in his step than he did this afternoon. Looks a lot more confident, John Higgins. He's one of those players that you don't want them coming back at you, Dennis. You know, he's, he's done it so many times in the past. And Mark will be aware of that. But he's going to have to keep going to the well. It just depends on how much he has left in that tank. Yeah, he didn't pop the black cleanly. That's why he's having to use the rest. It wobbled a couple of times before it went in the black. Angle to go into them here, I don't think. Just playing for the loose red. It's come up a little bit short. 16. with the blue being off at spot it would be the one in a couple of shots time he'd want to play into the five reds and pink off just spotted something on the cue ball there referee Bren Moore local boy doing his second final here at the crucible Just having a look at the angle on the red. Will he play for the blue, Dennis, 19. or will he play for possibly one of the ball colours? Ideally, he'd love to be able to pot that blue, as you said, and go in off one cushion into that. Big target, you'd have to say, with the pink and the five reds. Just needs a good angle, though, after potting this red and one of these colours. So it's going to be in the green, and if he catches this right, that could really open the game up. Yeah, the only problem about coming this side is that the angle is not as good. Well, that's what he's looking for there, if he can judge it. 19. And that could have worked out a treat. <laughs> <laughs> what a shot. Slightly lesser target than he would have had on the other side, but couldn't have worked out better. The red in the middle of the the bunch below the pink, just as we look at this green again. Didn't catch the pink full ball, that's what he was hoping for. But nevertheless, got a good contact on the reds. And just signs that the run of the ball is going with John. He had a bad run of the ball earlier in this final 31. where things were going wrong and little nudges were putting him out of position. 32. Well, this is just a, been an unbelievable start here. John Higgins still got a bit of work to do, though. The middle red does pot. When potting this. Would love to just brush off the red below the pink and bring that into play as well, if he has an angle. 39. Maybe able to stun this red in, just slightly edge the red, just the right of the below the pink. Just coming around to see does that red actually pot, so he may not need a little cannon on it. If it doesn't, I'm sure he has a slight angle. Yeah, 
Yeah, nice little angle, and he's played it perfectly. The clearance is on now. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. Well, he hasn't placed the best safety shot. We show you that that was a tough shot that he almost knocked that in. But meanwhile, John has just let the cue ball slip away. Everything has been inch perfect, and that little smile tells you. Right, here we go with the rest. He's missed a few with the rest. He wouldn't be the most confident rest player up the top, and he doesn't like it. He's got to play not only pot the pink, but he's looking at the, the cannon towards the knocking into the red and knocking this red towards the bottom left hand corner pocket and a lot can go wrong with this particular shot he doesn't like it well if you're not comfortable don't play it i mean he can get there from the green i think but he knows the easier positional shot is the pink but Something else, the Wizard of Wishaw. That wand is certainly waving some magic this evening. Well, he's played some magnificent shots already. 52. These opening frames, but none better than that, Dennis, for sure. The green in the previous frame was very, very good. But that, I think, surpasses it. Just checking on the score. He's five ahead. Green puts some eight, so he's going to need yellow, green, brown, and blue. 55. We said he had to play no Miss Snooker, Dennis, and that's exactly what he's producing at the moment. Yeah, Mark Williams can't do anything about this. He's made very few errors. And all he has to do is leave the white with the brown is more or less. Because he only needs the blue. 64. Amazing stuff from John Higgins this Six evening. Wow. Smiles all around from the Higgins family. shaping up as a final for the ages. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> oh. Extraordinary stuff from John Higgins. Now, he's found the champion's gear, and how often has he managed to find that gear in the past? In, he's, he's done it here against Judd Trump uh, two rounds ago. That's, this is better than that. 
Uh, and you know, honestly, this, this is much better than that. He's been 58 behind, cleared up. He's 47 behind there, cleared up. Started off with the century. I mean, honestly, you cannot play better than he's playing. And he's playing in those frames from behind and got to make those clearances. Mm. And some of the shots he's playing, the shot off the green to the, the last green. red. The yeah. green is just amazing. I mean, like, it didn't really look on. He just got the stun right and he just slid off that third, uh, second cushion to be absolutely perfect on the red. Just, it's like... Explain the degree of difficulty of that shot. Well, it would have been, it would have been easy to have, have got the... It's between, it's between a topspin shot and, and, and too much of a stun. If you stunned it too much, the white will be down, wouldn't be too far down the table. If it's just pure topspin, it's going to collide with one of the bolt colours. So you had to get just the route, right, right amount of between top and middle. And uh, it just reminds me... Well, I don't know, we've all seen the film Terminator. <laughs> the relentlessness of somebody coming at you all the time. That must be what Mark Williams is feeling at the moment. You'd think so, too. Um, I remember John Higgins saying after he won the Welsh that there's nothing he enjoys better than the fight out there. It's like he can't get that feeling, that adrenaline fueled I want to be sick feeling out there, but he thrives in the pressure situation. You're not supposed to get better when it gets worse. <laughs> right. And that's exactly what he's doing. I mean, the heat has turned up right on him there, and he just keeps finding someone. I should never have doubted him, honestly. I should <laughs> never. I'm sitting there thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to give myself a little smack in the face for saying he couldn't <laughs> win, because, yeah, I, I'm Honestly, because this is phenomenal. Yeah. And what a final these two boys are throwing up here. OK, well, he was seven frames behind. This man was seven frames ahead at 14-7. And there were some people saying, well, it could actually end this afternoon with a Thank session of spear. Not a bit of it. We're back Mark to Williams two. To break. The stuff we've been treated to this evening, and I'm sure it's going to get better without a doubt. What, what a huge frame now coming up! Last frame, of course, before the mid session interval. Mark Williams went out just to compose himself. 99 pot success for John Higgins in the last three frames 88%, which is still quite high for Mark Williams. He hasn't done much wrong. Just missed two, one red to left middle, one difficult red off the right-hand side cushion in the last frame. But then this, this last frame before the mid-session interval, huge for Mark Williams. That little flick on the brown there has left John with a chance to put Mark in a spot of bother. It would have been safe and this shot wouldn't have been available to him. Well, that seemed to spring off the cushion or else it was a bit of adrenaline because he didn't want to leave it right in the jaws of the pocket, but He had to be a little bit careful. He didn't leave it sort of towards the brown because of a possible pot into the left corner, the one that John can't see enough of. Mm, he's just got to be careful. He knows that there's also always a possibility of a red going towards this left-hand corner pocket. Doesn't want to leave it close to it. He's a good cue ball. That was played. He came up and worked it out. I was just about to say, I think he's got a possible unusual plant. One red onto the other and then in off the other one. That's exactly as he played it. Green ball. Yeah, John Higgins won. certainly did come down to have a look at a very low percentage shot, but you saw where the cue ball was. Making sure his priority was a good length of the cue ball and safety. He's got a nestle into these reds just below the pink here. He's got to be careful. Doesn't slide by it. Mm. Foul and a miss. John Higgins, foul. I think John will be putting them back. It's 
too risky to go for that red into the bottom right hand corner pocket. And it is. Yeah, you said, Ken, it's a massive frame, this, for the mid-session interval. It really is. And I just have a sneaky feeling this could turn out to be one of the all-time great finals. having to keep the white over that side of the table because of the red that could go into the left corner there, the one to the left of the two that's together. frame goes awkward and it turns into a bit of a scrappy frame. Mark Williams won't mind that. Well, that red that I mentioned John can see enough of it this time, but where would the position come from? See, that's the sh red I was talking about. Big shot this. on the pink as well. Lovely kiss off the red on the way back. Have a look at this. Seven. Eight. Well, you could see the determination in John Higgins' eyes there when he was down on that shot. 30. Forty. Wanted to be straighter on this pink into the right centre pocket. A slight little grimace from John Higgins. Awkward queuing. Yeah, it's a, a mini slip up, uh, just the position shot there. He's been perfect so far this evening. Always had this red on the, over the left hand centre pocket. 20. Well, he's just got to be careful with the cue ball here as we see the points scored. Look at that. 1,572 points scored against 1,571 for Mark Williams. Amazing. Just got to be careful it comes through 21. the gap for yellow or green. 
and he's played that perfectly. Beautiful shot. Nicely on the choice. Have a look at the cue ball here. Played between the yellow and brown. It's perfect. He's cueing ever so well, Dennis. Everything is going into the center of the pocket. He's got the cue ball. 24. Tight control. Twenty-five. Well, this gentleman has done precious little wrong this evening. His opponent is just playing no miss snooker. I was talking to a lady back at the hotel and she said, oh, I've got a ticket for this evening, but there might be no snooker. <laughs> I bet she's sitting in the crucible somewhere enthralled in this. Yeah. 32. Might have got a heavy contact there, just looking where the cue ball's finished. Just a slight kick. As you can see. I mean, this is quite amazing because he lost seven frames in a row. How many players would have come back from that? He's blessed with tremendous temperament as well as ability, of course. That's why he's won this beautiful trophy there, right behind them, four times. Looks like he's nicely on the black and that was well played. He put that cue ball in a position that he'd always be on the pink to the right centre, but just have a look at the gap he's got between the reds for the black. Inch perfect. Uh, this is going to be a tester if he's going to take the red along the cushion. I think 46. the other one cuts in, which would be lower risk. He's looked at them both. And he's going to take the other one rather than risk the red along the cushion. I think he was hoping to catch the red. 47. He thought it was an automatic cannon onto the red and he had have finished on pink or blue. Well, it'll have to be the snooker. Yeah, just misjudged that one. As he potted that, he thought, I'm bound to cannon the red, and he didn't. Well, it be an interesting choice of shot, shot here. He's got a 52-point lead. Does he put a colour safe? Does he play the snooker? He puts a colour safe and tries to play the snooker at the same time. John Higgins, 47. Didn't get the snooker, yeah. Mm. Lovely touch there from Mark Williams came to the table and tapped the table in appreciation. It's played in a magnificent spirit this final, Dennis, from two great champions who are under the extreme pressure. Yeah, we've seen them so relaxed before they're introduced, chatting, smiling to each other, but the utmost respect for each other.
And what he'll be hoping to do here is also knock the black safe, and surely the red won't go in off the black. Well, that's the worst possible outcome for John there. He put the brown safe and immediately he's knocked it back off the cushion. Mm, let's just look at where he's left the cue ball. Look how long it is since he's potted the ball. 26 and a half minutes. That was the reason for the miss. He hasn't had any table time this evening, and that wasn't a straightforward pot near the cushion again. He was knocking those in earlier in the final, but he's been put under extreme pressure here. One. Yeah, never an easy shot. Anywhere close to the cushion normally. So good off the cushion, but as you said, that extra pressure makes a big difference. And of course, the table time, Dennison. Eight. Well, John couldn't have asked for a better four frames. He did a fast start, as we said, at the Nine. beginning of this final session. Fast start, but 60. the way he did it, Ken. 131 break. That set a stall out. 70. And after that, he's been immaculate. 99% for four frames. Pot success rate. Mm, incredible. <coughs> 24. He's been asked a lot of questions during this final, but he's 25. come up with all the answers so far, and particularly the last four frames. Mark Williams, the interval will come at a good time for him. He'll go back to his dressing room and regroup, there's no doubt. 31. No, we have a final on now, Dennis. 32. Definitely have the final on. One of the best that this wonderful theatre has been blessed with. The standard has been exceptional. 39. And the John Higg Higgin special, one of his doubles. Well, the double doesn't go in, but he won't be worried. The four time world champion wins all four frames so far in this evening's final and he cuts the deficit to one but it's still the twice world champion mark williams from wales still leading by one 15 frames to 14. so how much mileage is left in this year's final quite a bit it would appear we are about to find out in the company of stephen hendry and john virgo what a night guys absolutely hazel everybody was thinking would it go past the interval John Higgins has been absolutely superb in the first four frames. <laughs> well, a lot of people laughing and what have you, but Mark Williams has got a serious head Thank on you, now, frame Stephen. 30. John Higgins to break. success John Higgins for the last four frames John Higgins has been at 99 percent
type of shot we're used to seeing Mark Williams roll in. There you go, he knew that, well, he felt the only red he could leave was the one he was playing. And he may well have left that red. Yeah, it's uh, at this part of the proceedings, it's, it's skill, skill almost goes out the window. It's purely who can handle it. <laughs> who can play these final few frames as if it means nothing. Yeah, and John Higgins, when he dropped seven frames behind at one stage, every time he come, came to the table, he was looking for a pot. Now he's closed the gap. I wonder if his tactics might just change a little. And that's a handy rattle in the jaws. Yeah, I think the one thing Mark Williams can take, he hasn't really done a lot wrong in the first four frames. OK, he missed a red to left middle. But John Higgins has just been magnificent. <laughs> Cracking safety shot there from John. And... Giving Mark a problem, it's very congested down the left-hand side of the table as we look. If he's trying to get back to Bork, he needs to hit this well. That's his view, as you see from his point of view, the left-hand side of the table is all blocked. And as I say, very congested down the other side. Plenty of thought, and I don't blame him. Can't really see a containing safety. Sometimes the player will try to nestle the cue ball near this top cushion, but it's not easy to see how he can do that. I guarantee not leaving anything. But he's trying. Well, he's going off, I suppose. Fun. John Better Higgins the cue ball in the pocket and staying on the table. <coughs> Just coming round, John, to see... If he plays this pot to the left corner, he can find a path for the cue ball back out into the middle of the table. You sit still, please. It's one of those, if you get near the pot, you might find the gap. If you miss the pot, you could run into other reds. But he got the pot, run into another red, but he's nicely on the paint to the middle. But shot mm. wow. John Higgins one that's the first sign of well, the cue ball may have jumped a little bit so maybe we have to give John the benefit of the doubt we had a look into the audience Really love to win a frame in one visit now, Mark Williams. 
Yeah, and you just saw, and that's the anomaly of snooker. Over 35 minutes since he last posted a ball, and he's wrong side of the blue. <laughs> and John Higgins, when he missed that pink in the middle, immediately Six. looking up in the crowd, and maybe there's a slight movement, just caught his eye line. Take it into the well, we're looking for Mark's extension for his cue. Leo, just get someone to go and check the dressing room, see if his extension's in there. If he doesn't find it, we might need an extension. <laughs> so, full stretch. But then it goes, and this Seven. time he gets the right side of the blue. Maybe a little bit too much angle. Yeah, by stretching out so much, he lost control. That's why he's gone too far. You have to use the bunch just to kill the pace of the cue ball, if anything. Mm, that's, that's okay. He went down to him so softly, I thought maybe he was going to stick on the first red. Twelve. Well, he made certain he wasn't low on the blue, but he's on a bought colour. <laughs> it's going to be very difficult to win the frame in one visit, particularly at the moment with the pink 15. and black out of commission. 16. Twenty-one. Seems to have a nice angle on the green, but all these reds seem to be covering one another. And the distance the cue ball is going to be travelling is going to be very precise here. Play for the red near the top cushion. Well, I don't know whether the flick has helped him. He doesn't want to be too straight on this red. Getting down quick, he must have a slight angle. And he has. 26. Well, he couldn't have put that better with his hand. He may choose to play a cannon. If he takes the cue ball down in virtually a straight line, he's looking at the red. Virtually over the, the pink spot. The red is to the right of the black. If he has full ball cannon on that, well, it just opens up the frame. Perfect. Yes, and now he can get the black into play. And now 32. he can win the frame at this visit. I'm not sure if the black will go in its own spot. He'd love it to go in the pink spot. I was always concerned about that cannon. Well, the black does go on the pink spot. I think he's 39. got a straight red into the right middle. So it's OK. Four. 
40. Just a fraction short of pace. Yeah, he's going to have to play this with a touch of left hand side, which makes the black missable. Yeah, well played. <laughs> Didn't put a loads of side on. He wanted to make sure he put it to black. 47. Oh. Consequently, he's further away from this red. And again, the positional side of the shot is not straightforward. Mm, just lost control of the cue ball the last two or three Williams, shots. 47. And paid the price. So sometimes it's so difficult. It takes you a good few shots to get back in perfect position. Yeah, and I think he chose that red because he felt he had more control of the cue ball. He's not left anything at this end, though. Only the red on the ball line for John to have a go at. Beautifully. Just ran past the red. <laughs> if it had nestled on, it'd have been on nothing but judged it to perfection. And Mark Williams will be suffering in his seat now. Started this evening with a five frame advantage. It's gone, almost. Five. Yeah, we're gonna see this shot that Mark Williams plays. Normally you play it with a load of left hand side. And the cue ball would check and get closer to these three reds. He, he kind of half made sure he put the black. Could have got closer to them reds. Yeah, and that's always been the case. Sometimes when you've got a tricky shot, you concentrate that much on the pot. Twelve. Sacrifice position. Yeah, it's purely pressure now. Both players will do the same thing now. It'll become a test of who's got the courage to, to still play. 13. The attacking aggressive shots. <laughs> You'd have to say on what's gone before tonight, this is, you'd be thinking, frame over. He's just 18. been clinical, John Higgins, when he's got in. Yes, still 24 points behind. Nineteen. There's the Higgins family and dear me, what are they going through? I assume the black spot still isn't available. Oh, it is. Does it affect anything? 26. No, not really. Black's available. The red just below it is. And he's got a nice angle on this red. Yeah, just wants to make sure he's in straight in the black. He doesn't want to have to play any black that he has to can in the red. And he may have to do that now. You see a wry smile. These can go wrong. A simple shot in normal circumstances. Yeah, it's a case of whether you play the stun. I used to prefer playing these with top. So you run the black in, then you run into the red. You're just going to make sure it bounces off the cushion. 19. Well controlled it nicely. He doesn't want to be wrong side of straight, though. He's having a good close look at this. 34. Well, no, the dreaded fault. Anyway, he's okay on this red now. 
straight on it, screw back for the black in the same pocket. Thirty-five. Now you feel as so though if he pots this black, which will make the scores all level, Mark Williams has got the the thought that John Higgins is going to draw level now in this match. Just wants up to and including the blue. Forty-two. your cue these positively don't decelerate on the cue and deliver in the cue it's okay Thank you. yeah in an ideal 44. world of course you'd like to have been straighter on this green 44. but dropped it in lovely 47 and just brown and blue Recovery 51. will be complete. Fifty six. What a performance from John Higgins. Tremendous, absolutely oh, tremendous. The sometimes the intervals can change. The way a match is running out so far is the same as the first four. Yeah. It's all about John Higgins. We're level, 15 all. Oh, Mark Williams has waited 15 years for a third world title. Uh, John Higgins chasing a fifth 20 years after his first. It's just levels of greatness. Where does he find it from? Where does he find this from? I mean, honestly, he looked bereft of confidence. He looked like he wasn't in involved in the match. He's got himself somehow from 15-10 back with the best snooker he's played in the entire tournament to level a 15. Where does that come from? It's as awesome a performance as I think I've ever seen here and we've seen some amazing performances yeah. and I don't say this lightly, I think John Higgins is the greatest match player the game's ever, ever seen. He's just astonishing what he could do. I know we have so many great players playing different styles but he's like a lump of granite. If he pulls this off tonight, oh. having been seven behind, it's, it's right up there among the very best performances we've ever seen. Well, you in your intro today said Mark Williams was an escapologist. This is Houdini. Okay, well, this this yeah. is Houdini to get out of this. OK, Mark Williams has failed to clinch three chances when he's been amongst the balls. He's had big leads, but usually you get away with it, but not against, against John Higgins. Mark Williams hasn't really folded. He hasn't really completely gone out there, and he finds himself from five frames in front to all of a sudden level. How does he feel? Look, he's sitting there, he looks, well, what can you do? He's like, he's, he still looks pretty calm, doesn't he? How can you be? But you see, the thing is, when the clearance is there, Hazel, every single shot is on a sixpence. There's not Thank one positional shot that's played badly. And he's under the most severe oh, yeah, pressure he'll ever be under John Higgins, but he just keeps finding. He's won five in a row. Now both men need three more to become world champion. Well, John Higgins having a look, see if he can get past the yellow for the half ball pot, but I don't think he can. Well, he thinks he can. Bend it with a little bit of left hand side. Ooh, how bad did he hit that? Well, if he's not left anything, he's been very fortunate. No, he's, he can't believe it. He's tried to play that with left-hand side and got nothing on it. What a gift. Well. Eight. Nine. Well, there's a lovely angle in the black. Miss the, the red that's closest to the black, going to the right-hand side of the bunch, screw the cue ball through them. 
He's hit it pretty good. Sixteen. Yeah, just need a little bit more backspin to develop that red. And if he'd come out a bit more, he would have been on one to the middle. I think this is a, a cut, thin one, but it does cut. Okay, he's not got the blue on his spot, but he's got the pink in open play and the black available into both corner pockets. Decent chance. 90. <laughs> 20. That. 26. Pink on the blue spot. Another 35 points needed from this position to get to snookers required. 34. I'm looking at frame times, John. There's only been one frame over 30 minutes, which you, you might have thought between these two, you get a few tactical frames, but it's been an incredible standard. Yeah, there you saw it, just over 16 minutes. The average shot time. But I think both players throughout this final have set the stall out. If they, if they see a red that's on, 41. they're going to go for it. Yeah, it's been proper snooker. But this is a very tough red to left middle. Yeah, you called it. They're not Paul easy, Williams, those. 41. But he's not left anything. Not nothing easy. But he'll just be... I mean, he doesn't look edgy, Mark, but it'll just be the fact he can't seem to get a frame now in one visit. You know, he's sat in his chair now fearing the worst in this frame for what's gone on so far. Obviously, Mark wants to keep those five reds in the middle of the table in that bunch, but John Higgins doesn't, so he played this a bit thicker to try and open them up, find the top cushion behind the black. Well, could have played it better, but I don't think there's anything there that will tempt Mark, and the fact he can get low on the cue ball, he can get the cue ball back to the top cushion. just looking if he plays the, the two reds in the middle of the table if he plays the bottom one 
the other one could run into the brown. But once again, you've got to get this cue ball tight to the top cushion to get any benefit. Well, it didn't run into the brown. <coughs> but he's got a good cue ball. Force into that, hand up to apologise. Been very fortunate there as Mark, not to leave anything easier than this. And John Higgins, no hesitation, sizing up this long pot. But 41 points behind, he needs to get it. Across that as well. How many times do we see it? Player makes a mistake, just had a bit of luck. And it costs you nothing and may eventually give you a chance to win the frame. I'm looking at the balls as though they've offended him in some way. But he was quite away with that. As he was with the first, the opening ready attempted that let Mark in for his break of 41. So playing this to the left middle. Played it nicely. Not good on the pick It's hard to say if, unless you're right behind the shot, but if he plays the pink, he's got to be very careful with that cue ball going close to the left corner pocket, it looks. Well, he could get the cannon. And he'll be happy with that. He was running into the red. Took a little bit of pressure off the pot. Seven. Eight. <clears throat> Looks like a natural angle, just to, the cue ball will go in between those two reds near the left cushion. Leo, a choice of two reds. A choice of three reds, in fact. But Fifteen. What a chance this is to get his first frame on the board tonight. Yeah. Because the reds are in the ball, Ken, you'd probably think three reds, three covers still needed. Sixty. Well, we mustn't think there's a problem here, potting the green. I only say that because if the green spot is available, it could tie that red up. Nineteen. As you can see, that red will still pass 20. the green into the corner. So this yellow and one more red, and it'll be snookers required, and he'll be mighty relieved to get that frame on the board this evening. This to go 64 ahead 22. with 59 remaining. <laughs> yep, he'll be very happy about that. Well, that's John Higgins sat there. 23. That's the problem when you're chasing. He's done so well to get back level, but Marlon just need that one frame and he's back in front again. That hard work from John Higgins, and he's going to start chasing again. He's going to find something again. 25. <coughs> yeah, just because you close the gap doesn't mean to say you broke the back of your opponent. It's just 
If you got back to level playing some outstanding snooker as John Higgins, can he keep it going? That's the question. His opening red in this frame was, wow, a mile away. 33. The red's not in, but that won't oh, matter. And John Higgins will stay in his seat and not the concession. So Mark Williams had a go on red and missed it. It was a bit lucky to not be John Higgins anything easier. But Mark Williams will be mighty relieved. He's got a frame on the scoreboard this evening. One ahead, 16-15. Absolutely, John. In fact, it's his first frame win since just before 5 o'clock this afternoon. A huge relief. You talk about him being such a clever player. There was a great example of that in that uh, frame, John. Yeah, there's a brilliant pot in the middle pocket here, but watch the way he plays this, Hayes. He screws the cue ball across over for the pink in the middle, but look where he's left it if he misses it. The cue ball goes tight over to the side cushion, and where he's played it and left it, the two reds are in a line there that's below it. They don't pot. So where the cue <coughs> ball's finished, it's a shot up for him on the pink, which ultimately got him over the line. But if he'd missed, there was nothing there for his opponent. It's just different. It is different. And the, the pressure dynamic is different because John Higgins has been the guy that's been chasing. He suddenly gets on terms again at 15 all. What changes? How subtle is that change, Steve? Well, it seems to happen a lot in snooker. We see it so often. Uh, and, and, and unless you're a player that completely wilt when you go behind, sometimes, in a strange way, there's less pressure on you because you've got something to aim at. And in a way, you've got nothing to lose from five frames behind, as, as John Higgins was. And obviously, the other guy has the potential to be looking over his shoulder and having negative thoughts, even though you think you should have positive ones, because nobody likes to have somebody bashing them and coming back at them. So all of a sudden, Mark Williams has been sitting there hating the fact that, uh, that John Higgins is coming back, and all of a sudden, now it's level, Mark can sort of breathe a sigh of relief in a strange way and go, OK, well, it's a fair fight now. I, I don't have a lead to protect. I can just go and play. I've got, I'm, I'm free of the shackles of the responsibility of being in front and being the favourite. And in a way, uh, despite the fact he was sitting pretty at 14-7, he must have known at some point John was going to regroup to, to some extent. He'd have a suspicion of it. That's why it's all about you doing your own job and making sure that you, you do your work. I mean, look, this is the game where if someone's got the cue ball, you sit and watch. Mark Williams is aware of that. And he Thank knows John Higgins is top class at it, so he's just trying John to do his own job. Break. OK, Mark Williams, the Welshman, is in front again. Needs two for the title. Well, possible pot to the right corner, but doesn't look as though he's got the angle just to roll it in and come off the top cushion, so may not take it on. Now just the containing safety, because if he'd have played the pot, he'd have run in the side of the reds and it would have been a dangerous shot to, to have a go at. Trying to cover the red just below the blue with the green. And he looks to have done that. This puts a little bit of pressure on Mark's safety now. Wasn't straightforward. He played it well and got a little tap on the tail from John Higgins. John trying to play a, an aggressive safety, but he needs a good cue ball. Doesn't want to leave Mark Williams with any chance of a, a pot. So he's going to judge the weight of this well. Just an ounce of pace too much. Will Mark be tempted? Because he's got a couple of pots he could have a go at here. Which would have been a lot more difficult had he been tight to the bought cushion. Hmm. Not 
quite certain what he played there, Stephen. It looked like the containing safety, but he was so far away with it. Lucky not to get the, as Dennis would say, the DDK, the dreaded double kiss. And the cue ball was on a path to the right corner pocket. Once again, John not finding the ball cushion. Makes such a difference. Ooh, so close. But if it had been tight to the cushion, he wouldn't have played that because if he could strike down, he could play it as a shot for nothing. Screwing the cue ball back to the, the ball end. Thick with that. Well, it looks like the blue has come to his rescue. There you see it. The red near the corner. The one in the middle obviously will pop, but Mark will be more concerned is not to leave this red near the corner, but potting's his game, he's taking it on. Lovely, right in the heart of the pocket, super shot. One. Stunning pot. Yeah, and it just seemed to build up with John Higgins not finding that bought cushion. And in the end, the tactical battle was won by Mark. Three. Now, can he make the most of this chance? I think the pink will pot to right corner. And obviously right middle as well. Four. at this stage. Played his normal shot, he just likes to float them in. But this was always wide. Possibly had an eye on the cue ball, took his eye off the pot. Yes, and as we always say, when you miss, when you're in, it's usually gonna cost you dear. Yeah, it was one of the reasons why Mark went well. so far in front in this match is he cut down, there was virtually no unforced errors from him. And that's what will decide this match, you feel now, who can have the least of those. When the pressure's on like this, it's about doing the easy stuff well. Making sure you don't gift your opponent Set. chances. Eight. Played that with left hand side just to check it, but because he checked it, it just didn't come off that top cushion as he would have liked. He's not perfect on this pink. Forced into playing the cannon. got the pot, he made certain of that. 14. But to release the reds and get the cue ball moving them and coming out into the open, he needed a bit more pace than that. This is a tricky pot he's gone on here, whether it's the left middle, far left corner, this left corner pocket down here. 
This isn't easy. Left middle it is. Well. John Higgins, 40. As I say, like Mark Williams before him, you know, they're, they're just getting a little bit tentative now when they're playing these shots. Yeah, it's amazing. It was played so well. I mean, the pot success was well in excess of 90% to get level, and since then, well, the pots he's missed, he's not got close to. It doesn't look a good angle, he may not even play this, although he snookered from everything else. May have to take the pot on. But from this view, Looks like there's. Oh, can he leave? Can he leave a red to right middle? Well, he feels he. Seven. By playing this, he's got a chance of this very fine cut to the right middle. And then it goes. And it's not a bad kiss on the green. Such a great potter is Mark Williams. Made that look easy. It was anything but. Yeah, the pinky dropped in as well. Sometimes when you've got a pot, when you know you're not going to be in good position for the next ball, you kind of you can almost give up on the pot. Tremendous will to win. Eleven. Mm, that's why the expression, he wanted to be straight on this red. He could roll it in and play for the pink in the opposite corner. When he pots it, he'll be running into another red. And with the blue not being on its spot, it's not straightforward. Playing for the pink to the same pocket. Twelve. Just had a look at the sidebar there. Another 40 points required to get to snookers required and one frame away from the title. <coughs> He's now potted 2,000 balls in this Betfred World Championship. 26. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Still got a bit of work to do. But certainly got the reds in a good position. But, well, I think he's okay. I think he's got this red. He's come along to look at now. 39. He'll be mightily relieved if he's on this. 
Mm. Is he on it? Looks like. Looks like he can just get through to it. And this is not a bad red to get out of the way. This was one of the more difficult reds. Yeah, I might just have to squeeze the cue ball through with some left hand side. So didn't play a great shot there in the paint. He's lucky. He was landed almost perfect on that red. John Higgins has got to go to the well again, it looks like. So there you see it, 36 ahead, 59 remaining. 46. Two reds, two high-value colours. 47. Looks to have landed perfect on the blue. Well, you have to admire the way Mark Williams has come out after 52. John Higgins got level in this match. I mean, it's just... 53. Looked serene. He's not looked under the slightest bit of pressure. Okay, he's played one or two little positional shots wrong, but generally it's been awesome. <laughs> Incredible temperament. He always has had one. Yeah, that applause. 59. 49 points the lead now. Just 43 remaining. And that means that John Higgins will not be coming back to the table. What has he got left? Got back to 15 all, but since then, as Stephen said, just seems to have, well, not struck the ball that well. I don't know why it happens. Maybe you think you've done the hard work, you're back into it. Yeah, well, I'm not saying this has happened, but it's a dangerous thing to do. Maybe you get 15, 15, you think, OK, I've got my opponent now. 67. Well, I want them, but that's a dangerous way to think. And as I said, that's a problem 68. when you're chasing. Done the hard work, got level, but Mark Williams has just found a gear from somewhere. And he's just eased away again from his opponent. 73. 75. Exactly 82. Perfect on the blue. 87. 93. Sensational. Absolutely oh, brilliant. That really was. Oh, that that was his 12th century the tournament so far, the 84th, and Mark Williams is now just one frame away from his third world title. He leads 17-15. He does, chance to follow fellow Welshman Ray Reardon as a winner in his 40s here, and he would be the first if he can get over the line here, and that's the sixth century of this incredible final. What a night we've had. Yeah, and what a magnificent performance by Mark Williams. Uh, the mental fortitude, I think, needed to, you know, to, to not wilt when the player comes back here is immense. Both these players have been magnificent. This is possibly one of the greatest finds we've ever seen. Indeed. The standard has been fantastic. It has. He, 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 pl he plays two shots here, Hazel, one after the other. This is a horrible shot. It's just off straight. You've got to drop it in. You can't do anything with the cue ball to leave himself the thin clip. Now, if you're going to twitch, this shot in the middle pocket is one you'll twitch on. And he gets down and just strokes it in, clips it, and it comes. He, he cannons the green, and it turns out to be all right for him. But what a shot. This is under the cosh. Absolutely lovely. Couldn't strike it any better.
Well, he seems to have recovered his equilibrium. He looks a lot calmer than he did sitting in his chair, clearly, a couple of frames ago. Do you know what? Both these players have been very aggressive in this match. There's been very little tip-tapping safety. Uh, Mark Williams has just really gone for it all the time. From wherever he was on the table, from the, from the side cushions, he's just remained as positive as possible, and it could get him over the line. It could get him Thank over you. the line. Thank and if it does, now, please, it would be the longest three. gap between oh, world titles ever. Good break off. happens quite often in world finals when the player gets to the stage of needing one to win it happens very often that he does do it in the following frame because he's got that momentum just get the feeling though Stephen that Mark has weathered the storm Where's the blue ball going? Well, it wasn't the best safety, knocking the blue off its spot, kissing the green. Mark gets first chance. One. Kiss on the brown would help. Well, it's OK, he's still on the blue to the middle. But he liked to kiss on the brown and cue ball not so as close as it is to the ball cushion. Yeah, the, the two reds to the left of the table. I think he can play for the choice of those to right middle. Possibly a red in between the black and the pack that'll go to right corner. So he's got an area he can put the cue ball in and have choices. Hmm. That's not good. He's going to have to find cut to the left Six. corner. And there's Mark Williams' his family. And his wife, Joe, who convinced him that he should carry on. Seven. It was a few years ago, he was thinking of giving up the game. Wasn't getting the results. And it was Joe who convinced him to have one more crack at it. And there's a beautiful positional shot. He's queuing nicely now. Well, 30. We'll play for the two reds above the black. The one closest to the black goes to the right corner. That'll clear one to the left corner. So things developing nicely for Mark. Sixty-nine points Twenty. required to be world champion. Twenty-one. Well, normally, players that one loose red immediately above the black. Just leave yourself low on that. Well, he hasn't done. Normally, you see a player leave yourself low on that and then pop that and bring other reds into play. I think he'll be going into the pack here. Well, he hasn't. He's going to take the open red. Surprises me a little bit. Will he get the chance to get a good angle again? <coughs> He's left it to the last minute. 36. Yeah, at the moment just seems to be concentrating up on building up a lead. 37. But now he has got the angle on the blue. And this could be frame and match winning shot. The blue. Pink full in the face. He's on one to the middle, he's on one to the corner. He'll settle for that. 42. Forty-three. There's no hesitation, there's no messing about here.
Just a couple of inches short. Okay. 50. Normal circumstances. Still an easy pot. Fifty-one. And just found the right angle on the blue. Needs this to run just a fraction more. He wanted to be able to get through the gap. Fifty-six. In those five reds. And Joe, well, holding a breath. And John Higgins, well, has his race been run? Fifty-seven. Finished a little bit short in the blue this time. Yeah, there was five reds in the middle. He tried to find the gap before to get through to a red to the right corner. we will be able to do that here. So, just leaving himself, well, a mid-distance red, putting lots of faith in his great potting ability. 62. Red and a colour needed. Before. Normally, when a player gets a need in one for the title, he does it in the next frame. Oh, oh, would you believe Paul it? Williams, would you believe 63. it? And the clearances we've seen John Higgins make tonight, John, this one would be monumental. Settle down, please. Thank you. Well, that's amazing. He only needed Quiet the down, pink. please. He was just trying to roll it in dead weight. He wasn't worried about position. And John Higgins gets one last chance. Well, wow. that was tough. And he knows if he misses one, that's the end of his title hopes. So much pressure. But he's been given a lifeline. Eight. Mark will be nine. Pretty much resign himself to the fact he's going to lose this frame now. That's how he'll be thinking. In the way it's gone tonight, the first four frames. Okay, you're always living hope, but he will virtually resign himself to the fact that it's going 17-16. He knows what John Higgins is like in this position, the best in the game. 17. Yeah, it's just that red that's near the right-hand side cushion that is. If it was in the middle of the table, no problem getting on it. But as you say, if he... Wins this, well, Joe can't look, but it will be a monumental 24. effort, as you so rightly said, Stephen. And this could 25. be the key shot, pot the black and get good position. Red does go to the right middle, it's an acute angle, but if he's right behind it, that's well, it's maybe just felt it was a bit risky, but what a shot he's played there! Absolutely to the inch. 32. Quick glance at the scoreboard 31 points behind, 35 remaining. Blue will do. 33. And after the blue, the six remaining colours. For remarkable clearance if it happens. Well, I was just thinking, just all that pink come back to haunt Mark Williams. Forty. Yep, he potted the red. We all thought that was the, the one that would win in this championship. Mr. Pink.
But you have 43. to say, how well has John Higgins taken these? Absolutely incredible. I mean, OK, they're all in the open. The first red was not easy. But under this pressure, to save your world title bid... 47. Just incredible. What bottle this guy's got. Fifty-two. Pink and black to keep his hopes alive. Fifty-eight. Well, you said it would be take a monumental effort, and that's what we've seen. You cannot get your oh. breath. This is absolutely astonishing. And you know what, guys? 2010 UK Championship final. John Higgins did this to Mark Williams. He needed a snooker, got it, and nicked the final frame decider. I vividly remember this. This is an extraordinary situation. An unbelievable game of snooker. I've seen so many matches, so many tournaments, thousands upon thousands of matches I've seen. I have never seen one like this. It is incredible. And Mark Williams is one pot away from winning the World Championship. Drop the pink in the corner. Just drop it in there. Even stun it in to go behind the black somehow. I know it's the wrong shot, but under the circumstances, stun it in, leave yourself bad on a red. But every single time he makes a mistake like that, John Higgins comes in under the most pressure and cleans up every time. Mark Williams hasn't got away with one all evening. The greatest final I've ever seen here. I mean, it's just incredible. John Higgins has got the heart of a lion. Mark Williams has been fantastic. I mean, how can he recover from that again? Both players have got to keep on going to the well. That's my question. He's still in front. Yeah. How does he recover from that? <sighs> You've just got to play the balls that come and go. You've got to try and clear it from your mind. If ever there was a player who can clear something from their mind, it's Mark Williams. Mm. But will he get a better chance than Stephen Hendry? That was his chance. But he has been mugged by Higgins, as I referred to earlier on. Oh, there is the Higgins clan. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, they're obviously icy cool. There's Claudia and Pierce oh, and Oliver. Oh, oh the families are going through it tonight. Well, I'm sure you're going Joe. through it at home as well, and I'm sure you're absolutely loving this bank holiday Monday night drama at the Crucible, one of the finest occasions we've ever seen. Just listen to the reception to both of these players. It's still in the balance. Thank you. Thank you. 3.34. John Higgins to break. Turn that phone off, please. Break off shot from John Higgins. Not the best one, but that's the first time I've seen two players come back in the arena in the, just near the end of a match and get a stand innovation. Oh, yeah. oh right to the heart. One. Not on the black. Mark Williams won. Well, that pot success rate for both players, when you consider they've played 33 frames, is an incredible standard. John Higgins had been so relieved when Mark Williams spotted that first red that he didn't land on the black. I think these two players, John, will be virtually immune from pressure tonight. Well, I think it's just the attitude they've shown all through the match. They've looked for a, a ball to pot to win the frame. That's why we've had quick frames, average time, less than 16 minutes. As you said in the last frame, it's been proper snooker all the way through. Great advert for our game. 
And that's a bonus. That's a bonus for Mark Williams. Didn't hit that safety shot too well. And that considered. It was a good shot from John Higgins. Not much else he could do. It's a possible pot to the right middle. You wouldn't put it past Mark Williams to take it on if he considers that the only red he could leave was the one he was playing. And maybe there's another one to the right middle. And it was, and it's there. What a pot. Oh, another chance. Nine. Another good chance to wrap up this championship. It's been like a boxing match this tonight. Punch for punch. 16. That red going in. Seven. Still needs another 50 points at this visit to get to snookers required. Not a formality by any means. And a little bit short with that one. 24. Oh, no, perfectly played. And the blue's not a bad colour, colour actually, to play for these two loose reds either side of the pack. Oh, this red and Third. the red closest to the cue ball. The last open reds. Mm, may have the Third choice one. now. To go into the pink. He's got a perfect angle in the blue. Big shot. 13. Decided to play it gently. But he's got a red to continue with. He's got a little bit of work to do with the cue ball. 36. But a, just a couple of good positional shots away from clinching this. And played it well, played a nice bit of right hand 37. side just to check it on the black. Uh, what a position now. I think he's got three reds he can play for here, or three reds he can land on. So there you see 44. it 45 ahead. You'd say three reds, three high value colours. 45. And he'd be over the winning line. But after what happened in the last frame, Nobody will take anything for granted. I missed one of these earlier on, and it cost him the frame. 52. He's got to strike this well. Screw him back for the black. And he struck it beautifully. 53. Yeah, smooth as silk that one. There was no jabbing on that one. But he's not got the great angle on the black, and he doesn't really want to play for the red along the top cushion because it's missable. But has he any other option? No, he's having to play for the tricky red. This red and a black. And John Higgins will need a snooker. 60. Pressure. What pressure? 61. Still needs the black. A performance from Mark Williams to put behind him Six the fact that he should have won it the frame before. Nothing John Higgins can do now. He requires one snooker, but if this red goes in, that will be the end. 
and right in the heart of the pocket. No emotion yet from Mark. 69. Emotion from the family. And Mark, I'm sure inside. And John Higgins resigned now to defeat, but what a performance from John Higgins. He's Mr. Black. Mark Williams. I'm sorry, 69. the brown, I'm getting confused here. Well, I don't think you can quite believe he missed the brown. Quiet down, no. please, thank you. I think you. after he hit it, he got up and thought, did I really miss that? Just shows you. He was trying, it seemed like he was trying to keep his emotions in check and just completely lost focus. Now, John Higgins, quiet down, please. In Thank effect, you. needs three four point snookers. <laughs> Wasn't easy. Played it as a shot for nothing. And well, just have to suffer a bit more. I mean, obviously, John Higgins needing three snookers, and Mark Williams knows his way around the table better than most. It seems like a almost impossible task, but you never know. Just to take an extra couple of deep breaths, Mark Williams. Just to get this over the line. But he'll be feeling incredible. What a match, what a performance. John Higgins gets out of his claps his hands, says, well played, and the family go berserk. Mark Williams, he was going to give up four years ago, but he's now back in the big time. John Higgins giving it his all. But in the end, Mark Williams was just too strong, and Mark Williams becomes the 2018 Betfred World Snooker Champion for the third time. Ladies and gentlemen, please, everyone, already upstanding, but let's hear it one more time for one of the most magnificent finals we have ever witnessed. And to our amazing runner-up, John, this is not the outcome that you had pictured, but you have played your part here this evening. At what guts, what bottle, to pull that 65 out to go 16-17 tonight? Can you sum up your feelings of being part of this incredible occasion? Yeah, um, an unbelievable occasion. Great to play in front of this crowd again, playing an unbelievable player in Mark. Uh, the red that he's potted in the last frame there was just a joke, really. Uh, <laughs> especially under the pressure that, that, that I probably put him under and he, he went in and done, done one of the best breaks under pressure I've ever seen, so every credit to him. Brilliant. John, it's... John, I know you were chasing a fifth title, but this is a seventh World Championship final 20 years after your first one. Yeah. I wonder how much pride you can take in staying the course here and still starring on this stage two decades later. Yeah, listen. Today I'm 13-7 behind. I was, I just, I was wanting to actually take it to a fourth session. Really, I didn't want to lose. Uh, we a session to spare. Uh, I luckily done that, and then tonight I came in and 
put a bit of pressure on Mark, but it was to no avail. But it, it must have been a, a good match to watch, but obviously I'm disappointed. But as I said, every credit, brilliant champion. Brilliant. He is indeed, and so are you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Joel and Kean and Connor and Daddy, world champion at 43 years of age. <laughs> It's unbelievable. I mean, tw 12 months ago, I wasn't even you. And uh, to come out and, and just to play John in the final is, uh, you know, is an experience in itself because I haven't been here for a long time. I mean, the crowd have been absolutely fantastic tonight, all the way through, really. I, j I just can't believe it. 14-7 up. Expecting an onslaught from this man, you can never count him out, even in these circumstances. Yeah, you've got to expect to come back because, uh, you know, we... When, when you're 50 or 60 in front, he is the best I've ever seen at clearing up. He's in a different league. That, that includes O'Sullivan Hendry's different class. When he, look at the clearances he's he done against me. I was thinking, Jesus, God, I'm never going to get all the line yet. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and I knew at, at the end, if I didn't get enough in front, he was going to clear up again. But I'm over the moon. Did you think days like these were long gone, Mark? Absolutely gone, yeah. I, I didn't. Th well, one year last year, I watched it in, the, in a caravan on a, having some beers. But... Uh, Oh, it's great. I mean, you know, I've got to say a big thank my sponsor, Ron Skinner, who, who sadly passed away a few months ago. So I'm sure he'll <laughs> send up there. So I'm sure he'll be watching down and enjoying that. And, uh, you know, he's been, he's been with me, not just doing well, but when I was struggling, he was still sponsoring me. And, uh, you know, big credit to him. Thanks very much. Mark, you were 28 when you last won the title here. <laughs> these boys weren't even born. Quite nice to show these lads that their dad's quite good, really. Well, it's just nice for him to be here. I mean, even if John would have beat me, I would have congratulated him. I'd have been sick, obviously, I missed the pink one frame, but I don't know where that other break came from after that because I sort of threw it away. But I made a really good break under pressure. And uh, what can I say? Over the moon. Joe. Gratitude to the lady that's on the screen now, Joe, your wife. She was the lady. Here she comes. Come on in, Joe, because you are the one who persuaded this man not to hang up the queue, but to keep going last year. And this is a family snap for the album here. What would you like to say to this woman, the woman who kept you going? Uh -huh. Yeah, she convinced me. Last year, I was seriously thinking about giving up, and she, uh, she basically said, "I can't stick when I was 24 hours a day." So. <laughs> You'll you have to keep going, and uh, I, I can't believe 12 months. I've got to thank Steve Feeney as well. He's helped me out so much. My game was crap, really, 12 months ago, and now it's, it's, it's in pretty good shape, and I'm looking forward to the next season. Kian, you have been this man here. This man, Kian, has been the lucky charm for your dad. What do you think of the way he's won the world title this evening, Kian? Well, he played good against... Oh, what was the first person you played? <laughs> Jimmy Robertson. Jimmy, Jimmy Robertson, Robertson, he played... You're supposed to good be in school. Against him. Yeah, yeah, I suppose... I was in school then. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in school for um, the Milk Robertson. I wasn't in school for a week just so I could watch him play. Well, I think... You're supposed to be bad. <laughs> I think... You're going to be excused, don't you worry. You have been the man who's kept this fella on track. Now, I just wonder whether you are going to make good your promise to, um, to bear all at the media conference afterwards. Mark, would you like me to hold your waistcoat? As, as, as long as uh, Barry Ewan is not going to find me or discipline me, <laughs> I'll, I'll have to do it. I'll have to do it. We'll look forward to that. You can see that on the BBC Sport website. But this man has just won the title, a third title, 15 years after his last. He's going to pick up a cheque for £425,000, and that's going, to keep him, that's going to keep him in kebabs for a very, very long time. Your champion, Mr Mark Williams. Well done.
ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your presentation party, Mark Stebbings, Managing Director of Betfred, and Barry Hearn, Chairman of World Snooker. <laughs> the runner-up, deserving a giant reception, receiving a cheque for £180,000 and the silver medal. He is a class act. He's John Higgins. <laughs> years on from his second victory, receiving a cheque for £425,000, the trophy and the title, 2018 Betfred World Snooker Champion, Mark Williams. What a final, what a championship. Congratulations and commiserations to John Higgins for a gallant effort. Back-to-back -back finals for the Scots. You'll still have to settle for four world titles for now, but who knows, given his form, John, and given the way that he came back there, who's to say he can't come back and win it for a fifth time? Uh, absolutely not. And two absolute titans of the Green Bays, two brilliant, brilliant competitors, and how Mark Williams found that after the barrage from John Higgins tonight is incredible, and especially when he should have won it the first time, didn't get the pink. To find that break in the next frame is something very special, but he's a very special player. They're both very special players. They are A-star graduates of the class of 92, and they have underscored that a million times over this evening. That's right. The temperament of both players is unquestionably just so high, and uh, it remains to be seen how long they stay in the game at the top. It's not easy staying uh, into your, well into your 40s, but it's going to get tough for the young players because the older players are not going away. They're getting lots of match practice, and with these lads around, you know, there's not going to be so many pickings around if these two players keep this form up. Are we likely, in all honesty, though, is this, is this a blip, is this an anomaly? Are we likely to see a lineup like this in a Crucible final once again? Yeah, why not? These two could be in another final again, the way they play through this tournament. Absolutely. Listen, when you're class and you can still play the game, and obviously Mark Williams has been helped by Steve Feeney, you mentioned him, he's found the middle of the cue ball, his cue action is just miles better than it has been. He's, he's, he's won three tournaments prior to winning the World Championship this year. He can be back again. Why can't he? He's the most consistent player of the entire season. It's been fantastic. Well, there's been some great performances by the older players this season. Yeah. I think it just probably inspires the younger players to sort of achieve even greater things. Somewhere down the line, they will do. So there's Lee Walker and Steve Feeney. Steve Feeney That's Steve there, Feeney, yeah. the man on the right. It's the me. man who's been at the heart of the transformation in his career. His Q action. And indeed, his attitude towards the game, and it's proved brilliantly beneficial. And here they all come. This is Team Williams, Team Float, I think we're calling them, actually. <laughs> and congratulations to them. So it has, as ever, been the greatest, greatest fun to be with these guys and indeed all of the team here in what's been a highly memorable championship, I must say. Uh, thank you indeed to you for following us through all of these twists and turns over the last 17 days. It has been fun. It's been great. But Mark Williams is our champion. John Higgins, the runner-up uh, for this year. Uh, they and we are not taking the swan neck or the spider, but it's the long rest for us from us all here. Good night.